In competitive chess, the weight of a win, draw, or loss is all on one's shoulders. It's easy to feel alone. Those lonely days are over. Oh my goodness! The Pro Chess League is back. Once again in chess, teammates matter. Katarina Luck, no super strong player, but Wei Yi is unstoppable in the Pro Chess League. Welcome back, PCL. A unique collection of teams, each with their own personality of different colors, shapes, and sizes. There are gnomes and knights, chess bras and bishops, and whatever the heck this is. The PCL is the only place where the best players in the world risk their fate alongside content creators and players from different levels, ages, and perspectives. Oh my gosh, uh -huh, that was uh -huh. another sick tactic by Arjun nice. Ergeisi. He sees everything. Entering its fifth season, 16 teams will reboot the PCL legacy with a new format and new schedule. Only one team can be crowned the next PCL champion. Wait a second, uh-oh. Grishuk is super unhappy. My friends, it's the 2023 Pro Chess League. Which team can rise above the rest? They won't be able to do it alone. It's Friday. It's the final day of week two of the Pro Chess League season. I'm Grandmaster Robert Hess. Alongside me, my good buddy, Grand, well, I'll say GM, GM Canty, <laughs> FIDE Master James Kane the third. James, good of you to join me. How you feeling about your guard state passers and the PCL? Oh, man. Well, first off, I'm a high energy chat. Okay, it's Friday, right? We have another PCL match. I'm here with, you can't play or do no type of chess without Hess, the big man himself. And I'm here with the chat. And I'm hype. And, of course, my passers are... are, are Right in there. You know, all we need is two more wins to make it to uh, the playoffs here. So we're feeling good. How about you, bro? I'm feeling great. And so are the Shanghai Tigers because yesterday we had two results, two wins, one match win by the Shanghai Tigers, 10.5, 5.5 over the Blitz. And then MGD won. They take down the St. Louis Archbishops, 9.5, 6.5. So, James, you're seeing those results from yesterday's action. What do you make of the Tigers from Shanghai? Uh, you know, the Tigers are... <laughs> Tigers, okay, it's a tiger for a reason. It's not a lion, but it also is very scary. It's the tiger gang, right? In the chat, I see tiger gang, right? It's very scary. These guys are very, 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 very strong, right? As you see the score there, it's 2-0. Oh. Not a lot of people with 2-0 oh right now, right? And how surprised are you to see the St. Louis Archbishops drop to 0-2? Oh we know they got Fabiano, they got Dominguez, they got all-stars in that lineup, but they've lost both their matches. Yeah, it actually looks like a typo there. Like, yo, hey, can you get uh, the back end? It's, it's supposed to be 2-0 oh there. It's the Archbishops. What is the old... I mean, a 2-0, right? Why is there an 0-2 here? I don't understand, right? It doesn't look right because we know how strong they actually really are. They're almost as strong as you, James. We know you flexing out there. St. Louis, they need to get on that workout grind. But uh, let's look at the standing to see some of the teams that have had early season success. Uh, because when I look from the top there, the Indian Yogis, the Levitov Chess Wizards, the Shanghai Tigers, I mean, James, those are three of the best teams in the league. And, of course, we'll see who reaches those heights between the California Unicorns and the Gotham Knights later. Absolutely. Of course, yeah, they have, uh, you see these one and one there, and you got the bottoms one and uh, one and one and one oh. Um, so, yeah, this is a crucial match. I mean, of course, whoever loses, like, a, you know, you could lose again and then be out of the PCL indefinitely, right? So it's really tough here. This is a lot on the line today, especially if you're trying, you know, to make it in advance to the playoffs here. For sure. And on the other side of things, right, with all winners, they're unfortunately our losers in competition. And we see right. the bottom of the standing. St. Louis, we just talked about how surprising it is to see them there. Crazy. But James, the, the Charlotte Cobras, Daniel Nerdiskis on that squad, they're on the brink of elimination. They are. In fact, that Venom is uh, it's not as, as potent as we think it, we thought it was. No, but at the same time, Charlotte Cobras is a monster team. All these teams are monstrous. It really is about who is actually, you know, better that day, you know, because they can all beat each other. And, you know, we, we've even seen some um, some upsets, um, to say the least, lots of those. Even the one where, uh, you know, Hikaru lost first round, first game, PCL, Hikaru goes down, right? You know, that's crazy. Like, who thinks of that kind of thing? But uh, you never know. I mean, this is a, such a hard format and such strong teams, of course. Um, we'll see what happens today. And what do you think about the second team listed on the back half of the Saints, the Garden State Pastors? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you have a thing or two to say. Look, uh, we are two wins away. All we, one day at a time, one game at a time, one match at a time. We are two away from the playoffs right now, so we are real hype right now about that.
but we are not hype about who we're going to play, obviously, because it's, it's going to be somebody strong. We, we'll see uh, both about the matchups and see how everybody's doing, you know, probably later. But, yeah, we're feeling good. Garden State Passions, we got a great team. Should be feeling good. And the loser of the upcoming match in the Croatia Bulldogs and the Berlin Bears, they won't be feeling so good because not only will they drop their second match in a row, they'll have to play the St. Louis Archbishop. So, James, as we get into today's action, starting with Berlin and Croatia, I mean, they really want to avoid St. Louis at all costs. As you said, it looks like a typo to see St. Louis at the bottom of the standings. Yeah, absolutely. You see that they're at 01, 01. Okay, that's fine. And you got 1 0, 1 0 there later on. We got some big matches too. But all these matches are huge here. But hey, taking that L and then you got to go face, you know, like you, <laughs> you, you lose to one GM and then you go face another strong GM right after, right? So that's really one of these situations where we lose. If you, whoever loses here, you, you got to face those bishops probably. Most likely you're going to face the bishops or one team. But that's not going to be uh, the bishops you're trying to face any time of the day. And what about the Gotham Knights and the California Unicorns? We know Hikaru Nakamura and the Big Fish are playing for the Gotham Knights. But for the Unicorns, we got Big Sam Shanklin and Ray Robson. So uh, that's a heavyweight matchup between those two teams later today. Yeah, that's going to be a, a swing fest, guys. You're going to have some of the best. Obviously, you have Hikaru here, the streamer himself. You know, you're going to have fun with that one, right? And then you got Sam Shanklin, Big Sam I Am. That's the other Sam I Am, right? You got Sam I Am <laughs> on my team. And then you got the other Sam I Am, so Big Shankland. Over there, so take him to Shankland. That's what we'll be saying with uh, Sam. So it's pretty nice, though. And, and now you also have Ray, the, the puzzle machine, right? Oh my goodness, I always say Ray have big Ray and have a nice day, right? It's really <laughs> he's that strong, you know what I mean? Like his puzzles are next level. We know this, right? So that's gonna be a very wicked matchup, and we can see that one too. Yeah, I can't wait either, but we will have to wait because we will start with the Berlin Bears and the Croatia Bulldogs. Let's start with the Bears. Uh, they have a very strong lineup. They would like to bounce back from their loss last week, and they've got the likes of Bluebaum, Rasmus Svane, Dimitri Koller. So uh, you see this lineup, James, and Josephine Heinemann down there, second from the bottom in terms of ratings heading into this uh, season. I mean, she beat Hikaru, so if she can do that again, upset the top boards, I think the Berlin Bears have a chance. That's a, actually a scary, you know, a scary, like, oh, yeah, yeah, Josephine, oh, yeah, she's the, the WGM. Like, that should be fine, right, on any board, especially facing, you know, on, on the uh, the uh, opposing team, right? I'm um, actually like, hey, you know, Josephine is, is no one in, until you see that she beat Hikaru, right? And then you're like, oh, my goodness, wait, what is this team really about? She's very underrated, to say the least. She beat Hikaru the first game that Hikaru played in the PCL. He lost to Josephine, right? That's a statement. It definitely is. And what do you make of the brothers Svane? You know, it's nice to see a family affair on this Berlin Bear squad. Absolutely. Of course, they're very, very strong, right? There was actually uh, read the uh, um, back end stuff today about uh, the little. <laughs> brothers. And there was one other one in there, too. But oh, uh, Donchenko. I was like, wow, that's insane. It was a four, you know, four man squad since they were kids to become GMs. Like that's so nice. So they have a very nice camaraderie there. I think team camaraderie is very important. So being around the team, knowing what my team is capable of doing, just like in any other sport here, you know, can, can boost the morale and can boost, you know, how you play that day. Yeah, and this is a you know German team with some exceptions, uh, but they're going to face off against the Croatia Bulldogs in this match. And the Bulldogs, we know they've got some serious bite. Uh, they also have a kind of an international flair to this squad because they do have a number of the best Croatian players. But at the top, they're led by Bogdan Daniel Dejac, 2,700. Then they've got the likes of Injic and Mustafa Ilmaz, who did so well in the Tata Steel Challengers event. So... Uh, James, you know Paulina Shuvalova quite well. You've matched up against her uh, before. But what do you make of this roster from Croatia? Honestly, it's a, uh, it's it's more of like a I would say interesting because there are teams there. There's like so many flags there. You see the 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 diversity there. Like all these players from all over the world are really here. A lot of Croatia too as well. But you know, it's just it's a they put the team together pretty nicely here. So we have to see how they work well together. I think it looks great. Well on paper, twenty seven hundred. You got a two seven on the squad. Then you got 26, 30, 26, 26, 25. Like, this team is very high rated. I mean, the lowest here is 23, 63. Like, geez, you know, it's really tough. Everybody out here can swing, right? So it's going to be, um, I think, a very interesting matchup today. For sure. And we know now know who the teams can choose, but they have to have a s certain selection process to pick their lineups each and every week because there are regulations. And that includes a 25-50 average rating cap. The teams must have at least one female player 
participating each week. Players above 2,700, they count as 2,700. And women over 2,350 count as 2,350. That encourages teams to have the best each and every week. And also, James, that under 2,200 rating, counting as 2,200, I think that's important because it forces teams to have a more balanced roster. You can't just stack it with all the super GMs and then have like a you know 1,200 on the bottom board. I know some people in chat wishes they could team up with uh, Magnus and Anish and Dingley Ren, but that's not how it's going to work here. Oh, of course not, Chad, right? We can't just put all 2,700s on the team and just run it every week, right? That would just be a four-man roster. That's it. Just four people. That's <laughs> it. And just stack them when we run them every single week. We train together. We do everything together. But making it more balanced is going to be more tough for everyone, even the teams that may seem like they're the favorite on paper. For sure. Well, we know now uh, who you can choose and what the selection process is like, but let's actually look at today's lineups because uh, sometimes you try out the same lineup as the previous week, but I see new names, new faces on the board. The top board for the Croatia Bulldogs is that super GM, Bogdan Daniel Dejac against Matias Bluebaum. So that is a heavyweight on the top one there. And then we got Kolars and Mustafa Ilma. So James, that's kind of my X factor is board two there. I feel like both of these players a bit underrated when you think of the rap skills absolutely in fact uh, i remember musafa yo fast and i think i don't remember where it maybe was that qualifier there but i remember doing commentary and it, i just kept saying yeah mustafa is here okay he is making a statement and he was letting and i remember him very very well i just can't remember what event it was was but i know mustafa is very very strong and underrated i would say yeah, he did really well. It was, it was tough to steal Challengers event. He almost took that down, but Donchenko, uh, another German player, was too strong. But Josephine Heinemann, James, we've been talking about her. She beat Hikaru Nakamura in week one. And Aline Robers for the Croatia Bulldogs. She's had some great performance to her name. She would like to do the same. She's saying, don't just talk about Josephine. I'm here too. Right, of course. And, you know, the ladies are very, very uh, fierce in chess. I mean, in every sport, right? The ladies are the ones that really, especially if you see the women's chess and you watch, like, even the Grand Prix when it just, it just passed, uh, every game, almost every round was, like, decisive. Or there were chances for a lot of decisiveness, right, on the board. So they played to kill, right? So that's, that's not going to be, you know, a light matchup at all. There are no free points in the Pro Chess League. And we do start in our first round of action with the most lopsided pairings when board one for one team plus board four for the other. But just as we dive into the specifics here, the Croatia Bulldogs on board four, Aline Robers, she gets the white pieces against Bluebaum. And Bardia Dinesh, we actually haven't highlighted him yet, the strong Iranian international master. And I am for now. He'll be a GM tomorrow. He's already at 2,500. So what do you make of this? Who do you think has the advantage with their lower boards getting the white pieces? Do you like Berlin or Croatia in the first round? You know, I actually like Croatia in, in the first round here. I think they have some things to prove here, um, especially like we know, you know, um, that uh, the, the Bears actually, in fact, Josephine was able to take down um, Hikaru there. They, had, they have a very strong line. They got good camaraderie and a lot of German players there too as well. I think they have some things to prove, especially, um, you know, Bardia too as well, being a young international master or about to be GM very soon. He's about to, you know, play Kolars this round, uh, strong GM there. He wants something to prove. I think they're hungry. I think it's a lot about, you know, that hunger right now. Yeah, and I, I really love these first round matchups because we saw Alexander Kostenyuk and your Bela Kotinas really take down the board one for the opposing team. It happens. Upsets in chess certainly happen. In a long match, the higher rated player will almost certainly win. But in short spurts, in a single game, of course, these upsets can happen. So we will start with Aline Rovers and Matthias Bluebaum. Uh, just a reminder to everybody of how this match format works, because you may be hearing us talk about names and different boards and you know, what's the importance of each board. Uh, in this event, all four players play all four from the other team. So as you see, it's an all-play all format with 10-minute and two-second increment time control up to four rounds because if a team breaches that eight-and-a-half point score after three rounds, you don't play the fourth. It's all over there. Uh, but James, we love tie breaks. We haven't had them this week, so we've been deprived of the 8-8 score with a blitz tie break, but we know all the fans want to see that. Absolutely. The fans do want to see the tie breaks. It's just more chess. It's more uh, energy and, and more... Uh... You know, more than a lie, honestly, to say the least. But eight and a half is, is clinching the match. We've seen a lot of that. We've seen some blowouts, but we also have not. You know, we've seen some very close matches as well. That 10 plus two is really, really important that you, uh, you're you good with your time here. And, of course, if you start getting low on time, it can be very problematic because that two seconds is not a lot of time right not a lot. That's true. You got to be quick out of the gates. And we are going to start with the board four for the Croatia Bulldogs. Aline Robers taking on Matthias Bluebaum. So it's going to start in a minute. She 
has the white pieces, James. He's the higher rated player. You're a team captain. So when you see these kind of mismatches on paper, do you encourage the lower rated player to try to force a draw if it's available? Or do you really truly encourage them just to play their game? Should she just say, you know what? I've beaten Irvin Lamy in the Challengers Tournament taught to steal. I could take down Blue Bomb as well. That's exactly how, how you go into it with the right mindset. It starts in the mind right there. And, of course, she just got to go out here and swing. That's what I'm telling my my uh, team members. Yo, just swing. Just go out there, play your game, right? And of course, don't act like you're playing someone that, you know, you don't know who you're playing. Or, like, you uh, you look at your pairing. Hey, what board am I at? I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to just play the game, right, and, and, and play my opportunities right in front of me. So she's in the zone. You can see, right, hand <laughs> on the head there, ready to go. Like, no move. She's just already calculating. Calculating she- what? Yeah, everything. Is she, in the, is she in the library? I see so many books behind her. It's like a wow. one of the most impressive studies I've seen. Wow, that's actually a really nice library. Yeah, let's look at that wall. <laughs> books everywhere. Yeah, all of them chess books too. Chad, look at that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, Devoreski over there. You, she's looking at listening to the stream. Yeah, yeah. Smiles there. <laughs> Lots of books. Dude, I see. I think I see some Kaspar migrate predecessors somewhere oh. as well. You know, it's it's everywhere there, but she is improving. She's just a teenager, uh, getting stronger every single event. And we'll see if the Pro Chess League is to her liking. She's an international master. Uh, she is taking on Blue Baum here. She did really well in the Olympiad. I think she had the high score along with Pia Kremling in terms of top performance rating. I think they wow. had the exact same performance rating. So she has taken Dang. down some big names in the chess world. Ooh, that's actually huge, especially uh, Pia being a legendary, um, yet legendary player. So, she was a legendary women's player as well. I'm sure she uh, feels great about that and ready to play today. You know, Blue Bomb in his own looks. He looks calm, comfortable. That's how you got to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, you mentioned uh, you know, he was one of the, the four princes of German chess. They All four of them became grandmasters uh, when he was just 12 years old. There was a lot of buzz around him, and he has uh, succeeded. He actually was in the Fisher Random uh, finals. I mean, he didn't make it all the way to the top match, but he was one of the eight players to play live from Reykjavik, Iceland. So he's showing that he can do it in classical. He can do it in rapid chess. He can do it in Fisher Random. So what can't he do is the question. And I think the... Uh, Bulldogs would say, well, he can't beat us in this match. Right. Can't beat us, says the Bulldogs, right? Bulldogs and Bears. I know Vic was talking about that earlier with like, uh, you know, well, the Bulldog and the Bears. So, Chad, of course, we put this to you. Well, who wins the fight, the Bulldogs or the Bears, Chad? We're going to put it up to you now. It is on you. Predictions. As we wait for the games to start here. Yeah, actually, I'm very curious what the chat will predict because this is one of those matchups, James. I feel like it's very balanced. Neither side has kind of like that eye-popping name like a Hikaru. Yes, Bogdan uh, Deach, he is super strong. Matthias Bluebaum has competed with the best of them. But, you know, it's one of those matches where it feels like the middle boards truly will decide. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that. That's a great, great statement there. Maybe middle boards definitely decide there. It really is about who's playing great today. Anything can really happen. Um, Because I think it's very balanced. But we have a French to start it off. I don't know about you, James. Not the biggest fan of the French defense. But uh, I will say for Aline Rover, it's probably just the opening you want to see. Easy development after a series of trades. It's not like Black has easy counterplay. And, ooh, what do you think about this move? Queen D3, she's not hiding her intentions. Actually, I'm not a big fan of that one. I'm not even going to lie. Recent, I mean, of course, casting queen side is the way we want to go, but in attacking chess 101 um, that uh, Grandfather grandfather Tao talks about all the time, we need to get this bishop out to d3, queen e2, and castle queen side. So, yeah, the two moves here, it feels like I guess we kind of wasted some time, but maybe not. I guess the queen is nicely placed there. I do want bishop d3, but knight b4 is coming, so there's c3. Now, okay, I'm liking it. Now I'm liking it. Bishop come out to d3, and we go. We just start swinging at him. Literally, bishop d3, castle queen side launch everything i have every piece on the king side is going to be pushed on that side of the board oh i like it james you are saying hold nothing back and well i, I she could play knight e5 right that comes with a tempo against this bishop i, I do like the way blue bomb has just played knight c6 knight e7 i'm actually not sure where it's going is it going to d5 and f4 i feel like he's causing me to look left and right and i feel like my head's on a swivel yeah, in fact, actually, I like his plan. Uh, after bishop d3, there might there's probably knight d5, queen e4, maybe g6. But the idea, obviously, is just to play the queen f4. We're just going to try to trade up. When you cast a queen side, I just go queen f4 and liquidate all your hopes and dreams. Now, of course, white actually is still, like, a little bit better slightly. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just not a fan of that. Like, I didn't want to castle queen side to go just to go to an end game. I would just put the king on e2 or even, you know, centralize the king a little bit more instead of castling. So 
Blue Bomb knows what he's doing. Oh, very strong, 2650. So I think if you castle here, we are running into a queen trade. Yeah, it's very likely with knight d5, maybe queen f4, things of that nature. And James, in your style, knight e5, bishop takes pawn. I'll give up this pawn and Easy. bring my rook to g1. That feels like Easy. a canty type of idea. Of course, absolutely. I mean, knight e5, <laughs> bishop d2, rook g1, and then where's the bishop go first off? You go, okay, c6, right? Then castle. See, I have an, an initiative. You do have g6, which blocks a lot. Let's uh, uh let's bring up an analysis board and show what James is talking about. James said, like, give, you know, take that pawn, open up right. your king. Yeah. And he's going this way, and he said, I got an attack. I got an attack. That's all we need, right? And it's just a constant nagging attack, especially in these timer time controls that are very quick. Like, right? you want to make them make them think here. I have a knight g4 to h6 idea. I got all kinds of stuff, doubling on the rook, doubling the rooks on the g file, running the h pawn up. I mean, there's uh, lots of ideas here. And it looks like we have it on the board, 95, and we live. She is oh. ready. I, I'm very happy right. she did that because I knew you were waiting for it. I could tell. I know a James Candy position when I see one, but it's one of these big questions where you can take this pawn. In fact, the engine we just saw, I said Bishop takes G2. It is one of those positions that says black is maybe slightly better, but who cares what the engine says? It's about whose position is easier to play. And Matias Bluebum says, no, 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 not me, not today. I'm not <laughs> opening up that G file. Yeah, he didn't even want any any action there. And, you know, uh, players like Korchnoi or even Yasser Sirwan would take that pawn and, like, say, hey, it's a pawn. I'm a pawn grabber. I'm going to grab the pawn and hope that you get it and hope you never get it back, right? So, uh, but he didn't grab it here. So that's a win, I think, a, a little bit for uh, for a, a lead me, liner. Yeah, well, Line. well, we'll see what she does next. She'll have to move her queen. But while she thinks about where to put it, let's go to our bird's eye view because I just saw in the bottom right, we have a Scandinavian defense from Get Bogdan Daniel Dayach. You know, he's taking one of John Bartholomew's book. That's still early stages there. Um, the top right, James, that looks you know, pretty level. Knights are being uh, traded in the center. And then the bottom left, I don't even know what opening that is. I, how did that bishop get oh, to C7 from Mustafa? C7, right. What the heck is that? Man, AJ, he, bro, they just playing some stuff today. Some Scandinavians and then some randomness over there bishop d6 to c7 it's like a reverse like a copex system type thing but interesting it's very strange <laughs> yeah let's uh, go into that game between grandmaster michael bezold and grandmaster mustafa ilmaz uh because how this bishop like it really went around the horn back to c7 so we're just gonna show you how we got here very quickly uh, it was in english the bishop quickly came out to b4 and the knight came to e2 so if you take this knight on c3 the knight takes it. It's kind of like a Rosalimo, colors reversed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. James, the bishop went all the way back to c7. So it feels like white has like four free moves. Like how many right. pawns does white have out here? Both knights, the bishop, and yet black's king is castled. White's king will take a little bit longer to get away from the center. Yeah, there's a lot of space for white. White has a lot of space, but the problem I don't like about white is that, well, with, uh, with the spaces, there's so there's a lot of options here and, and there's a lot of things that can be attacked. So like, you know, obviously a five just happened. B five, D five, lot, lots of pawn breaks. There's flexibility for black too as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a level as the engine says to my knights are uh, superfluous. So I'm not the biggest fan of where my knights are on E C E two and C three, but of course we can't move them around. I mean, it's a still level. I think I would actually take white here. Obviously just, just because of the space, but black, has this d5 e4 idea because i'm probably going to castle my king 100 got to get my king out of the center so this is exactly this bishop is going to be very annoying if i'm able to open it up i mean maybe even d5 right now actually after d5 no, i i like your instincts james d5 looks like the best move to me you when somebody's king is in the center you want to open up the board and rookie eight okay similar intentions uh but for white now, I mean, I have so many different questions about this position. D5 like, now. <laughs> if, if I could get this, i trap your bishop on C7. I don't know if it works, mm. but C5 is super tempting because it's not that easy <laughs> to stop B6 next. That's actually correct. C5, what a move. Like, look at this pawn <laughs> chain, Chad. This is a strange opening. Don't try this at home, okay? But this is definitely one that is strange. I actually like D5 from white, too, as well, because I know you want to play D5. Queen C2, is he going to castle queen side? Oh no, my gosh! He's not doing it. He can't. He, he, he can't do that. He can't. Yeah, he might. He might just bring the rook to d1 instead of casting all yeah. the way there. Uh, and Michael Bizold, by the way, so his classical rating is 2480. His uh, blitz and rapid ratings are well above 2500. So uh, you know, he's a veteran grandmaster. He's been around the game a long time. Uh, not the first time he's seen crazy positions, and he also has a lead on the clock. So I think that there's maybe sometimes the stigma against some of the players 
uh, who are a bit older, like, oh, they play slowly. He has a healthy minute lead on the clock. With a wild position, he is showing absolutely no fear. It doesn't matter how young his opponents will be. Yeah, you're actually right. That's kind of scary. Uh, you know, he's up on time. This position's quit. It's, it's wacky right now. And he's putting, the tie, he's putting the pressure on Mustafa right here. In this position, that is really, really bonkers. There's just so many options here. Where's White going to put his king? Where is Black's development? Oh, it isn't there, right? So, like, there's nothing there, you know, right now. There's lots of uh, moves to make. Something has to be done, and you got to do it in the right amount of time before we get dangerously low on time here. For sure. So while D5 right. has been played and now right. White has to decide, what trades do I do? Do I play C5? I really want to trap this bishop in. I know after C5, Black is, of course, going to take on D4 to open up space for this bishop. Uh, but it's an interesting position. But all four games in the Pro Chess League, uh, they're of equal importance. So we have to look around the horn. And James, to my eyes, well, I mean, Aline Rober, she castled kingside in the top left. I actually like what's happened there uh, for her. So her, her king is perfectly safe and sound. Uh, uh, in the top left board. And yeah. then in the top right board, we haven't looked in on that one between Bardia, Dineshvar, and Dimitri Kolars, but it's starting to look a bit messy. So why don't we head on over to that one? Because the I am from Iran. He has the white pieces. Last week, he showed some great technique in games against Darius Svirch and other players. But I'm looking at that C6 square, James, and that looks awfully juicy. Oh, that's a very nice, yeah, very nice square there. Put the knight on C. Well, first we have a trade, okay, and queen takes. And, yeah, just putting the knight on C6, a stable, stable advantage there. And if you take it, obviously I have a pass pawn with the bishops. I, I actually grabbed the bishop pair too as well. If you trade on G2, then knight C6 is just my square. Yeah, white, definitely for choice here. Absolutely, even though engine is saying equal here. Okay, yeah, but that's with best play here. B6 is weak. Bishop B3 I could take. I have a weakness on A3. I do have to deal with it. But, I mean, I can give up this B, A3 pawn for the B. I mean, there's lots of lots of ideas. Definitely playing for white here for uh, the advantages. But, I mean, equal. Queen takes B5 here. Yeah, I think that's – you have to, right? Otherwise, you move your knight back. But we want to move the knight forward, so trade. And knight C6 would, like, be the bullet move. But I don't think it's necessary just yet. You know, you don't have to drop there. Maybe at some point, if black's not looking, you go knight D7 and hit this pawn on B6, which means E4 has to be considered at some point. Right. So knight C3 will hit multiple pawns so james is just one of these positions where you have to be accurate if you mm -hmm. are bardia dinesh because then if you're not your advantage evaporates completely yeah this is a uh, looks like a, i'm pretty uh sure maybe not sure but this looks like a catalan for sure i'm not a catalan player myself but definitely yeah. looked like some type of catalan happened here looking for that advantage here i'm um, just for the whole game trying to have a small slight plus and that's what white looks like we have here but we do not have you know anything that says besides the c6 square and a pot on b5 they were actually that much better. King may be placed better, I think, for in-game here. If we could trade the rook song, get the king closer to the center, we may have some choices and some, some things here. Pushing the E and F pawns is definitely possible too as well. And, of course, using our C6 square, which is really nice. But it is about timing. Like, how do we get it there? What is the move right now? We still haven't even, we, we, you know, we got to move this bishop off the back rank, which is also holding the pawn on A3. So we have to be careful of that too as well. So lots of ideas though. Yeah, knight c6 was played, and the bishop will have to move, e4 being a critical threat, kicking the knight away from its defense of the bishop. But I think the good news for Kolars is once he moves his bishop, say to c5, the knight can drop back to e7, and he can get rid of this pesky knight over here on c6. And if those pieces come off, it's starting to feel more and more equal. Good chances for black to hold in this game. But, you know, white had Absolutely. a slight, maybe aesthetic advantage, uh, but it's going likely to peter out. So why don't we hop away from here? I think we uh, see a pretty level game, uh, but I just saw the corner of my eye. Mustafa Ilmaz in the bottom left. He now has a big advantage against Michael Bezold because that king on the bottom left is on E1, still in the center. And James, just what you were calling for has happened. The position has been blown open. There's a king oh, here. The C file is open. This bishop isn't developed. Not good. You know, this is one of those things. Don't do this yourselves, chat. Do not play like this as white. Don't try this at home. If you can pick up the king and put it on G1, all right, cool. The position is not that bad, really. But it's on E1. That's a huge difference, right? And it's going to take at least one, two, three moves to get my king to G1. It's going to be a problem. I may not survive another three moves, right? So I need to figure out what I need to do, and I need to do it right now. In fact, I was just going to say probably take the pawn and just go for it. <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> he definitely went for it. But like, it is not. This is not good. 
No, I mean, you could continue, for example, black and kick this queen. Where is that going? Into the corner somewhere over here? Um, you know, if black doesn't prove, though, that he has the quick initiative, and if the white king somehow can castle, white did just steal a pawn in the center of the board. So I feel like, um, you know, black needs to be a bit accurate here, though it's clear that it was worth the pawn. Look at how active black's pieces are. All of them are active, and white's king and king side not developed. Yeah, this is a practical. I mean, you have like maybe Bishop G6, Knight E4, tempo, 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 just hitting, you know, tempo after tempo, and this could get really, really bad here. Now, whoa, is that eval bar? At first, it was not that high. Now it's like way up there. What's that eval bar say? Yeah, it's like, I don't know, minus four, minus five at four, this point. Four, five? Which, it doesn't feel game over yet, but it, of course, feels like Black is the one in charge, and you're just making all these good suggestions, Jay's Bishop G6, 94, tempo after tempo. Uh, White needs to move the knight, move the bishop, and then castle, and I'm not even sure where you can move this knight uh, and if you'll have time to do so, but Mustafa Ilmaz here, he's really calculating. He wants to uh, knock out his opponent. He doesn't want to just trade pieces and hope that it works out, uh, because just to show something, let's say we start trading everything, thinking, okay, I have that compensation, there, the evaluation goes right back towards the center. So it would be a mistake to simply trade off the pieces. Uh, that's why Mustafa is trying to figure out, let's see, what move order is necessary? Do I have to take this knight first, or do I have to play bishop g6 first? Um, right. you know, is knight takes f6 kind of a threat with all these pins here? The answer is right. no, because the queen on b1 is under attack. So if you take uh, this knight on f6, the queen takes, and even more black pieces are entering the party. Yeah, um, and by the way, Bishop G6 is on the board right now. Bishop G6 is the move he chose here. Hitting the queen, of course, as we talked about before, is the tempo, right? It's very, I was working with a coach before, um, a grandmaster coach, rushed to it. It was very strong. He was, he was like, yeah, I'm a big fan, and I believe in the tempo. And so a lot of times when you are lost in positions or positions that are sharp like this, you really try to look for that tempo or tempi multiple moves that are tempo right so with tempo with tempo bishop g6 nice knight f6 was tempo but queen f6 counter tempo so i'm hitting b2 i'm also hitting b1 right everything is looking bad for white's position yeah i'm not even sure what uh white can do you can bring your queen somewhere in the a file but this knight joins the party then goes to d3 or to e4 I just feel like all of Black's pieces are taking part, and White is simply playing without the right side of the board. And yeah, I, I love the look of Knight C5. The E5 bishop is already defended by this rook and the queen. So just go for the attack. Just don't stop. There's also Knight B3. I wasn't even looking in that direction. Oh, James. man. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I forgot about Knight B3. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, Knight C5, Knight B3. But then you forgot. I mean, you, you just forget that. Yeah, when, when you have this many options, you forget that the fork is there. It's going to be a bad day in the office, boys. And everything's like not tangled down. I mean, your development is not there. Everything in Black's position, right, if you think about just chess principles, is great. My pieces are out. My king is safe. I have no weaknesses. It doesn't even feel like I'm down a pawn. But I am down a pawn as Black here. And that, that pawn means nothing. It's just a nice C5 and we live. Oh, my goodness. This is yeah, about this to be over in a few moves, Robert. This is a blowout. I mean, this is really just a one-sided affair. A great play by Mustafa Ilmaz, who never was afraid and just kept pushing forward. And so, yikes. Okay, there's got to be a knockout here somewhere. Knight e4, hitting the rook, hitting this pawn. Is rook e2 the is. best move? Please tell me that's there not the is. best move. Because that would be so sad. You're just <laughs> locking in your king side, you know? It's like, you're never going to develop. Right. <laughs> rook e2, yikes. Uh, hmm. Wee, chat. Because rook c2 takes and queen f2. I mean, bro. Yeah, and this rook is going to come in too, man. Like, everything is a problem, right? Like, you, you just can't stop the vicious attacks left, right, and center. So, I think we trust Mustafa yes, Ilmaz okay. here. I mean, he is just in charge in this game. And that's great news for the Bulldogs because if we look in the bottom left, that's the Ilmaz game. He's uh, winning. In the bottom right, it looks like Bogdan Daniel Deach against Josephine Heinemann. She beat Hikaru Nakamura, but uh, Deach is saying, not me, not today. And the top left, though, it looks like it's going from bad to worse for Elian Rober. She had a good start. You know, it was a solid opening, but it looks like Matthias Bluebaum uh, is about to take home this game. He's just much more active. So let's tune into this one. We'll get into the uh, Heinemann dash game soon but james i mean look at this activity for black all the pieces mm. on good squares yeah of course the bad thing about you know the french is uh is rough for black in the beginning but middle games i find and end games are actually well middle games are very tactical 
and then the end games become like very good for black if you are not you know if you haven't if you aren't able to mate white you know i mean or sorry if white isn't able to mate you know the french player then these end games actually definitely favor you know black here so that's the problem it, she just was not able to mate which is understandable lots of pieces came off no weaknesses really for black i mean everything's hitting f2 and uh you also playing a 2650 gm here who is uh, can play really anything it's pretty tough that bishop is one of the worst pieces. This light square bishop just completely dominated, has no activity whatsoever. It's doing a defensive job, uh, but the last move, rook f1, protecting this pawn on f2. I mean, knight e5 looks very good. There's already a tactic where you can take this pawn on h4 in some positions because of fork on f3, uh, but Ooh. just bring all your pieces to the party. White's pieces are passive, not helping out. I mean, this is a few moves away from being one for black, I imagine. And we have a result, yeah, by the way. Uh, Mustafa Yamas did, in fact, win that game against Michael Bezold. So uh, a win for the Croatia Bulldogs. They're off to a good start. Nice. Nice for the Bulldogs here. And it's going to bounce right back if Blue Bomb is able to uh, to just clean this up here. And then, uh, you know, Bears will be there as well. Let's see what the chat says. Who you got, chat? See, go Bears. Bears, who do we have? Are you for the Bears or are you for the Bulldogs? Who are you pledging your allegiance to? Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Energy everywhere. So, yeah, this is just kind of over here, obviously, 95. But what's the follow-up? As you see, he's thinking 95. Maybe, yeah, like you said, Queen G3, just take on H4. Oh, no, but no, that's uh, hanging. He finds hanging, so... Hmm. I actually I made the same blunder. I just didn't say it out loud. So I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show it just because I'm gonna be honest to James. He went H5. Uh, but if we can bring up an analysis board, 95 here. If queen g3, queen takes h4 would be good if white takes the queen because of the knight fork on f3. But unfortunately for black, queen takes e5 is check to this king. So I was making the same mistake. I'm going to be honest about it. But instead, we see some quick moves uh, where white trying to push forward against the black king. But uh, I think black can even push this pawn forward to g5. There's no attack. The king is perfectly safe. And mm. white's pawns are all over the place and targeted. So I do think that this should be uh, good for blue Bauman. I just want to point out while this game. Uh, is nearing its conclusion. Uh, Bogdan Daniel Dayach is just, he's in mop up duty uh, over there in the bottom right. Like, the, he wow. just played a great series of moves to take the upper hand uh, because things didn't look so bad. If we hop into that one, uh, in this position, things didn't look so bad for white, but bam, knight takes b2 happened. Whoa. Whoa. And after the king takes, queen takes c3 check, and then <laughs> queen b4. And that's the problem is black took two pawns uh, for his knight. And Josephine, she's losing her knight on f4. So that's exactly what happened. And the queen, it's not trapped. It has one safe square on f5, and that square is good enough. Wow. And that, that, is, that was just a cleanup, right? Hey, make sure you hit your Tactinos chat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, my goodness. That was some puzzle rush. Knight b2, queen c3, queen b4. Over to, I mean, I'm just completely winning in any format. This is definitely just completely winning. The bishop looks terrible on b3. It's only a defensive piece at this point, knight versus bishop. We king, I'm winning everywhere in this game. Beautiful from day out. Yes, and uh, by the way, Matthias Blubum did win that game for the Bears, so the match is even at the moment. And for day out here, the queen's under attack. You can safely slide to Adrian. It is running out of squares, uh, mm -hmm. but White doesn't have enough pieces to go trap it. Like You need to somehow bring a rook all the way over there. Uh, it takes way too long. I mean, and, you know, maybe if there's OTB chess, you can, like, try it and, like, get an illegal move. But this is a <laughs> And you, when you drag the piece, it does not go there. So it's just not going to work here. <laughs> try again, right? Try That's again. actually really funny, right? You you know, someone leaves the board OTB, and then you can try <laughs> to be slick with it. Uh, but I think, I think you know, he might even play this move. Rook takes bishop, dragging the queen away, yeah. and then taking this pawn on f3. It's like, I have three right. pawns and a wonderful knight. Uh, against your rook plus black's king is very safe and white's king isn't so rook takes c2 feels like that super gm move i definitely felt rook c2 as well and then take on f3 and then put it i mean i could plant the knight on f5 how do you even break through on the king side like you never can do that right and he goes for it. <laughs> look at that just picking up more material the knight is so strong on f5 i pick up h4 i have a pass h pawn g5 can hang everything five is gonna hang and then and, you know it's just gonna be a problem and i have so many pawns for this exchange it's insane yeah, three pawns and a knight is already more than a rook, and then all the control is in Black's favor. So a great position for Bogdan Daniel Dayach. But Josephine Heinemann, she was losing against Ikara Nakamura before turning That's that true. game around. So That's maybe true. she can have magic happen a second week in a row. 
I mean, that's true. In fact, yeah, Hikaru was just winning, and then we looked up, and he lost. And we was like, what happened? Uh, Hikaru is only half human, as you see here. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy, right? So half human came out in that game, and Josephine was able to to uh, close it in this one. This one's going to be hard. It's definitely difficult, but I mean, it's, it's possible. Jack does have a minute and 30 here, or around minute and 30. I do have an exchange. It's not a lot of good prospects, but hey, there is hope still. Yeah, there was a draw between Dimitri Kolars and uh Bardia de Neshvar, no surprises there. Uh, that game had looked level uh, ever since uh, after the opening. So Queen G3 by Bogdan Daniel Deach. I feel like for Josephine, the only way she can survive this game is if somehow her rooks just start attacking some of these black pawns. Because black's job is simple. Like Knight F5, rook C8, improve your pieces one by one, and these pawns are going to fall. So I feel like Josephine somehow needs to attack something. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, the problem is even, I mean, how do we even get, you know, rooks like open files. We got, okay, cool, you got the F file, like, oh, but then it gets blocked, right? And you want to get the queen <laughs> to F6. Ideally, what you want is a rook on C7, like you mentioned, and the other one on D7 or B7, and then get the queen over to F6. And we actually have some real good play. Problem is, black gets a lot of moves, too. So if we cannot get the rooks to the seventh and the queen to F6, we just really don't have anything there. Now, there is there is hope, though. We could try rook C1. Try to get this rook to c7, just one step at a time. But then what do we do with the d rook? How long is that going to take? And if you play rook <laughs> b4, that's going to take forever, like, to get this rook to the b file. Uh, she's going for it, though. And then b6, b6, rook c1, and, like, maybe rook c7. Trying and hoping for the best. Yeah, and it might cost her another pawn. Maybe it's the h pawn. But at this point, uh, three extra pawns for black with the knight versus the rook. So a fourth pawn, that's not really going to be the difference maker. I think white desperately needs some activity. And you see Bogdan Daniel Deoch, he's one of these players. He wants to be correct. Also, what's in his background, Jane? What am I looking at behind him over there? You know, it looks like everything's tilted. Like everything's like on a slant. Like it looks like his bookshelf. He got so many books on it that it started weighing down to the left a little bit. So he just didn't get, didn't get it fixed because he'd been reading so many chess books back there, Chad. That's what it looked like there. Yep. I think he's also got like a plush pillow or something like that behind him on the you other know, side. So You know what? You know, wow. Look at that. Right. Oh, man. That's a bulldog. That's exactly what that is. Oh, man. He really bought the team. He bought the team for real. Somebody put yeah. that man to check. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, he is repping well for the Bulldogs, and he's like wanting to give the Bulldogs a lead after round one. Rook c8, bring another piece into the game. This rook on b4 tied down to this pawn. If you play rook c1, you think, oh, I have a rook compared to a knight. I should be better. No, nah, we just trade, bring this knight to c6, take this pawn on e5. Four pawns and a knight is too much for a rook. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he's just in charge right now. Yeah, there's nothing we can really do. Even if you go rook b3 and then the queen takes h4, rook c1, we trade and play queen c3, dropping the rook here. Everything's losing. You don't even have a real good move here. Rook d3? I mean, you can try that one. Yeah, like, there it is, rook d3. Yeah. It's the only, way, only thing we can try. Maybe rook d1 now. Let's go back. You want to draw, bro? Oh, shoot. Okay, <laughs> dang. Try. But we try. Yeah, I'm just I'm going to show that real quick because this queen only had the c5 square. So there was uh, there's nowhere to go in this position besides g3 and c5. But if you go back to g3 uh, instead, then you go rook d3. And again, only safe square is g1. So it, it, really no choice for Deach. He goes to c5, and now he's bringing his knight in. And this is a nightmare for white. <laughs> a nightmare, Chad. Did you get that? Did you catch that one? All right. That's with a K, by the way. Nightmare. <laughs> yep, and this is definitely a nightmare for for White here. A very very tough game to start, but you are playing, you know, another twenty seven hundred here. It's always a pleasure to be able to do that, but it definitely was a tactical blunder early on in the game to get this position. The Ox just win. He's spending so much time. time though. Whoa, right? yeah, you about, to, hey, you about to flag, bro? Hold on. <laughs> he is an extremely good blitz and bullet player, so I'm not too concerned. But it is a little bit strange to see him dip that low on the clock when so many moves look good for Black. Well, you know what? When the time gets low here, this is what happened last time. Now it wasn't a time thing for Ikaro. I think it was just like just literally a blunder. But you blunder in time pressure, and there is time pressure, and there can be some type of blunder. Here we go. Look at that. You know what I'm saying? She got some work. What's happening? Yeah. Oh, Unfortunately, she's dropping e5 everything. with check, Jeez. and then yeah. you can push that h pawn mm. if you want. Just don't allow this rook somehow to get up here and help for a checkmate. Right. I mean, imagine that happening in the uh, all over the internet chat. Yeah, this is over. Mm. No tricks. Not even one. No. And this not even a stalemate trick. Jeez. I mean, knight e4. Then you're gonna take this pawn too. Leave no pawns on the board. 
That's bully chess. <laughs> no pawns left behind, chat. Leave no pawns behind. This is really insane. I mean, look at look at that. Like I'm I'm up so many pawns. <laughs> you know you don't see this every day that you're up this many pawns. Just domination. Is is he gonna take this one? Is he, how many extra Come pawns on. is this? Five? Come on, man. No. Why are you doing this, man? Come Six on. extra pawns, and there's a knight. Oh, okay, this also does the trick. I would say a knight fork, but checkmate is better than winning a rook with queen d2 mate. So good game there by Bogdan Daniel Deach. And for Josephine Heinemann, you know, ever since that knight takes b2 shot way back when, she didn't really have the best chance. So a good game uh, between those two. And it's a lead for the Bulldogs. So James. The Bulldogs win on board for their boards one and two down the bottom there with the black pieces. And the Berlin Bears can only get one and a half out of two from their top boards. You know, usually a, a bear versus a bulldog, right? That's just not a question. The bear would just eat up that dog in any way. <laughs> form. But these are the strongest bulldogs I've ever seen in my life. It's like a hundred of them against one bear. So that's what's going on right now. And the Bulldogs definitely came out with the early lead right now. We got to get that x-ray done because they got that dog in them. They are up Ooh. two and a half, one and a half. The Croatia Bulldogs lead the Berlin Bears. Round two of this match uh, will be here in just a few minutes. So James and I are going to step aside, take a short break, and then return to the action. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss any action from the Pro Chess League. I do like positional styled games. I may try to keep it positional, but I, 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 I can also uh, change gears. And I think that's very important in terms of, uh, you know, anyone trying to develop their chess game. Um, if you do find, you know, style of play that you enjoy, that's good, but you could also try to sharpen it by implementing, you know, an, another form of uh, in, into your bag, as we would call it. Right?
we have Matthias Bluebaum on screen in front of us, yawning a bit, uh, but not tired of winning chess games. He is the board one for the Berlin Bears. He won in that first round of action. And James, he's one of the best grandmasters in Germany, has been a star for them playing on their Olympia team. And he's also the reigning European chess champion. That's a huge accomplishment. Absolutely. I mean, number two German FIDE rated player. There's a lot of strong Germans, uh, Robert. You know, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of them. He's number two, right? Reigning European individual chess champion. I mean, look at the accolades there. 2022 Fisher Random, right? That's Chess 960 Championship Qualifier, right? Making the 2023 PCL debut. The man is very, very strong. Robert. Yes, he is. And he was one of this quartet of young German players who was called the Prince of chess and then all four of them became grandmasters and now they're known as the kings so uh, it's great to see that camaraderie on the german squad the berlin bears will need him because currently they are down by a point so he got the job done in round one the rest of the squad not quite uh, hold, upholding his standards here dimitri kolars you know, he had a draw with the black pieces can't really blame him against bardia dineshvar who's 2500 and rising but James, those top two boards for the Bulldogs, they're hungry and they're biting. Absolutely. They're hungry and they're biting and they're very, very strong. Of course, Bogdan just with ease, of course, has showed some class there. Exacting exchange of every pawn on the board. I mean, it was really <laughs> nasty there. They Mus Mufa uh, Mustafa Mufasa. I always do that to him. Mustafa. Mustafa here is so strong, of course. As you know, even the name, you can mix it up, and the man is very, very dangerous, right? But he plays very good chess. He also very attacking, good attacking player, Kings Indian, and et cetera, things like that. I think the Bears definitely uh, have the work cut out for them. They have a lot of work to do here, and this is a very strong team here. But anything is doable, and again, it's about who's uh, really good at that moment. For sure, and it's a new round, which means there are new pairings, and we will see different matchups. And that actually is good news, usually for the board fours, because they already played the toughest opponent on the other team. And as we look at these matchups, Bluebaum and Kolars for the Berlin Bears, they get the white pieces against Bardia, Dineshvar, and Aline Robers, respectively. And then we see that for the Bulldogs, they get their top two boards with the white pieces, Bogdan Daniel Deoc and Mustafa Hilmaz take on Michael Bizold and Josephine Heinemann. So, James, right now the Croatia Bulldogs up a point, but who do you give the edge to in round two when you look at these matchups? Oh, definitely the Bears. Of course, as you see, uh, the, uh, we have Blue Bomb and Kolars there with white pieces against the lower rated boards there. I mean, you just have to give the advantage there. They have the first move advantage. They're very strong grandmasters here. It looks like, now obviously that's on paper, it looks like well, the Bears have a slight advantage here. Okay, you heard from James. He thinks the Bears can't strike back and maybe even up this match. Uh, we'll have to let the players' chest do the talking because we are going to start uh, with the top board. The games are staggered. Uh, Bluebaum, he will get the white pieces in this round. He's coming off a victory. So the Bears, they'll need him to succeed once again and help lead them to an overall match victory. But first, got to tie these, this thing up. And Bardia Dineshvar with the black pieces. He's not going to go down without a fight. He's not somebody who's just going to be a pushover. He played for the Iranian team in the Olympiad. He has some very good results. And I think, James, we often think of youngsters as being tactical wizards. He is good in tactics when they arise, but he's also like a very positional player. Mm, those are very tough. Those are very tough to face here, especially for tactical wizards that love tactics. And you're like, ah, I'm going to play very positional here. You don't, you don't understand what's going on yet, right? Just a little small um, um positional uh, gains you see that carp off here and stuff like that right very small positional gains and then i'll beat you later but if the tactics arrive i'll see them and it's hard to play those kind of players like that as we see right here this is sort of a double fin kettle where you can just like be very flexible lots of options you haven't really told your hand yet i like the choice yeah it's one of these openings where black kind of is bobbing and weaving you know at first the bishop opened up to this diagonal and then when the a pawn took away this advanced squares eh, just kidding let me go to g7 so i feel like for black you often want to strike with e5 but james we kind of have a london system but it's a more advanced london with the pawn in c4 rather than c3 mm -hmm. and the knight on c3 rather than d2 uh so for black we'll likely see knight d7 queen e7 e5 kind of stuff uh, but white is very active and solid here as well Absolutely. Oh, very, yeah, very, very solid so far. 94 that definitely is a nice choice there. You see this in the Queen's Indian type setups here, but a Queen's Indian now with a bishop on G7. So lots of flexibility, sort of not hedgehog-like, but almost. And you can play moves like C5 or F5, D5, E5, like lots of pawn breaks and lots of flexibility, which gives Black so many options here. 
to to kind of just uh you know react off of what white does here which is going to put a uh, Definitely Matthias Bluebaum in a very, very um, difficult position if he's looking for winning chances here. Yeah, I think Black has some kind of obvious moves, like A5 in addition to those four pawn pushes you mentioned, just to try to stop B4. And if these knights get swapped, then A4 is often a very useful move for Black to play. So I actually would already take this knight on C3. And if Queen takes, I'd probably play A5 and then maybe C5. I don't know which pawn to push, James. You were right. All of them look like good options. Yeah, everything, uh, A5, B5, everything 5, C5, D5, E5, F5, <laughs> all of these fives, all of these pawns can go to the fifth rank. Well, I'll talk about options, right? But, of course, it is Black's move, and you do need to make an option. I actually like the F5 move. Mm -hmm. No, F5, then there's knight takes, bishop takes. I mean, yeah. I like F5, though. I like I'm with F5. you. Yeah, there you're saying I don't... Cool. You don't want to release the tension until you feel like it benefits you. So F5 keeps the knights staring at you. Well, I, I like knight uh, takes C3. I like F5. Um, those are, and well, he chooses your line. So James, you know, you're flexing on him. Yeah, of course. It's a, it's a, sometimes I can't help I'm a Jedi. So it's just it's one of those <laughs> times. It just happens to the way of the Jedi. But after F5 there, it's a very good move. I like it. Of course, we just get space and we can maybe open the F file. Maybe open the F file. It's a big maybe, of course, because. This is going to be bad, but it's possible. It's just flexibility. Again, the option. I, I think this F5 move is nice and uh, definitely questions who uh, Blue Bomb set up here. Yeah, well, while uh, Blue Bomb tries to figure out what to do, let's go to our bird's eye view because I think we're about to see something very strange. Look at the top right. That's a black king on D8. Aline Rovers has her king Whoa. where the queen started. And Whoa. With like all these pawns are gone, so let's dive right into that game. Uh, because I'm confused, I don't even know exactly what opening came from. It looks like a Sicilian of some sort, where now Black has a second C pawn. So, wow, James, I think we have to start from the beginning here just to show everybody, yeah, definitely uh, how Kolars and Rovers enter this position. So, we'll uh, take a look. So, it was a Sicilian, okay, and we see well, a on. knight of six. Aha, uh -huh, one oh, of these. Yeah. White plays e5, and there's no queen a5 check. So this allows white to push this pawn. And this is like very popular these days, James. And I just find these too crazy for me. Yeah, this is... <laughs> in fact, yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of crazy here. And But black actually is very nice in these games, is what I've seen. Now, white is too, but it, it, these games just become very, very wicked. You don't know what's going on. Is black okay? Yes, he is okay. But then, you know, white actually has good prospects due to the open position and the bishops already being out but black has a very nice center i mean he got all the pawns in the center it looks like when we don't really have any but his king is unsafe like there's like yeah but he has this yeah but i got this but i got this but like it's literally going back and forth right and as you see as the engine just gives only a slight advantage uh, to white here which is a lot of lot to say a lot about this position but for aline her prep better be really good because i feel like uh, while yes she has these good pawns in the center i mean they got three pawns uh, here and a fourth. I mean, it's all just like helping the king uh, sh sh be shielded. I just feel like, you know, you make a careless move, like a king c7 too quick, and then maybe this queen drops into f7. And bishop b7 mm. was played. You see the eval bar saying, uh oh, not a fan of that. And you got to watch out. You could lose your queen at any moment because the queen on h5 also protects this square. So I feel like white should very quickly try to castle queenside. Who cares about this b2 pawn? I want you right. to take that pawn. Just like Aline wanted that in game one. Open up this file later in the game. Uh, absolutely. I was definitely thinking that bishop d2 to bishop a5 idea. I mean, again, it's the tempo. We talked about this before. That's exactly what's played. Bishop d2, so you go bishop a5, and then you deal with bishop a5, then the castle queen side, put a rook on the open d file, then move the bishops next. And literally, your king is right there. Bishop c3, another tempo. Hits f6. I'm also hitting h8 there, right? It's going to be problematic. Opens up the bishop. Then I can go bishop f5, and then bishop takes e6. It's just too many things here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Even f5 there, it's at the right point if you try to play d5 or something like that. So, there's lots of things that can happen. White's definitely looking good here. I think white already might be winning. Like, I look at this yeah. position. I see the eval bar saying, all right, plus nearly two. I don't care. I, I just don't think that black really has a chance in a rapid game. It just feels like you have no development. C5 played. Okay, cut off the queen. So bishop a5 no longer available. But castles queen side and all of James's ideas. Bishop c3, queen f7, f5, you, you name it, it's available. And I just feel like black has just no play of her own. Absolutely. This is a very, very tough position for her to play here. I mean, of course, you are facing Dimitri Kolars here, and you're giving him a good position. I mean, bishops here is, is difficult. There it is. Yeah, the council queen side is just playing very accurate and very good here for, for the Bears. 
and you said it. You said you felt that the Bears uh, would have a good round, and they're off to a great start. So let's zoom out of this one as we uh, see Dimitri Kolars with the upper hand. Uh, we'll look across the four boards. I would say the top left, well, not much has changed. We started off there. Seems like a solid start for Bardia Dineshvar with the black pieces. In the bottom left, not a single pawn has been traded between Bogdan Daniel Deach and Michael Bizol. So early uh, for, in that one. And in the bottom right, uh, Mustafa Ilmaz going right after Josephine Heinemann's D6 pawn. So, James, I feel like that bottom right position, that's one of those that could be very dangerous for the Bears. Yeah, of course. Especially, oh, D5 too. Just play D5. That's, gonna, that's about to get spicy over there, in fact. Yeah. Spicy. Oh, that one certainly is going to get spicy. And the top left, C5, was just played by Matthias Bluebaum. So that one is spicing up as well. So let's uh, maybe go to our... Uh, board one for the Bears. We'll go back to that game uh, just because I see this situation stabilized for Josephine at the moment. But James, what do you make of this last move? C5 that for Blue Bomb. Nice. And after pawn takes takes back the B pawn, of course, can't capture it. The bishop is loose behind it. And if the queen captures, he's just trying to take this E6 pawn with check. Right. Woo wee. That's some sharp stuff. That's definitely going to be annoying. You also have even some rook c1, rook c7 in there. Like, but there's a man, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, queen e6 first, so then rook c1, rook c7. Woo wee. There could come the tactics here. And that f5 definitely looked like it worked out. But then now you start seeing these king weaknesses. But I do have a strong, I got two strong bishops. So I think it's still level. Yeah, engine says level. Yeah, I can understand it being still level. It's dynamically equal. Like, right? yeah, my king's weak, but I got the bishops pointing. And maybe if I can even play G5, G4, like we have almost some King's Indian-esque type positions here. King H8, put the rook on the G file, bishop F6, G5, G4, and try to go for maybe even myself um, for, for black here. Because that, that bishop on B7 is an absolute monster. We may have to neutralize it with bishop F3 or something. Yeah, I think white at some point will look to trade off those pieces just because it is staring down towards the white king. And I think that for now, Bardia should play knight to D7. Uh, we can see, We see the pawn and you can't capture it, bring your knight out, develop, and then threaten the pawn. And you just want to get your knight to c5. It's a nice active square. Kick that queen out of here. We can play g5 later. I don't think we're in a rush to do that. So I really like the look of knight d7, a calm move, a developing move uh, for black. And actually moves have been played. King h7, rook c1, and e5. So striking in the center, and then now bringing the knight out to a6 rather than to d7. But James, as the bishop is kicked back here, a pawn, entrenched on c6 do you like this development for white or for black oh that's a good question here in fact after this you know what oh man this is tough let me think about this strangely enough i like black a little bit more because i know the plan of this f4 i just feel like we can get something going with f4 and g5 g4 but then again i don't like this knight on a6 so kind of level okay now but we brought the knight back so yeah i'm definitely liking black here a little bit 96 to g5 Mm hmm. See, James, I, I know your style. You're looking for the attack, and I'm with you. And black at some point can lash out with a5. The, if you play b5, you may drop this pawn on a3, so you have to be careful about that. And so it's not like this black bishop on c8, it's not going to stay there forever. The rook on eight won't be here forever, but knight g5 does look like it's next. Uh, maybe there's an f4, f3, things like that, and black can go on the attack. Yeah, this is definitely looking attack like you can see. I mean, the bishop on a2, this is like. If the pawn wasn't on c6, then I probably would take white. But, like, the pawn on c6, actually, I don't have anything. I mean, okay, it's a good pawn. It's a great pawn. In fact, it's passed, right? I mean, it could be passed. c7 could be weak. I can put something on d7. But that is not possible right now. That is not possible. We're trying, though. He is on knight c4. And maybe we move the knight again to g5. Because he is attacking this pawn now. Right, the e5 pawn is under attack. And yeah, it does seem like white is the one who is getting the initiative all of a sudden. So allowing this pawn up to c6, it did force the bishop back. And now black feels a little bit more passive. And well, I mean, this one is about balance, maybe slightly better for Matias Bluebound. But other games have bigger swings. So let's go back to our four board scene. Because look at this. In the top right, it's still all Dimitri Kolars. Not too much has changed there. Uh, the Bears board two is in charge and playing good moves but the bottom right that's where i think the biggest swing has happened and i think we can understand why because josephine heineman uh, she is trying to defend this position against mustafa ilmaz but his the last couple of moves if we just scroll back the c7 square has been the problem so mm. h6 
we saw a swap. And after queen takes, I believe she was likely thinking, okay, we'll trade, and then the knight will protect d5. But it said knight c7 first. Double my pawns. Have fun with that. Because at the end of the day, you see knight takes d5, pawn takes, and a pawn is hanging, but don't take it. That is a trick. If you take the pawn, nope, she already, uh, he already moved. But if you take the pawn, she would have had bishop takes f2 check ideas uh, mm. in these positions. Yeah, it's very strong chat. Make sure you're doing your tactics daily because even these small tactics like here will come up in your own games, especially as the time gets lower too as well, and you just, oh, and you lose, right? Immediately. It's just not, not good. You don't have any fun there. Problematic. So, But I like this uh, this idea of what he played uh, with bishop h3 and now rook d8. So now do we just snap the pawn? What do we, yeah, what? grab that pawn yeah. for sure. We just snap the pawn now and then take and, well, no, no, you can't take the file. So let's play e3. And then the very nice uh, pawn flanks with only the f2 pawn being weak in that structure. That's usually how you deal with it when you have the double pawns. So a very nice stable. I'm up a pawn. Yeah, I do think that this is a great moment for Mustafa Ilmaz, who won the first game. And so the board, too, for the Croatia Bulldogs. I mean, he is showing that he is a good addition to this lineup. And I think you can just trade, as you were saying, the rook takes back and then push your pawn to e3. And there's no infiltration because the knight covers this very important d2 square. So why is up a pawn? Opposite just color pawn. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a draw. And okay, M Mustafa does not want to give up this open file. So brings the rook back d1 and keeps the advantage. I think that this is uh, was a nice tactical uh, sequence for Mustafa. Absolutely. Yeah. He's just uh, looking to convert the extra pawn. I'm up an extra pawn. Yes, it's double, but it's still an extra pawn. And we can use it for... Of course, a uh, reserve tempi is what Devoreski calls it. And you can use uh, the reserve tempi later on due to having this extra pawn, even though it's double. Yeah. And I think what Black really needs to accomplish is to trade the knights. If these knights come off the board, drawing chances increase. The reason why is pure opposite colored bishops. But let's say this knight gets to e5, and then I put this bishop on b3. With a knight, the opposite colored bishops, it actually gives attacking chances because harder to defend certain squares like f7. So Black really, really, really wants to trade off the knights. That's what I'd be aiming for if I were Josephine. Just I don't see how you accomplish that. Yeah, and that knight is very strong at f3. You can also go to e5 at some point. I have a rock-solid structure. I can go e3, king f1, king e2, almost on pre-move. Um, of course, don't pre-move, but it definitely this is just an easy plan to pre-move here. Put the king closer to the center. Put the knight on e5. Swap the rooks, and then maybe reroute the bishop again over to uh, to the uh, a2 g8 diagonal. Okay, she goes knight d5 going after the pawn. E3 automatic, as you were suggesting. Uh, there are some knight takes e3 tactics. Maybe I that's what she's going for. Whoa. Uh -oh. This is probably why you should have traded that boy. Rook d8, right? <laughs> e3. Hold on, big fella. That yeah, is playable. Yeah. You really have to calculate this. I will bring up an analysis board very quickly just to show how you can go wrong for white. E3 is still a good move and was played. But after knight takes E3, you may think, let me swap rooks. And then I'm going to get two pieces for a rook. I'm going to take this bishop on C5. Uh, but black isn't going to take back. Because if you take back, you'll see the advantage for white after pawn takes knight. But you have to watch out for your own king. Rook D1 is not oh. just check. It's oh, mate because that knight covers G2. So instead, after this sequence, I believe white throws new bam. B4, get your bishop out of here so that when your bishop moves, it has to react to this capture. I take your knight, and now you don't have bishop takes e3, winning my rook on c1. So uh, Mustafa has worked this all out. Josephine says, yep, I acknowledge it. You got this under control. And the knight does come to b4. And all right, James, still chances for uh, for black, but it's not looking good. So let's uh, head on out of here and go to the bird's eye view because... Oh, gosh. Look at the top right there. It looks oh, like Dimitri yeah. Kolar's. Wow. Mm. I mean, he's just cruising. Wow. I mean, it looks like the, yeah, the, the eval bar is like part. It's like a, that's like decoration there on the side. It's just all white up there. So that, the eval bar is literally completely winning 100%. And then whose move is it here? It's actually his move. So what's the move? Okay, what do we have? Hmm. I don't even know if it's. A single move is necessary, James. Like, what, what's Black's next move? Let's ask that question. What would you do next if you had a free move for Black? Pass. <laughs> Pass. Right, you, Pass you can't even move your, your king because right. your bishop is loose. Your bishop has nowhere good to go. Bishop d6 doesn't exactly look appealing. And, oh, f5. Yeah, f5. And then e5? Mm. Yes. Look at the p. Look at that bishop. Is it a bishop? Mm, that's the 
uh, ultimate question here. It doesn't look like much of a bishop. And can White just throw this pawn up the board? Let's make a new queen. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that h4 and just run it up. I mean, you literally, like you said, there's no moves. Like, so you just run the h pawn. Wow, what a uh, positional domination, right? e5 and h4, and then you just stare into the zoom camera. Like, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do next? Like, literally, what do you do next? Oh, my I, goodness. I really see nothing. G4, okay, G4, maybe G5. Oh, man, this disrespectful, bro. G4. And lean back. G4. Oh, no. Very strong. Wow, this, the second lean back uh, reference in a row, James. In fact, last time we were, we were talking about it, we had uh, we were hitting the rock away. So, That's right. Uh, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're leaning back, chat, and rocking away. So, And that's exactly what's going on right here. This G4 move is just total domination. Black has to make moves like A5. Rook C8, right? Queen C7. All of these moves don't do anything at all. There's no plan to it, in fact. Wow. I mean, there's so many pieces. The reason why it's such, such a fascinating position is there's so many pieces on the board for this to be domination like this. Queen G7 and just chill. Mm -hmm. The rook would love to slide up, but you lose your bishop on G8. So after Queen G7, you still can't bring your king out. The bishop is loose here. Uh, there's just no moves in this position for black. It's one of the uh, sadder positions to see. So I, I do think that Aline Robers, you know, a tough start to this match. She is playing the top two boards for the Berlin Bears, but the Berlin Bears need all of these games. They entered the round down by a full point. And as we look across their four boards, uh, look at the bottom left for the Berlin Bears. We haven't even looked at this game, but Michael Bezold, he is up nearly five minutes on the clock. Whoa. And James, I don't think I've seen knights this good in a while. No, these knights having a good time. Okay, as Hikaru calls them, these knights. Look at those knights on C5 and B4 for the score. Looking great. I mean, locking down the queen side. B3 is weak. White's pieces are conjunct. I mean, they're they're actually like nicely. Um, chemistry is 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 the, the word for it. The pieces are nicely arranged for white, but they're not really doing a lot. I definitely like Black's position here, of course, for those knights. Look uh, nice on C5 and B4. White got nice knights too. I mean, I do have the F5 square. I can go knight H2, bishop G4, trade off the light square, bishop knight G4, knight E3 at some point, take over the F5 square on completely. So, I mean, there's some stuff for me, but Black, it has no problems at all. And rook b2, which is a sad move to play, especially in time travel. The b3 pawn is one you keep an eye on. And it's h5 pawn. James, if we get to an end game, then that pawn is maybe a goner. So you have to be very, very careful if you are Bogdan Daniel Deoch. And let's think about improving moves here. I like queen d8. Uh, there may even be an exchange sack at the right moment if there's a checkmate on the horizon. Your knight, one of them, can get to d3. Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel like it's hard for white to make any plan. Knight h2, I like your choice to try to go for bishop g4 but i'm worried that a rook will slam down on d3 as soon as the bishop moves that's exactly right yeah that's the only only problem that's why uh rook queen day was so nice there i mean he definitely just covered that whole idea is like not there anymore i wanted to go knight h2 bishop g4 but i mean as soon as the d3 square opens up he's gonna put a piece there so we have to shuffle around make some other moves and try to figure out how we can actually do something i mean worst place piece is what jacob agar says in his uh, positional playbook the queen on e3 is gross like what do we do with this queen i mean where do you put it that it's just not in, in in something? It's just not looking good for that queen. We got to figure out what we want to do with that. I mean, it, it, practically speaking, black definitely has some very good chances. Every piece is good. Maybe the bishop on c8 could be improved, but don't blunder with bishop g4 because knight takes g5 is check, and then the bishops would have a stare down. So that's the one move you really, really would like to avoid is that kind of mistake because that turns the game completely. So I'm looking at this position. Maybe knight c2, but I don't really want to trade knights necessarily when i have more space i like keeping more pieces on the board because white's pieces as you said they're looking like they're on good squares but they're not really doing all that much so i kind of i think if i'm black i want to pass the turn just make them look like bishop e6 and say your move what you going to do about it yeah that's right bishop e6 and he put knight c2 he maybe he is going for this knight d4 idea which again like you mentioned i mean i'd be happy to trade those knights like man it's just one of those knights gotta go one of them gotta go i don't care which one you want but one's got to go. But he did not take it, I guess, because he didn't want the pass on coming through, taking. Yeah. That's going to be tempo and D3. So two tempi back to back. Not looking good there. So he chose queen E3. Totally understandable. 16 seconds, too. If he rocked that clock, boy, like, you got to watch your clock, brother. Yeah, wow. that's the thing, right? If I'm Michael Bezold, I'm trying to play uh, to get my opponent to flag. Like, make a move like bishop E6. Don't give him any clear plans. And I think that he has 
a good chance. But let's go back to our bird's eye view just because some of the other games are nearing their conclusion. We see in the top right, James, it went from bad to worse to maybe oh, the worst position goodness. you could possibly see for Black. Uh, none of her pieces are active, so Dimitri Kolar's in control. But the top left, we see Bardia Dineshvar in time trouble um, against Matias Bluebaum. And that one is actually quite crazy. Like That eval bar is still in the center, but it's anyone's game. Wow, whoa, Epal Bar in the center. Yeah, this is why you know you take that with a grain of salt. Boy, look at this position right now. First off, king safety is non existent for both sides. It looked like, I mean, okay, okay, black it definitely has the pieces around the king, white has some around there, but there's no pieces around white's king. So, but there are not a lot of pieces, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, shelter for white's king to say the least here, but there's no and open eight, lines for the bishop. It's just strange. 18 seconds about oh. that per side, like queen comes back to e7. You're talking about the shelter, let's keep that king safe. But what's going on now? The bar's dropping. What happened? Shoot. This should be five. Know. That wasn't it, but I wonder what it was. Maybe, maybe it just bring this queen out. Like, black suddenly is on the offensive. Oh, especially in this time control here, Chad. This is now a, like, 30-second game. Under 30 seconds. Under 30 happening? seconds. Bishop A2. The queen is under the attack. Queen. Queen's got to go. Four seconds for black. You got to move. Where you going? Come on. Gotta move, gotta move. Ooh, we made it with two seconds. Queen A4 hits the bishop. Bishop B3. Oh, Wait, bishop b3? Is there some kind of like take on d1? Because the bishop. Oh, is my take, goodness. You take the, the knight is loose. Oh, what do you do? You got to take on d8 then, right? I don't know. He's got three oh, seconds. He's got to move. He's got to take on d8. He does it. Oh, what's your bishop, bishop b3. Oh, man. So quick. Three, two, queen c4. He's out of the way. Uh huh. Oh, oh but man. watch out. The e3 pawn is loose, James. So he goes back to e4. And what's uh, going on he, here? Oh, 96. He oh, man. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, my goodness. Give me everything. Yeah, this is. Take this one, take that one, take every, take this one. It protects the knight as well. Queen takes h5. Will he spot it? Four seconds. Knight to d6. He oh, said, that's a good oh, move, though. That. That's a good move. That was a good move. Yeah, and he's going to take this pawn, I think. Four, Unless, maybe take, there's there's no can, checks, oh right? Oh, my God. Get him off the board. Get oh. him off the board. Oh, and Blue Bell, he's like oh. us. He couldn't he didn't even see that oh. coming. Oh, man. He hit there's him. Not a, there's not a single decision. check, and he resigns. That was sick oh, by oh, Bardia Dineshvar. Wow, look, he just got up and walked away. Dropped the mic. Dropped oh, the mic. My goodness, oh, that was... Get that man some water. Oh, man. And Bluebaum oh. is beside himself. And for the Croatia Bulldogs, that was an important win for Bardia Dinesh. For our game still going. The top right game is over. Dimitri Kolars won it. Uh, we see in the bottom left, uh, Michael Bazold is now in trouble. He had a big advantage. He had all the control. Now he's in trouble. But Josephine Heinemann in the bottom right, she still is trying to survive that end game. So let's go back to Bazold and Bogdan. Daniel Dayach. somehow a pass B pawn appeared uh, for the 2700 Super GM. But Black has a pass pawn of his own. Yeah, of course. This is just he just got twenty seven hundred. You know, even though that's uh, we made that that uh, that cut up just <laughs> now. But he, it, I mean, it definitely Black was doing great. His timing, the time, like he had no time. They, uh, I mean, literally, you know, Bezo was up five minutes on the clock. You know what I mean? So he just got twenty seven hundred here. It happens it's like stuff. But okay, we still got some 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 play here though. It's not over. Yeah, he can win his B pawn, but he's going right. to lose the C4 pawn, and the yeah. king is in some trouble, right? Once this white rook lands on C7, the king is forced to the last rank. So he's going in with this rook to C7. He can pick up this A pawn if he wants. He can bring his bishop out to B5, uh, but maybe this isn't the cleanest game. It's not that easy to win, though black's pawns are probably going to fall. Yeah, black's pawns definitely looking to fall there. That was a beautiful move. This should be five. Just try to, like, hey, limit your rook activity there. Maybe rook to d6, rook h7. And then what do we do? Like, we got to get our knight in the game somehow, right? I understand. But, like, where are we going next? Knight c3, probably. Oh, knight c3. So That's just nasty. nasty. Oh, James, I wasn't even looking in that direction. Like, okay, let me go over here and all that stuff. But knight c3, right. just. Get this. There it is. There it is. And and now we have ourselves Rick B4. Wait, that's tempo, mm -hmm. brother. What was that? Rick B4. We also could almost get Anastasia's mate if you look out for it. But oh, watch out mm -hmm. for this H pawn though. You gotta be careful. Oh, Rook G6. You are, right boop, boop, boop. you are right about that. How do we deal with that? You got to go like Rook B7 there. Oh, it's completely uh -oh. losing. Completely losing. Uh -oh. oh, he can't go Rook E6. Wait, no, he can. He can. I mean, not Rook E6. Sorry, uh, Rook B7. Rook B7. Oh, just... oh yeah, that's over. Dang. Can check here. Oh, I'll check first. King. Okay. King up. What's the deal? G oh, is it going to be some mating oh. net? You move this rook and bishop g8 and rook h7 mate. 
Look at the time he's doing it in, too. I mean, he had no time for, like, so many moves here. Bishop G8. Oh, my goodness. This is a family channel, bro. Get this off the screen, man. Get this off the screen. Get this off the oh. screen, bro. He's and made it, that man. It's White who wins on time in this game. That's great for the Croatia Bulldogs. And worst news for the Berlin Bears is it was a tough end game no matter what. But for Josephine Heinemann, it's just over now because the knight hits this pawn. If you save your pawn, you lose the bishop. Knights are tricky pieces. You can't take it. You'll be a losing king of pawn in a game. So, James, it looks like the Berlin Bears, they got off to a good start with Dimitri Kolars, but the rest of the team looks like they're about to lose. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just it's pretty tough. Those bulldogs are very, very strong. That bite. I mean, you thought a bear was stronger than a bulldog, but not today. They definitely showing you that right now. The bulldogs are still up in the match, and it's not looking that good for the bears. No, I mean, this knight can just go from uh, the light squares to the dark squares. Uh, maybe knight d4, try to fork on c6, hit everything in black positions. Two extra pawns for white. So as long as he doesn't flag, he's got this under control. Yes, I mean, easy, easy game here. And reroute the knight over to c6, king d6, king c4. I mean, he really, anything. you can even play e5 here. e5 and knight, knight to c6, take king in and then completely win the game. Yeah, no, that's it. Worthy pawn sacrifice. Right now, you can't even take it because knight f3 is a fork. So e5 was available. Doesn't matter. Going for this a5 pawn, and that's too much. GG. Knight c6, yeah. and yeah, this is over. Oh. oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, okay. Give it to me, says Mustafa Ilmaz. Takes a bishop and wins this endgame. So that's a 3-1 round victory for the Bulldogs. James, very surprising given how those games were going. And in particular, I would say Michael Bezold losing that game with the black pieces against Bogdan Daniel Dach. He was up five minutes on the clock. Wow. And he had a better position. Yeah, he did. In fact, I thought that was definitely going Bezos' way. I mean, everything was going his way. The position looked great. And he just, you know, he got 2,700. It, it happens there. You have to, even, even when the 2,700s have low time, you they just never give up. And, they, of course, we was able to see that precision in the end. And you got that, that, these, these three wins. And also that big game by Bardia there, taking out Blue Bomb. Oh, man, that's that's tough with the white pieces, too. He had whites. Man, that's a big game for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that one. Swung in time trouble, but Bardia is in the teenager from Iran. He is proving that he could punch well above his current rating. That 2,500 is there for now. He's on his way up to 2,600. So, uh, James, I mean, it has been all Bulldogs in this round. And the first round, they also won by a score of 2.5 to 1.5. So, when you see this, 5.5, 2.5, you see the top boards for Croatia with 2, 2, and 1.5. And uh, what can the Berlin Bears do to mount a comeback? Oh, yeah, they just got to bring everything that they have right now. I mean, this is very tough. They are in elimination. I mean, obviously, uh, you need another loss here. But the elimination is, is, is close. Like, it's, it's getting closer for, for the Bears. And they kind of feel that pressure. But a lot of times, you can make things happen in pressure. We have seen a 3-1 right back. I mean, you never know. So there is still chances left. They just have to bring a best game right now. Hopefully, the matchups or hopefully whatever the pairings are in this next round here um, will, will, you know, surface well for the Bears. So. We'll have to just see that. Yeah, they're going to need to get together fast because this match could conclude in the next round. And these That's team fun. events, they're super fun. We love them. And, well, if you love team action, there's more in store for you uh, because don't miss round five of the Collegiate Chess League, which is tomorrow, Saturday, February 25th. This season is shaping out to be incredibly exciting with the best players in college chess and future global superstars competing for an impressive $30,000 prize fund. Head over to twitch.tv slash collegiate chess league for your weekend fix of team chess and use the command CCL in chat to follow this season. James, I mean, we know how it is in college basketball and college football. Don't you love to see those collegiate rivalries? Oh, absolutely. Of course. Um, at collegiate at college. This is like, I guess, where when they say like, oh, in the NFL and in, in, uh, in NBA, like they're just soft, right? Because all of the calls and stuff like that. But in, in the college ball, you don't, hey, a lot goes on in there and a lot to prove, right? So, of course, there's going to be a lot to prove here in the collegiate chess league and in any chess league, but definitely the collegiate one here. So it starts on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Pacific. It's going to be fire, bro. I'm excited to watch it. Yeah, we'll see if we get this kind of Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State rivalries. Right. Uh, that is always fun to see. Uh, but right. we have more action here in the Pro Chess League that we will see after this short break. Do not go anywhere. The matchup between the Berlin Bears and the Croatia Bulldogs continues in just a few minutes.
Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Christoph Zilecki. I'm an international master in chess from Germany. And I'm here to share with you why the opening plays such an important role in modern chess. The opening in chess is like coming prepared with a battle plan. You play a move, but it's part of a larger strategy. You want to have an idea what to do against every possible response that your opponent may play against. You want to have a plan, a strategy laid out before the game even starts. This can be really deep on the top level, move 10, 20, 30. You don't need that much, but you want to be prepared to get a game that you enjoy playing. It's more fun to play and give you more chances to win more games. I've always loved studying the opening, figuring out new ideas, how to beat my opponents and set traps. This is now my profession, writing courses on openings for Chessable. I've created more than a dozen, the most popular ones being of the Keep It Simple series. I have received an award this year, the Author of the Year. What I invite you to do is go to chessable.com and check out how to play the opening better, get fun positions and win more games. In competitive chess, the weight of a win, draw, or loss is all on one's shoulders. It's easy to feel alone. Those lonely days are over. Oh my goodness! The Pro Chess League is back. Once again in chess, teammates matter. Katarina Luck, no super strong player, but Wei Yi is unstoppable in the Pro Chess League. Welcome back, PCL. A unique collection of teams, each with their own personality of different colors, shapes, and sizes. There are gnomes and knights, chess bras and bishops, and whatever the heck this is. 
The PCL is the only place where the best players in the world risk their fate alongside content creators and players from different levels, ages, and perspectives. Oh my gosh, uh -huh, that was uh -huh. another sick tactic by Arjun nice. Ergeisi. He sees everything. Entering its fifth season, 16 teams will reboot the PCL legacy with a new format and new schedule. Only one team can be crowned the next PCL champion. Wait a second, uh-oh. Grishuk is super unhappy. My friends, it's the 2023 Pro Chess League. Which team can rise above the rest? They won't be able to do it alone. And we see Matias Bluebound pondering what could have been. He lost that critical game against Bardia Dinesra in mutual time trouble. And that is bad news for the Berlin Bears because they trail by three points. It is five and a half, two and a half in favor of the Bulldogs. James, this match could be over after the next round. Eight and a half points wins. The Croatia Bulldogs only need three to secure match victory. It is very possible. We just got to see what that lineup looks like when that lineup comes up and we see and they like, oh, I got this color. We got that. We don't see. This could be over. It definitely could be over here unless we see these bears, you know, come with way more bite than we've seen in these first two rounds. For sure. And well, the Bears, uh, they've had some good performances, namely Dimitri Kolar's, uh, but they have zeros on the bottom two boards. But in this round, uh, the stars for their team, boards one and two, get the black pieces against the opposing boards two and one. So, uh, James, the Berlin Bears need to score at least at, you know, a point and a half here to stay in it. But they need more to have a realistic chance to win the match. Where are they going to get those points? Yeah, the points may be at the, oh man, it might be at the bottom boards there because the top two, it could happen, obviously, especially Blue Bomb wanting to bounce back. He might just be, you know, all out, you know, I'm about to play my best chess you've ever seen right now because even though he has the black pieces here, but he just lost. And of course, you, you have to get over those losses very quickly, short term memory loss, easier said than done. This is for the team. We know we have to do this. He is the number one guy for their squad. So black pieces, I am playing a lower rated GM, but he is still very strong GM talking about lower rated. I mean, really, what, 26? <laughs> what? What? 20? How much lower? <laughs> really lower, right? But of course, maybe some lower. Uh, um, um, but Bezo may be looking to win quickly, obviously, with the white pieces against uh, Eli there, who's not having the greatest um, time. And then uh, WGM uh, Josephine there is going to try to beat Bardia. Bardia is very strong. After beating Blue Bomb, Bardia is like, yo, I mean, I just beat your top guy. Like, what else you got for me, right? So it's, uh, it's just going to be it's a really, really uphill battle for the Bears. It is indeed, and Matthias Bluebaum, he still is not over uh, that loss against Bardina Dinesfra. You see him shaking his Man. head often. He just can't believe what happened to him and his Bears, but he will need a good game here because if he can take down Mustafa Ilmaz with the black pieces, suddenly the Bears have a new lease on life in this match, and here we go. The game is starting, and Mustafa... He gets the white pieces. He's a very solid and strong player, very principled player. He goes for D4. Goes for D4. He'll see what Blue Bomb is going to go with here. He likes the French setups, but also E6. And then he plays D5 like classical. Let's see what we have. C4. We'll go any route here. Yeah, yeah. French, Queen's Gambit decline. Very similar. Yeah, you called it, James. You know he likes this pawn on E6. He likes this pawn chain uh, towards D5. He brings the bishop out early, so queen A4 check, knight C6. We'll see a Ragozin uh, structure. But Mustafa, he's playing slowly. He's not blitzing out the opening. So I wonder if he's a little bit surprised or if he's just thinking about the match score, trying to figure out a game plan. Absolutely. And, of course, as we as you mentioned, we're goes in here. I was just looking at these files from the black side, actually, today, Knight of Six. Yeah, so let's see which one he goes for. Uh, so th these are fun. These are fun. I mean, sometimes you see white get wiped off the board. I was like, I don't ever want to play where goes. And when I saw, uh, who was it? Jeffrey Jean crushing, uh, who was it? Was it Darius Stewart or somebody like that? But it was, he just wiped him off the board with the with the Ragos in there. I mean, with white. I was like, oh, man, I don't ever want that. G4 Pong was rolling down. Oh, no, it was Big Fish. <laughs> Fetisea. Yeah, he played Fetisea. I beat him. Very, very scary game, to say the least. So, but, it, it, you know, Fabi's a fan of this, too, as well as uh, CGC. When we were CGC, talking with Fabi, and, like, Fabi was like, oh, yeah, Ragos. And I'm like, oh, Ragos. And okay. And, like, so this is a nice, nice way from both sides to see what they do. Queen E8, I'm not too familiar with. So that's a, definitely a different move. 
but you could tell what he's cooking because let's uh, bring up an analysis board and make a careless move uh, for white. I mean, maybe it's actually not that bad, but I was going to make a move like rook c1 because okay. after bishop takes c3, oh. bishop takes back. I'm looking already at knight takes d4. Is this available? Yeah. The queen on a4 is loose, and that means you take the queen. I'm not just going to take back intermezzo time with knight takes f3. Check to your king, and after you take back, I get your queen and blacks up a pawn in between move there and we're up a pawn here absolutely feeling good there tactics everywhere queen e8 is a very creative move i think queen to b3 in response taking on c4 now make the queen move around a little bit or bishop c4 bishop c4 usually the queen to e7 now bishop d6 and we're gonna play e5 yeah standard stuff you see here and also knight e5 Ooh. Wow, look at that dual threat by a Bluebaum here. He has a lead on the clock. That's great news for the Bears, but Mustafa says, let's go forward. Knight a5, no more. The bishop on d2 mm. covers it. You could play e5, but maybe I'll take your bishop on d6, and you're also opening up this battery towards the Black King. So I I'm interested in this start, uh, but other games have begun as well. So let's zoom out. We'll come back to this one. Of course, it is the top board for the Bears, taking on board two for the Bulldogs. James, I see in the top right, very quiet position thus far from Bogdan Daniel Deoch and Dimitri Kolars. And in the bottom left, Michael Bezold. I mean, this guy has been playing everything under the sun. And he's got this King's Indian attack set Ooh. up against Aline Robers. That one might get spicy yeah, soon. Let's see that one. Yeah, that, hopefully. Come on, Castle Queen side, Bezold. That's... Bazoi, come on, bro. Castle Queenside, you just got, you have to. I mean, it just looks like Castle Queenside, and then I go G4 next. I don't even think about the next one. <laughs> Castle G4, Rook G1, Maiden, Maiden 11. <laughs> uh, we are talking about the game in the bottom left between Michael Bazold and Aline Rovers. It's funny. James is like, let me just throw all my pieces up the board. Uh, in the bottom right between Josephine Heinemann and Bardia Dinesra, they just have an early Sicilian. Not too much happened yet. So let's go to board three. Uh, three for the Bears against board four for the Bulldogs. Uh, Michael Bazold, he's playing creative openings. And James, he's again up time. He has more time than he started with. He may Bro, be like the quickest the player heck? I've ever seen in the Pro Chess League. That's crazy. What he, man, hey, man, we got to figure out what this man eating. Right? How do you do that? That's 10 7, right? He didn't think about anything in this position. Nothing. Like, how did this start? Let's, how did we get here? Like, he just blitzed out everything. Kings Indian attack and then B3, Bishop B2. Oh, he went B3 yeah. first. Oh, my yeah, he went. He went for the Fianchettos. He's just you know playing like a B3 cowboy, Adiban somewhere, like in this. And then he plays A3 to meet A4 with B4. This is standard fare. Uh, you do not want to allow Black to crack open the queen side for this rook on A8. So I like the way that Basil has played. I think that it's also unfamiliar territory to most players. They don't see it in classical games very often. And as James has been shouting for castle queen side let's go we'll try to use this h6 pawn as a hook and push the g pawn forward i will be a little bit disappointed but i also will understand if he castles king side and is a little bit more solid but james i'm with you i really want the queen side castle come on my guy castle queen side g4 and just knight takes g4 rook g1 i mean that's not like it's just it's calling for that and if this bishop's very strong now of course c5 might be a little annoying but he plays a4 yeah so he's just you know playing it bro he's insta moving Hey, you, you don't have to move that fast, Mike. Hey, Mike, <laughs> slow down. So, look at this man. He is hey, James, moving. We all want to play like Mike. Come on. We know. Yeah, we right, know. Right. Like Mike, you know we right. want to be like Mike. And uh, yeah. here we see him moving instantly. And he went to move A4 because he didn't want Black to play that move. Now, rookie eight. You know, she's trying to compete for the center. Oh, my gosh. Is he playing bullet chess? Bro, he's playing bullet. You know, we need to check his task, you know, task manager, right, to make sure we don't have any bot or any assistance here. He's moving too fast, Mike. He's moving way too fast. I don't understand. No, of course, but he's really trying to blow her <laughs> off the board. I'm not going to lie. He's just moving quickly. No mistakes. He, he, he moves are very easy to make. This is really nice. Like, really like these type of positions. You can also learn from this. I mean, isn't like you can play this setup really probably against anything here. It's sort of, sort of a King's Indian with a bishop on B2, which is a very uh, interesting one, to say the least. But, he, I mean, look how much time he's up, Chad. This is crazy. I mean, he's eating up all the time, thinking on her clock. That's all he's doing. Yeah. Hey, it seems like he just, you know, knows everything. And he had the advantage against Bogdan Daniel Deoch, against the 2,700 on the opposing team. We know he is capable of getting great positions, but he needs to close better. That's been his right. struggle today, uh, where oh. he let that one slip while up, so many minutes with the better position. I guess wow. maybe he needs to slow down at critical moments or just find those finishing touches better. But he is in good shape right now. He's up like nearly double her time soon. 
And look at his face too, just like no emotion or anything. All right, is he gonna insta move here? Finally under 10 minutes. I mean, that's like a goal. You know, I'm like, can I get him under 10 minutes? Gee, <laughs> bro, can I make him think once? Now I think she feels a little bit better. It's like at least he thought for a little bit. Yeah, he's used seven seconds. And, uh, you know, while this game continues, we are going to bring in a special guest here. Uh, we have Vyacheslav Nemets joining us from Chess Essentials and you know, leading the Croatia Bulldogs. So uh, how's it going? How are you enjoying your uh, Bulldogs lead right now? What's up, man? Better than the last week at this stage, so can't complain at all. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome, man. That's great. Uh, what goes into uh, you know team preparation for matches like this? What did you? Uh, how did you prep the team? Actually, once you are at this stage, it's not so much work. I think. Uh, I guess you got you know as well as I that uh, up to the season yeah. there's much more preparation. Here it's more basic right. communication, uh, deciding who will play, making sure that everybody knows the time, the date, has the link, has read the regulations because many chess players don't like to read long documents that they have to sign and stuff like that. So <laughs> just all <laughs> technical stuff. And uh, yeah, it's going actually pretty smoothly. And I have to con condemn uh, uh, the organization of the league is actually pretty tall spot on and it's going like a clockwork. Very yeah, good. well, I mean, for your team, the Croatia Bulldogs, you're made up of uh, many international players. So how did that go about? What was that process like to secure players from all over the globe? Yeah, it's, uh, we are today. We are not very Croatian, I have to say, and I think this is the first <laughs> time ever that we don't have a single Croatian players, uh, mainly because uh, most of them are playing actually in the uh, German Bundesliga. So today they are traveling there, uh, which Croatia is re relatively close. But otherwise, it's I mean, it's not so difficult to to you know find people online to contact them and say, hey guys, are you interested? Do you want to play? Uh, we have, uh, especially after last uh, week's match, when I realized that uh, we are lacking some players, I literally reached out over the weekend to uh, Grandmaster Mustafa Yumas, who is showing his worth and showing that uh, it has been a very good decision today so far, and also to a couple of other Grandmasters, and they usually replied very quickly, and uh, yeah, I signed three players very fairly, fairly fast. So it is not that challenging, it requires some digging and some emailing and writing on various online platforms, but... Not a problem at all. Very nice. Does uh does their team does the team have to is it a requirement to go through to have a chess, your chessable courses? Uh, no, but the requirement is to play modern at, in at least one game. So only Dak Bogdan <laughs> fulfilled this requirement <laughs> so far. So I, I'm waiting for the rest. Yeah, <laughs> waiting for the rest, right? Of course, yeah. You know, uh, I don't have to water. do hippo and and fo pay homage to <laughs> Mr. Hess here, but at least regular modern, <laughs> I, I expect. To <laughs> And some modern too. <laughs> Definitely got to see some modern, right? From the Croatian uh, well, team. Well, well, we have seen some, you know, high level play this far. Let's zoom out to get all four boards on screen for everybody because this is a critical round. You know, your bulldogs they don't want to allow the bears back in the match. So when you look in the top left here, uh, Mustafa Ilmaz, he loves his night against the bishop. It seems like he just won uh, the previous end game uh, when he had uh, his night against Josephine Heidemann's bishop. So uh, when you look at that game in the top left, Vyacheslav, uh, what are you thinking? You like in uh, Mustafa's position? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh... I guess it's a good position to have when you're in a lead. Uh, I mean, either it's a pawn, knight against the bishop. Uh, I'm not that uh, versed in my classics, but I would say that the white doesn't have too much risk there, which I think is a, you know, draw is a good result at this point. So I guess we should take it. Stable position I, I, and nothing to complain about, I think. What do you think? I agree with you. I just, I'm just going to let you do the talking because everything you said, and we see a queen trade being offered uh, because the pawn structure is healthier uh, for white here. And well, you, you, he's your pickup, right? You just got him, Mustafa Imaz, coming off the Taz of Steel Challengers event where he performed in second place. He was really strong in that. So what does this do for your, your confidence as a manager? You're looking at him. He won uh, the first couple games. Now in game three, no issues whatsoever against the board one for the opposing team. Are we going to see more Mustafa Yamas? Yeah, I hope so. Although not in the next round because he already told me that he is also playing uh, somewhere over the board. I think in Norwegian League or something. So yeah, that's oh, why nice. that's why I realized. Uh, basically, it hit me after last week's match. I was like, okay, because I didn't want to stack up the team with like. 15 people and then nobody can play but then i re realized right. why some other teams have a little bit more deep depth in their rosters 
So yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, I guess it's a good thing that that these professionals have opportunities. And uh, as far as I know, these leagues are usually what what the major brings in the majority of the income. So yeah, happy to see that. And we do have some some replacements. We have signed the Grandmaster Vatil Durarbayoli and also uh, Grandmaster Alexander Injic. So yeah, I'm still pondering on how the team will look like, and, but I have some rough sketches and ideas. But yeah, as far nice as I understand, you, if uh, I good. understood the, the format correctly, we will be playing more than one week. So hopefully we will see Mustafa in action in some other round as well. Very good. Yeah. And wow, look at this move from Mustafa. I mean, F4, he hits the queen. I think right. we're going to see F5 next. That bishop on G6, not a happy camper. You were talking about the isolated pawn and the classics. I mean, this seems like a very nice way of dealing with it. The knight on D4, Aaron Nimzovic would be very proud. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like these positions, they're all like I, I as Patser at the club level, we look at this and we say, oh, it's an isolated pawn. It's almost one 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 way street <laughs> and such. It, it turns out that sometimes these positions are more resilient, and I often find myself, I don't know, not not realizing that there's not much advantage, even though it's it's a clear weakness. But uh, yeah, I I mean, I guess at this level, it's very pleasant position for white, and more importantly, it's easier to play in this relatively fast-paced uh, tempo, right? For right. sure. I mean, this looks really nice for Imaz. And I actually want to draw our attention to another game while Matthias Blumont thinks, because if we bring back our four-board view, you're going to be happy about this. Look in the bottom right. Bardia Ooh. Dineshvar. Yeah, you know, he's coming in. And I am in title, but a GM in strength. And, you know, that we just see him with the upper hand, with a skewer of the queen and the rook. So, Yakoslav here, what are you, what are you making of this? This looks great for him. What are you feeding him? Man? Yeah, yeah. What are I mean, y'all feeding him? <laughs> Just a small correction. <laughs> I think he's actually made his GM title recently, uh, in like last month or last week or something. I think he made his final norm, which I, I guess when you consider how he's playing, uh, you could assume <laughs> that it's just a matter of time anyway. Like, I don't know. I, it has been a super impressive. Like, I, I, I thought he might be a little bit underrated online specialist, but so far what he's doing in, in this league, it's beyond depressive in my opinion. Like, yeah. Another strong Basically, IM so that I managed to pick up, and and it turned out to be a bullseye so far. Oh man, wow! All right, man, you guys, what's the lottery next week? Then that's what you think about that. Man? <laughs> wow, you got the lottery numbers too, man. That's crazy. He, that's a nice pick from Bardia. They definitely playing great chess. <laughs> yeah, well, I have a, there is not also some chess fantasy or something. That would be nice. <laughs> Chess fantasy, well, right? Yeah. Fantasy league. This this round is a chess fantasy for your squad because before we let you go, all four boards for your team look like they might win their games. Like the evaluations are through the roof for the Croatia Bulldogs. In the top left, the eval bar is all the way up because that bishop on h5 is about to be trapped, it looks like. In the top right, uh, Bog, uh, Bogdan Daniel Dejac with a clear edge, better pawns, more activity. In the bottom left, it looks like Aline Rovers. I mean, that is a great signing for you as well. She's playing her uh, first match. She had tough pairings in the first two, but with the black pieces, she looks extremely stable and in charge. So, uh, Vyakoslav here, I mean, you know, I think you need to tell us the lottery numbers. Like, what goes into making a successful team? It couldn't get more successful than your squad this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I hope it continues. So after I, last week, I don't know if you remember, but there was this break, uh, heartbreaking blunder in the game between Deak and uh, Swirts. This I don't know if it was mouse sleep mm -hmm. or or something. So yeah, it's it's nice to bounce back in 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 such a convincing fashion. I don't want to jinx it yet, but as uh, it looks like it's the match will be in the bag. So yeah, maybe I should indeed put some water in this week. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send you some money. I'll, I'll pay Paolo to you. Yeah. I'm gonna need that, sure, need that sure, 10, sure. 10x back. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've uh, really had a lot of fun with you here. Uh, everybody, if you uh, want to, you should follow Flagmaster Nemitz. Uh, that's uh, the Twitch channel that you're current, he's currently streaming on. So, uh, Vyakoslav, we'll let you back to it, but uh, we hope to send many viewers your way, some follows, influxing. And uh, we love your Croatia Bulldogs. It seems like you are going well on your way to match victory. So, we'll be seeing more of great success from your team. So, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me and keep up the, the good work. And, and yeah, hope to see this commentary do next week. You bring me good luck, apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, well, thank you so much. And that is your manager of the Croatia Bulldogs, James. I mean, so much fun to hear his thoughts. You know, he clearly is such a chess lover, he has some really instructive uh 
content out there for all growing chess players. So, uh, you know, it's nice to see him join us and his team having success. Absolutely. Team having success here, right? We play in the lottery. I mean, everybody about to be paid over here, man. I mean, we have Flagmaster and Mimic there, right? So very strong player, obviously. So, um, yeah, strong stuff here from his team, too. I mean, this is this is looking good. Three boards out of four are all winning for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they're really just cruising right now because uh, we see on the board in front of us, the one between uh, Bogdan Denodeoc and Dimitri Kovac. I mean, look at this knight on h7, kick backwards. This a7 pawn can be captured if Bogdan Daniel wants it. He does. He says, give me that. And watch out wow. for E6. I'm That's what I'm looking it. for, James. I was going to play that at the first. Like, I didn't even care about the A7 palm. But he just, like, he got that on tap. Man. <laughs> he says, all right, I'll trade a pair of rooks. If your rook comes over here, then I'll play E6. Your king is wide open. G6 will be loose. If G6 falls, H5 is likely next. And what's that bishop doing? That's a big pawn over there. So oh, this is looking goodness. like a one-sided game. Yeah, this is looking definitely one sided here. I mean, uh, he used his time very well. You have so many aspirations, so many things you can do. E6 is super strong here. I mean, just open up the whole position. G6 is going to be uh, very weak as well. I mean, we have a nice places placement for the pieces. The 9087 is doing what again, right? And the bishop on A8, oh my goodness, two bad pieces versus, you know, two good pieces. I mean, it's very clear who's who's in charge here. Yeah, and you mentioned good pieces, and I think we should go to our bird's eye view because in a specific game, uh, there is a piece that is not very good. Look at the top left. That bishop on g4 is trapped Ooh. in its oh, place. Yeah, Mustafa Ilmaz is in charge, while on the bottom right, uh, Bardia Dineshwar is up, I don't know how much, uh, an exchange. So he's got a rook for Justin Heidemann's knight. That's just crushing as he brought his rook down to d1 in the bottom right. The bottom left, the lean rover, she's just taking all the squares in the center of the board against Michael Bazold. But let's go to board one because it might be the last time we stop here. James, this bishop on g4, it is trapped, has nowhere to go. And I'm not even sure if you need to take it right away. It can't move anywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, you're right, Robert. Yeah, you're right. You're right, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Oh, gosh. It's just trapped. Nowhere for it to go. Blue bump down to 20 seconds and change. James, this is a blowout. The, blo I mean, the Bulldogs are killing them. You know, never would I thought that I would choose a dog over a bear. You know, and never until today will change your mind, okay? The Bulldogs are very, very strong. It's a lot of them, right? A lot of Bulldogs is different than one bulldog so it's a they, they teamed up today and they definitely you know have a very impressive victory as it looks like they're closing in on the match right now i'm going to end it eight and a half to you know whatever maybe three if they draw that game whatever the fourth ha happens there but very strong stuff here from from the bulldogs and as we see in the birds of e6 played in the top right bogdan daniel Deoc, he's going for it but let's go to aline rober's game in the bottom left because Jeez. she's in some time Bro? trouble we know we know Michael Bazold moves instantly. His position is quite bad. It's dangerous, but look <laughs> at the clock. She's down to 20 seconds, James. Now, what's funny is I'm laughing because, like, he did this every game. You know, Mike just, like, he was winning, you know, he like, crushing. And then we came back. It's like, Mike, come on, man. You he, he was moving too fast. He really blitzed him. And then, like, you know, I mean, the time obviously is there, but 19 seconds. So he's getting up on time, but it's not accurate. James, you ever seen this? A queen on G1, king on H2? That doesn't look right. Yeah, something went wrong there. Something like some 960 went wrong. Or, you know, started at 960 here. Whoop, check, king back. Well, he about, she, she about to, oh, okay, never mind. I had to go there. She about to cook him. Rook F4, rook G6. <laughs> oh, well, I think you're right, though. That rook's coming up, and psh, let's go for that king. And great decision by Aline right there. A lot of people in time trouble, they freak out. I'm up upon the straight queens. She said, what do you mean? I'm up a pawn and I have the attack. My king is safe and sound. Let's bring the artillery. And here comes rook f5, rook h5. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is a, this is a crush here. What happened? Look at how them pawns are in the center. Like, what happened to your center pawns? He had D and E. Now he does not have D or E. They are both gone here. And uh, time trouble is there for her, but she just closed it in. Wait, bishop d6. Okay. Hey, she can yeah. still fight here. Definitely. Yeah, she's just like, let me trade, open up that F file, you know, yeah. get that bishop out of here. Yeah, definitely. Trade them okay. boys off. Well, she has 15 seconds, which, uh, oh, rook d5, rook Ooh. h5, we know what's up. Is that queen trapped? King like, d2. If king oh, you're rook right. H oh, king it's going gonna, gonna to go back here <laughs> now. <laughs> like, just go, oh, rook c5. She's like 
surprising me. I don't know where her rooks are going, what's, the, what's going on here, but she is the center all protected by her queen and her knight. So, oh, just bring bring these pieces over. Like, at some point, you just got to play E3 like Bogdan Daniel Dayaj. Right, yeah, and play E3. We'll open it up just like oh, that game. Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 oh, oh, hit him, split him, hit him oh. on the board. That was nasty. I was not expecting it. I was confused by Rook C5, but she says, I'll show you why. And by the way, Bardia Dineshwar did win with the black pieces. A huge win uh, for the Bulldogs. Knight F3 check is incoming. And if you play King to F1, E3, bam, going to hit you where it hurts with Knight G4. So let's see. The Rook E2, Knight F3 check, King F1 probably, and then E3. Anyway. E3, open up shop. Hello, who's home? Oh, Hi. oh Queen whoa. F3. Is... She's going for this pawn, but apparently that was an inaccuracy of, of sort. I don't know why. It's oh, really E3 strong. Yeah, it does. It's very strong. I don't know why. Wow. What do you even do? Queen H5? But what's the next move after is it this? So, oh, my gosh. Oh, what it defense? Is. It is. Queen yeah, B5. Five. Yeah, that's a strong move. That came out of nowhere. Like, it looked completely winning for, for Black. But now, Michael Bizol, he might keep the Bears in this match. But I still like the attack, James. I don't trust the defense with this king being wide open. I mean, it's, it's, he's moving very quickly, oh. too, as well. Dang, wait, he, that's the trade. Oh, and now it's better for White all of a sudden. Somehow, oh. things have gone that's out of match. hand for Aline Rovers. She was cruising. She sacked that exchange. And suddenly, Michael Bizol, his lead on the clock is paying off. Yeah, chess, chess is uh, chess is hard here. You know, she definitely in time trouble. The time trouble got to her, as you can see here. Man, what a brave move! Like, on takes e three. Maybe you guess you take twice then, since you're really feeling like that. <laughs> no good knight discovers. Maybe there's knight d four takes c two. Just grab yeah. a few pawns. But the rooks, of course, are better. They up an exchange for white. But give me this pawn. But let's uh. Zoom out of here. Go to the bird's eye view just because so many games are coming to their conclusion in the top left. Wait, what? Mustafa Yilmaz was up a piece. Now he's losing. But no. Blue Bomb has turned this game around. Oh, my goodness. Chess a draw is between oh, both on Daniel. Draw. Oh, my gosh. He's oh. winning. Matthias Blue Bomb is just going to take on F2. Even if the queen protects it, it's a winning king and pawn endgame for the Berlin Bears. Oh, my goodness, bro. This whole match is turning around. And Blue Bomb won. Wow. I know he can't believe it. We got to see what happened there. How did that even happen? How did how did that even happen there? Bardia is the only win now? Jeez, what happened? It was like it was going to be 3 0. Yeah. Three and now, something like that. And now suddenly the Bears are in charge in this round because Michael Bezold in the bottom left. I mean, look at that game. It's an end game where Black has chances. You have a knight and one pawn versus a rook. But unfortunately, their pawns on the queen side. If those pawns disappeared, we'd say, no problem. We could almost certainly make a draw. But with those pawns that knight ever gets kicked, the rooks are going to team up and go after it. Yeah, that pawn is definitely loose here. And we also have the outside A that we can use ourselves here. You are in time trouble. Two seconds there. Is that what that was? Whoa, you got 3.5. And where's this no king going? You need to be very careful because oh, you could walk right. into checkmates of sorts. Like this rook coming down to C3. Uh, thankfully, the rook protects, but 3.5 seconds for Aline Rovers. She needs to hold this game. That'd be huge for the Bulldogs. Yeah, knight g6 check. Okay, we're looking good. Looking Wait, good for king? white still. Check. King d3. Tuck and roll. Okay, so many checks. Like this king is running all the way. And be very careful if you're white. Knights are such tricky pieces. Yeah, yeah just don't get forked, right? Just try not to get forked. Easier said than done. Maybe centralize the rook. Move it over one. Rook e4. Okay, that's a nice check. Rook. Oh, rook don't G6. play rook g6. Don't Ooh, play rook wee! g6. <laughs> I was about to play it too. I was like, oh, yeah, just put the rook on g6. And then you hang a fork. Yeah, you better watch out. There's a fork on d4 if this rook moves off the d file. Uh, so. A minute left for Michael Bazold and Aline's doing very well on the clock all of a sudden. She uh, you know, has had about a minute for a while. She makes sure to step out of any pins if she wants her knight to get back to e5. So she's doing this pretty decently, I would say. Oh, definitely. Of, of course. Making uh, the best of what she has, even in a time situation, with the tricky knight, too, as well. Yeah. And the, the Bears will get another game. At, oh, oh, my gosh. If suddenly uh, she takes this pawn, she could win with these outside passers. You know, we don't even know what's happening anymore. You might as well just turn the engine off. It don't even matter. It doesn't matter. Nobody's following anything. Nobody knows what's really going on. 
In fact, we thought this match was over, but it is nowhere near that now. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, she's and defending. Last round, I mean, yeah, she's defending, right? Yeah, but no, James, you're right. I mean, it looked like the Bulldogs were just going to clean sweep this round, and suddenly the Bears, you know, if they win this, James, seven to five, they have a legitimate chance going into the final round. Think about that. Think about you know, you know, shoot, the momentum swing could be huge there. I mean, going from oh, we closing the match out to like oh, we might lose the match. That's huge. That's absolutely a huge momentum swing. Psychology, right, as well there. How do you feel? And if you feel good, you can play good, but also you can be scared and, and mess things up. And it's final round, especially based off of whatever those pairings look like. Wow. I mean, this is still a defensive uh, task for Aline Roberts, but she's fighting perfectly. No progress yet. But, you know, you have to watch out because at some point, this pawn is going to be an easy target. And he brings the king up, mm, and the knight comes out going move. for this pawn. Yeah, I think King A4 was nice checking. Now he can take it. I think we just too fast to queening. Oh! Whoa! Oh, that was, that's tricky. Whoa. <laughs> tricky knights. Yeah, she's trying her best, but the king just steps back, and now the pawn is, is his. And yeah, you just have to uh, yeah, block and take. Okay, going after this pawn, I guess, but it should not be enough. Just take this one here. Knight C5 is a fork, but a rook can give a check on the sixth rank. Oh, wait, wait, take, oh, I take the pawn. I knew she was so wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she missed She could have grabbed it. What's oh, going on man. here? Oh, man. Oh, okay. Let's bring up an analysis board. A couple things. Knight takes, rook takes, get rid of that pass pawn. This should be a draw as the knight gets back in the game. And then in this position, instead of knight e4, rook a1 check. The king had a slide back. Rook takes a5, protects the knight. She could have stolen the pawn. She's in time trouble. Can hardly blame her. I mean, both sides will make mistakes. And oh, speaking of mistakes, there's a four. Oh, but it's not. Yeah. Ah, oh, look at him. No, it wasn't. He is too tricky. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, he's. Man. What is happening in this game? Rook takes pawn. Look at the time, uh, though. Take wait, she could hold this. She could hold this if he is not careful. Check. Check. Oh, the nice that hanging? was. Yeah, that was well yeah, that's done. That's it. Yeah, nice hanging. That's it. That's it. Boom. And he got it. And he got it. Wow, what a game, bro. This game was long and like lots of moves. I mean, how many moves was this? We're at 100. Oh, okay, 100. I knew it was something like that. Okay. Yeah, too many moves, man. Honestly, the ups and downs. I'm going to need to take a breather. I mean, this is just yeah. crazy stuff. But Michael Bazol gets a win for the Berlin Bears. It's now 7-5. to five, So they have a legitimate chance. I really thought they were done. I counted them out. I thought this was match over. But somehow Michael Bazold wins. I mean, somehow Matias Bluebaum. I'm going to quickly pull up that game. I mean, I just oh don't man. understand when that bishop was trapped. Like, where'd that – where'd it go? Like, it was somewhere back here. Is up a piece. Up a whole like, piece. You're up a knight on d4. A, a clean extra. But you can go for an attack, try to deliver I mean, a checkmate. But it looks like there was a blunder around here, James. Like, right around here, the piece got tied up. And after the swap, rook e4 happens. Oh. And – Queen check and rook h4. Dang, Ooh. that's life happens fast. Ooh -wee. Get that off the screen, bro. Rook h1, that's crazy, man. That's disgusting. Oh my goodness. Rook h1 is mating. You gotta get the piece back. Dang. Yeah, it. and then Bl black, black went on to win this. Wow. Oh my gosh. So the Berlin Bears, mm -hmm. they could have been knocked out. Aline Rovers is winning. Uh, Matthias Bluebaum, I mean, he was dead lost, but he wins, and Michael Bazold wins, and suddenly, two and a half, one and a half in favor of the Bears in that round. James, I still cannot wrap my mind around what just happened. I mean, actually, I mean, I feel like if I'm playing for the Bulldogs, I'm still, I'm the, I'm the same way. I'm shocked. I'm literally, legitimately shocked right now that this happened, and I think Bears need to really ride this momentum wave, and this could be, you know, this could be a real match. It is right now, guys. I mean, five to seven. That's very close. It's all about this last round now. They are in striking distance, and I don't know who's going to make it. And we see the overall scores. Uh, Bogdan Daniel Deach with two and a half points out of three. Bardia Dineshvar also with two and a half out of three. And for Mustafa Yamaz, it could have been three out of three, but he blundered in a piece-up position. So the Bears, their top two boards are doing well, at least on the scoreboard. The games have been shaky somewhat, uh, but they need all four boards to perform here. James, uh, even Josephine Hyman, she gets to play against Aline Robers, and that match uh, could help the Bears survive here. That is correct. In fact, yeah, I mean, she's playing, uh, yeah, that's right. 
they're playing each other now. I mean, that's where they, they matched up even on the scorecard too as well. So this is the match that she probably was looking the most forward to is in like, okay, you know, I have a really fighting good chance here to try to win. I mean, every match was much harder than the other ones, but this one, she's like, yeah, okay. If I can, if, if I need to strike right now is the time because every point really counts in the first eight and a half takes this thing. And it could be either team right now. And Vyacheslav Nemets, the team manager for Croatia, might be a little bit upset all of a sudden. Commentators curse, uh, but we'll see if the Croatia Bulldogs can finish what they started, if they can take down the Berlin Bears. We'll find that out as round four of this Pro Chess League match continues in just a few minutes. Do not go anywhere. I don't think about it during the games, but I certainly like do think about how like few African Americans there are at like the top level. So I try to do my best to to motivate more people like us to give it a try and hopefully succeed.
we have Bogdan Daniel Dejac on screen. He is the board one for the Croatia Bulldogs, and he will be looking to put this match away in favor of his squad. It looked like it was a foregone conclusion that the Bulldogs would take it in three rounds, but that did not happen. So as we see, he is the top scorer for his team, along with Bardia Dineshvar, uh, who is board three for the Bulldogs. James, it still feels like anyone's match because the momentum has somewhat shifted to the Berlin Bears. Yeah, momentum is huge here. If you can ride the momentum wave there, I mean, any, anything can happen, right? You're feeling good. You're like, yo, we won that match? We won? Wow. We Oh, we have a shot. And then everything, things start clicking, things start turning, right, where they actually feel like they have a real legit shot at this, and they actually do here. So it is now, you know, uh, the Bulldogs trying to put it away. You need one and a half? Come on. They're like, come on, we can do this. We got four games. We need one and a half. But also the Bears are going to do everything in their power to try to stop them from clinching. They will indeed, and we'll look at the board-by-board -board matchups here in the fourth round. It's one versus one, all the way down to four versus four. So, for the Bears, they get white on the top two, uh, Kolars and Bluebaum. They get the white pieces. Bezold and Heinemann get black. So, James, they need to score three points, minimum, do the Berlin Bears. Who do you think needs to do the heavy lifting? You know, it looks like I think the bottom boards need to do more of the heavy lifting there. If the if Yosevian can get a win... And Bezo get a win there. I mean, it's like, oh, snap, we, we, we tied. And then it's going to be up there at the top. Whatever happens up there is a shakeup. That could go either way. One and a half, one and a half, whoever clinches. That's it. That is it, right? So the bottom, I think the bottom half this time, got to get the ball rolling and quickly. Maybe not quickly, but you do want to strike now, strike fast, good, win the game. That's it. We just got to get a dub on the board at the bottom board. Well, sometimes it feels like the only way to get a dub against Bogdan Daniel Dejac is to steal his files. So I think if you're the Berlin Bears, you need to grab those notes behind him. I think that's you know, that old school chess method, handwritten notes, uh, positions, right. uh, you know, in diagrams. So that is the board one for the Bulldogs. Chat, get involved. Let us know. Do you think the Berlin Bears can actually come back and take this match? They look like they were out of it, but now they do have a little bit legitimate chance. So let us know. Now, let James and I know what you think, and the action has taken off. Who you got, chat? Put it in the chat right now. Who do you got? This is your time now. This is it. This is the final round here. Is it the Bulldogs or the Bears for you? Yeah. Uh, look at this. Uh, quiet start to this game. The Bishop slides out to F4 after Black played H6. This has become increasingly popular thanks to Magnus Carlsen. He likes to make these quiet moves like H6, not developing his pieces yet. And White does seem to have a lead in terms of development, uh, but Black is ultra solid. No weaknesses, no squares to target. And James, must win territory. I know you're a fan. Should we see a move like G4 here? Absolutely. I mean, you just play G4 and, and don't even think twice about it right now. Of course, he, th he thought twice about it and played 92, which is totally understandable. But definitely, I mean, you want to create some things here, create some chances and create some imbalances in some areas. Now, there is an imbalance in the pawn structure here. Obviously, we have a very classical um, um, Carlsbad in a way in reverse type thing. But we have a B4, B5 as our usual stuff is what you want to do with white. But I mean, I, I like the aggression, right? Like, go for it. Rook G1, G4, H3, G4, right? Something I'm going to G4. You also have knight G3 after taking. You really just don't want to go like probably the classical routes of a regular chess here that you would go in a classical game um, because we need to win. And he does trade bishops, go knight G3. I think we might see bishop D3 and a swap and maybe eventually F3 and E4. Just a slow push in the center. And if you look at the board and the pawn structure, a white does have an extra pawn in the center. Black has one, white has two. And ooh, Harry the H pawn, James. I was not I like expecting it. that. I like it. I like it all day, baby. Okay, H4, H5, <laughs> and we live. Grab that space. And then Bishop D3. Now we got stuff like Rook H4. It's very strange, but I'm definitely going Rook Lift up there. And I'm probably casting Queen side here. I like to be very creative. I'm a very creative player myself. So I love creativity and also having uh, active pieces and going for attacks, especially when you have, you know, uh, trumps to say so. Like I have space. I have uh, space on the King side. I'm probably not trying to castle that way. I do want to attack you. This is for the team. You know, and, and it's a little bit of risk involved, obviously, too, as well. But I am a big fan of this H4, H5 decision from Booba. Yeah, well, this game is looking like both kings may castle in either direction. We don't know. Uh, they may trick us and go the opposite way of what we expect. Uh, but let's actually zoom out of this one for a moment, just because other games have begun. And both teams, they 
desperately want to win this match. They do not want to play the St. Louis Archbishops. The loser of this match has that fate. But look in the top right. Uh, Gawain Jones may play for the Norway Gnomes, but he has been one of the biggest proponents of this opening. And Dimitri Kolar's strikes in the center. I think we should dive right into that board. But by the way, Michael Bazold hasn't moved. It's the only time we've seen him under 10 minutes. He must just not be at the board uh, in the yeah. bottom left. He finally does move. But let's go to the top right because that game is looking fascinating. And Gawain Jones, he's he essays the Grand Prix attack against the Sicilian all day. And James is already tactics involving Bishop takes F7, check, and pawn to E6. Oh, we love this strong. So, yeah, that's very strong. Actually, I saw you guys mention that. Uh, it was another, I don't know whose game that was, but it was definitely a game. I think it was yesterday, maybe it was yesterday. It was just a game you guys, you and uh, Danny was commentating on that had this, this tactic in it. I don't remember what game that was, but. Yeah, this is nasty, wicked stuff here. Grand Prix is definitely a scary one, guys. For Sicilian players, the Grand Prix is not one that you're happy to see, right? It's one of those anti-Sicilians in a way that you're just like, eh, I, you know, I played a Sicilian and played a Sicilian. I don't want to be anti-Sicilian. And this is a very strong one, especially in fast time controls. You don't have as much time to think here, especially as E5, the knight goes to H5 here. I definitely like White's prospects. Yeah, I mean, knight takes f4. I'm not even sure you want to take that pawn because yeah. white could castle, take that pawn, open the f file. Thank you very much. So it feels like with knight g5 on tap, bishop takes f7 being available, uh, you could just play a solid move like d3 and say knights on the rim are looking particularly dim here. So I feel like this is going to be a combative game, but Dimitri Kolos, he's the one spending time. You know he's looking at these tactics on f7. He's thinking about knight g5. He goes he for does. it. Boom. He does. He goes for it. Yeah, we'll see how quick I'm curious how quickly Ilmaz plays James because that will dictate or at least show to us you know, how ready he is if he expects this at all. Yeah, he actually, I can see, yeah, he's still thinking. He still, he wasn't expecting, maybe he expected it, but he was like, yeah, okay, he went for it. So with King G8, seems right. We take, and now E6 is just a weak square with the rook locked in the corner on H8 right now. So such a weird position to see and well <laughs> these players they're, they're finally going to spend a bit of time because it's mm. hectic here let's go to a, uh, the bird's eye view once more because look at the bottom left that may look unfamiliar uh, that type of position to most people but not to me it's actually one of my favorite openings from the dingy? black side that's a G oh james come on man you study too much you know what's <laughs> up you know that's a gingy Indian. So let's go wow. right in there. It's also known as the pterodactyl beef eater variation, but oh, it's more here. commonly referred to as the gingy Indian. Wow. Yeah, the gingy Indian. Yeah, I haven't seen much of that. Wow. And you can't, yeah. And then you put everything on dark. Yeah, this is yeah. a very fun opening. Yeah, and it looks like White knew exactly what to do. H4, you want to play H5, open up this line to Knight of Six. And after H5, do not take it. Because if you take, White just goes, bam. You can take on H5. And after Pawn takes, play E4. Queen takes H5. And your king Ooh. is never going to be happy. Advantage White. Ooh. So instead, you play Rook to G8. And then after Swap, Swap, this is a very important move. I shouldn't teach people how to play against it. But Black often wants to put the Queen on A5 to keep White tied down to the C3 Pawn. So Queen A4 stops Queen A5 and pins the D6 Pawn all at once. Wow. Yeah, this is these these are very strange positions. Like it's a lot of lots of things happen here. The king runs to c7 and stuff like that. Like it's but wait a second. Oh no, this is right. Yeah, I remember this. I remember some of this theory. 95. Yeah. With, uh, it just looks, man, it's very deceptive. This is a very strange opening. <laughs> it's it, I have to say, Jim, a fantastic choice against a young opponent. Because for yeah. Bodia Dineshvar, the Jinji Indian went out of style, uh, you know, in 20 years ago, maybe more. Right, and so right. for Michael Bazold, somebody who's been around a veteran of the game, he's like, let's just play something that my opponent is less familiar with. And he's just capturing quickly. Watch out, though, this B7 pawn, this G2 bishop. For the long term, that means the knight can't really move very easily. But Queen A6 protects and attacks. James, I'm loving the opening yeah. choice from Black. And he got a good position, too. I mean, queen a6 to c4 is definitely, you see this all the time in the Nimzo now. They definitely like white a lot. But, I mean, practical chances, yeah, I'm definitely, I, I love it. I love it. This reminds me a lot of a uh, Nimzo India, of course, the a3 variation um, or whatever they call it. Is that same ish or something? But a3, where um, a3 after bishop b4, you take on c3, and you play c5, knight c6, b6, knight a5, bishop a6. Rook c8, take on d4, bully to c4 pawn, right? So you can do the same thing here. Even uh, um, Roman Jinji has really recommends sometimes queen c8, b7, 
over to c6. And in this case, it's like queen a6 to hit c4. We can take c4 to be able to take this pawn over here. And it's just the fact that the double pawns are here. We trade pieces off and black has a nice game. But those bishops can be very menacing. Yeah, queen a6 right now. Go right for the pawn. I'm not sure bishop f3 up some kind of knight jump. Uh, but it, white does have rook h4 as a rook lift to defend. But then black can slide the rook to h8 and say, get that rook out of here. I want to win this pawn on c4. So uh, this is a big moment here for Michael Bizold and the Bears. If he can take down Bardia Dineshvar with black, that would give them some legitimate hopes in this match. I'm expecting queen a6. Looks like the very natural move. Uh, but let's leave him to it because every single game uh, is important here. The Bulldogs need just one and a half. And as I look across the boards here, looking level in the top left, looking quite level despite a weird position in the top right. And then in the bottom right, that one's looking like it's going to be a real battle between Aline Robers and Josephine Heinemann. So, uh, James, I'll let you choose uh, which game is most interesting to you. Let's actually go to the ladies' game there. They actually always, uh, you know, women's games are very, very, a lot of times I see tactical, aggressive. They just want to fight each other. They, they always want to, like, play for attacking chances or at least to win the game, right? They, they, there's not a many quick draws in the women games and stuff like that. Definitely is going to be a fight in this one. So I believe so. This looks like a, some type of Sicilian. White. Yeah. Maybe a position one. Yeah, it, it maybe was. A and I've never heard of this. The Knight of Amsterdam variation. And Aline Robers, you know, she's Dutch playing into the Amsterdam variation. Uh, I, I don't know uh, of these opening names, but all I know is when I see this position, it's like about the dark squares of black can trade off the dark square bishops and leave white saddle with this one. That can be good. And G6 clearly played against this light square bishop. Absolutely, of course. And they're both 0-3 here. So being with that score, you know, they, they are like, I, I need to fight. I'm here. You know, you losing game after game. You get annoyed. Absolutely. You're like, I got to win, right? So this is definitely a big game, I think. With these two, a lot of tension here. They both want to win. And uh, I think they're both going to go for a Sicilian combative opening. Dark squares are weak around there. I mean, why don't I just I mean, F5 is just screaming. But I mean, of course, you gotta you gotta be careful. F5 is just screaming. What if what if yeah? Because she could play F5. So <laughs> I'm just gonna play it. Yeah, Absolutely. it's one of those big moves where you know F5 gives away even more of the dark squares. But if you take the knight hops in, you don't really want that. Mm, and B4 right. is loose, but so is D5. Like both players have loose pawns. In this position, I would not take on B4 if I were playing with the white pieces here. I feel like D5 is the more valuable pawn, and the rook hits the queen and the knight behind it. So, James, I don't really know what to make of this. I feel like both sides uh, have their chances, uh, and this, you know, F5 is looking reasonable. Um, I, I don't, I really don't want to take this pawn. I'm going to be honest. I, I'm looking at it. Yeah. I see it's there, but I really, really don't want to capture it. Yeah, we're not touching that pawn. Definitely not. Especially uh, if we were castle queen side, it's a little bit different. You've even seen that. I think uh, Jan beat um, in the candidates Ferugia with that queen takes before knight orf. So it is like you can take it when you're castle queen side in many cases, and then if you're aggressively attacking. But on th in this way, you know, you're just obviously opening up the rook uh, on b8, the g2 bishop, or uh, the bishop is going to be able to hit g2 after taking on d5. So we just don't even worry about that side of the board. Exactly. You just push it and think about everything else later. F5 and we live. But of course, Bishop B5 right now. Maybe we take on G6 twice. Is that the idea? You take on B3, which is interesting. Yeah. It might get real spicy in these positions right. because there's a rook staring down the bishop. There might be tactics available. And perhaps Josephine says, I don't want any part of this tactics. Let's bring my knight to F6. Go after this D5 pawn with a second piece. And I really don't feel like white can actually keep that pawn. So uh, mm -hmm. there's going to be compensation. Bishop H6, open the F file, yeah. take on G6. Ooh, really exciting stuff. Yeah, definitely. A white is playing for the initiative here. Black is trying to do the opposite or actually trying to uh, neutralize the initiative. Maybe a bishop g5. That isn't an idea. You see this a lot. Because the bishop's so bad, you want to trade it off and, and neutralize. Of course, my dark squares are weak. I can cover them. And d5's again weak. It's possible. Let me have to yeah. test, though. Yeah, it's it's one of those big decisions. And if the queen were ever to leave d8, maybe there's knight a5 you have to look out for. So mm. this, this is about squares at the moment. So both sides are trying to figure out uh, where to put their piece in. James, you called it. It's been played. Uh, if this queen lands on g5 and the bishop takes here, you have to watch out for checkmate as well. So this is a really fun game. But 
and you know the Bears they need three points minimum across the four boards. So uh, Josephine and Eileen, that's uh, kind of a toss up at the moment. Both sides are playing enterprising chess, but I'm looking across the boards. Top left looks very solid. Nothing, uh, no dents in the position for either side. The top yeah, right. Gene. Yeah. Has normalized, right? That like was a weird opening with a bishop sack, but the, looks oh, like man. a standard game. And the bottom left, that one still looks weird to me, uh, James. But the eval bar is saying that Bardia Dineshvar has the better position from that Jinji Indian. Yeah, it's very difficult. That one is like all the structure, all the pieces, like double pawns on, on F, double pawns on C, open B file, bishop versus knight. Who is better there? There is a lot of play in that game. That's a lot. Of, and now they traded. Okay, so. Knight versus Bishop. Yeah. East is weak, though. I, I mean, I think I like black here. Yeah, it's, it's one of these positions where, as we kind of look closer, the pawn e6, it's a great pass pawn. The bishop can slide to d5. The bishop can serve like a pawn, protecting another passer. But this knight can also slide in front. And knights are the best blockaders against pass pawns. The issue for Bezold is, well, how can he actually play for a win? The team yeah. will need three total points. He brings his king to block. He did protect this pawn with his rook. Uh, but what if this bishop sits on d5, James? I don't see any way to kick it out. Yeah, that's the problem here. I mean, e6 is very weak, but after bishop d5, I mean, it's just kind of chilling. And white maybe could just, you know, play this for two results, which really we are playing for that anyway right here, it feels like. It's white here. I think it's easier to play as white, but black does have, you know, in the closed position, you would like the knight, and we do have the knight here. Sort of closed. White can play, black can play. I mean, I, I think white has a slider advantage, so it's just, yeah. just it, it looks better. It looks better, and it feels a little bit better after we do a, a little evaluation of the position. Yeah, a6, right? Bishop d5, rookie, rookie b1, king c7. Yeah, e couldn't go to e7 because the b7 pawn would have been lost, so back to c7. And uh, it just feels like black should be able to go out for this pawn. There's just no way. The knight on b6, James. That's a bad piece because if your rook comes to e7, your knight goes to c8, what's it going to a7 and c6, and that takes way too long. <laughs> way too many pieces, way too many moves. But, of course, it is possible, of course, because of the fact that um, you know, it's a close position. e3, yeah, it's kind of a waiting move. Yeah, you got you to move this around. Like Maybe go to e7 and g5 at some point, potentially. Yeah. I, I feel like black doesn't have to sit and do nothing. And let's not forget, oh, what? Oh, engine is just rook a1. Oh, um, man. oh, but he has a4. Is that his idea? Oh, oh but takes it's... no, but he can play his knight to a5. How is this wrong? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that, I, I was going to. It's funny because later I was going to say that you can play a5 and try to get an outside pass pawn, but I wasn't expecting it right now. And rook b1, so he trusted his opponent and played. Let's bring up an analysis board because Ooh. rook a1 would have won this pawn. So the pawn says, okay, here, you have it. Let me take on C4. And if Rook B1, uh, James was saying there's moves like B6 and Knight A5, but I guess White had this move A5, and you're trying to break open the position for your Rook. Oh, yeah, that's engine all day. That's engine right for it. Boy, that is, man, that's sick. That's a sick idea. You you have to see A5 to go for this whole line. Uh, yeah, and he was he wasn't able to see a five, which I mean, who could blame him? A five, a six. That's tough to understand that. No, no, it's it is very far away because the natural move rook b one. There is b six, and now black has closed down that side of the board. I agree with you, James. Uh, that was kind of a easy thing for a computer to spout out, but hard for a human to see. But he may eventually play rook a one, like right now, because c four is protected, and that should. Uh, decide this game but let's go uh away from this one i do think that bardia has the upper hand the top left bogdan daniel dayach the board one for the croatia bulldogs he wants to land a one-two punch alongside uh his teammate bardia dineshvar because if they both win or if they just score one nap points the match is in fact one for the bulldogs and james this is looking really bad for bluebaum as the position Man. opens up and the white king Looks like, Man, it's, I feel like it's like eight different tactics right now. I can take on B3, C3 hanging. E4, some problems. Now, of course, my D3 knight is the problem here. But, I mean, you, you obviously know there is something going on right now. Even the eval bar tells you. But the question is, what is it and where right now? This knight takes E4 move. Knight takes, knight takes there. I don't see a way to increase the oh, wow. pin. Right. But there is something here. What could it be? 
B. Because knight C5 goes after this E4 pawn another time, but I just realized these knights are staring at each other. So maybe you can just take this knight here and then take this pawn. So Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. One minute, by the way, for Bogdan Sounds Daniel. Like, I don't know. Is knight B5 a thing? What do you do here? Oh, wow. His camera just dropped. It's so crazy. Oh, man. What is going on over there? <laughs> Everybody get it, him. Call the police. It, oh, knock it's, on the door. It's panic at the disco for Bogdan Daniel Dayach. And he, look at him. He's, he's trying to fix his camera while he's 40 seconds on the clock. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, my man. gosh. I, I, I've seen he losses never. by disconnect. I've seen losses on time. I don't think I've ever seen a loss by trying to by fix camera. your camera. Lost by oh, camera. He, wait, that was actually impressive. He got that up. And then still, he out of frame, but he definitely, yeah. <laughs> he, finally, he played knight b5, right? I knew this was coming. Knight b5 looked good, but I don't, I don't know what the kill shot was because that wasn't it. Engine didn't like it. I mean, I, I feel for him there. That's a tough one. And, you know, the multiple camera angles anyway. So uh, the chess.com team can't see behind the scenes uh, what's going on. Not really worried, but it just makes sure that fair play is upheld. So we have uh, this pawn structure upheld, b5 up to c4. That means the 93 is entrenched in there, hard to kick out. I still like Black's position, even if the eval bar says some of the edge is gone. Watch out. Rook takes d5 a threat with the queen on e2 loose behind the pawn. Tactics everywhere right now. You also have, uh, of course, um, b4. Whoa. Oh, he just smacked that boy. Whoa. He just said, give it give it up. I mean, I guess that's a good practical decision. That's yeah. Practical. Although, what if I if queen e5, you go rookie one, there's rook takes d5. So I feel like this is a problem for white. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And pawns are very weak now, but okay, rookie. Yeah, he just takes that boy. Jeez. Hey, how do you even defend it? You defend it by trading queens, which is not mm. a good idea. Wow, that's actually pretty clever because maybe white has enough pawns. So uh, this one, it's anyone's game as Bogdan Daniel Deoch is down to just 10 seconds. He did swap queens in the top left. He has the edge there. In the top right, Dimitri Kolars with the advantage against Mustafa Ilmaz, but Bardia Dineshvar in the bottom left. That's huge for Croatia. Croatia needs one win and one draw, and Bardia Dineshvar is going to get that win. He has a pass pawn on E6. So uh, the Bears, they're fighting on board four. It looks like Josephine Heinemann has a good shot there in the top right. Let's go into Dimitri Kolars and uh, his opponent, uh, Mustafa Ilmaz, because it looks like Kolars is in control. Oh, yeah, that's a very, very appealing position for White here. It feels like we have the space, Queen centralized. Knight is still on the rim over there. This was a great Grand Prix. Shout out to the Grand Prix players of the Sicilian. I used to like that myself, in fact. Grand Prix yep. is uh, very fun stuff. Very fun, very aggressive chess there, obviously. And I'm here, looking so for some. Yeah, I'm going to night, night G5 is going to happen. I'm worried about a smothered checkmate, James. Like, we Ooh. might see that. And night G5. Night G5. Night G5. And we smothered live? Come on, bro. Come yeah. Rook, Rook takes E2. There's the smothered checkmate. There it is. There it is. We have to go Rook F6 and then just give it up. Yeah, let's show the smothered checkmate. Rook takes E2. Knight F7 check. King goes here. Only move. Knight H6 is a double check. So you can't take this knight. The king is in check from the queen. No escape to F8. The bishop's here. King goes here. Bam. Take my queen. Fill the square. Knight F7 is smothered checkmate. Why would we be down a queen and a minor piece, but deliver the good? So knight F6 played by Mustafa Ilmaz. The thing the queen can just safely slide back to C4. And hey, your rook's under attack. And knight F7 check would still lead a smothered mate even yeah. with the knight being able to capture on G8. Wow, that's some cool stuff there. Yeah, queen to C4. Do we have any extra moves? They say when you find a good move, look for a better one. So I was looking to get knight F4 off, but unfortunately, rook takes E1 is check. So we mm -hmm. cannot allow that. Yeah, just safe yeah, and we, sound chess here. I mean, just bam. Yep. This rook, Easy. this square, up a pawn already. So Dimitri Colors, he's landing the knockout. And uh-oh, there's a problem, though, uh, for the Croatia Bulldogs, is that on board four, Josephine Heinemann, she is on her way to winning this game against Elian Rovers. I mean, this is a Swinging. vicious attack. Yeah, Oof. she's just cruising on the king side over here. Yikes! Left hook, right hook. My goodness. Oh, wait, this just allows four. checkmate. Oh, yeah, it's just me. Yeah, it's just me. Wait, no, Rick F1, Bishop F1. Oh, oh but Knight F2. Yeah. Look at some other checkmate. Oh, my goodness. Have to give the queen. Oh, yikes. Take them all. Everything hanging. Yeah. Beautiful. 
Wow, this is a nice game from Josephine Heinemann, but unfortunately, it's looking like it might be a little bit too little too late because the other Bulldogs are getting it done. The Bears need three wins out of the four games, and we look top right. Win for the Bears in the works. Bottom right, win for the Bears. Wow. The left side, it's uh, all Bulldogs. Yeah, it's all Bulldogs. Dang. It's so close. It is literally so close for the Bears. I mean, it, it was definitely looking like it was going to be a blowout match, and the Bears says, think again. Think again here. Making it very close, uh, closer than what we thought it was going to be and what it looked like in round two. And Michael Bezold loses that game on time, but also on the board. Let's go to our top left quickly because this is the game that needs to go the Bears' way if they actually have a shot to tie the match. I think the other two boards will be won by the Bears. But look at Bogdan Daniel Deutsch's clock. He has five seconds remaining. He's completely winning, but knights are tricky pieces. So if he blunders a knight fork, suddenly there's a chance for Bluebell. This is crazy. This is this is what we were talking about right here. It could go down to the wire, and then you'd be like, wait, who's actually about to take this? Who's going to win? Bulldogs only need half a point. That's it. Half yeah. a point. Super smart play by, by Deach, by the way. He is just repeating moves, gaining some time, brings his king up. Knight of five, your rook covers this pawn. Uh, watch out for the deep pawn. You know, that could be a runner if you're not careful. Right, there it is. Wait a second. Rook state there it wasn't December. There's knight e seven idea. So the king goes back to stop the pawn. Too strong is Deach. Yeah, he's very strong, especially with no time too as well. Like, wow. And by the way, Dimitri Colors has won for the Berlin Bears and Josephine Heinemann, she is about to score victory, it seems. So this game uh, will decide the match. And I feel like Bogdan Deach with his king blockading the pawn. James, just mop up now. Take all the pawns. Mm, yeah, okay. Now he's good to go. Yeah, and this should do it here. Man, this was tough for Blue Bomb being uh, the tough, the higher, highest rated or number uh, the number one board. And he's having, he's had a tough, a tough, tough day in PCL today. Yeah, he won that game game three somehow, but he was uh, down a piece against Mustafa Ilmaz. And he just take here. Oh, bring the king back. And the rook blocks the last check. And that's it. And that is it. Okay, so it looks like Bogdan Daniel Deach up a full rook. Uh, Matias Blum knows if he resigns, the match is over, so he might as well uh, lose on the board. How many pieces is he down? A rook uh, and all two them. pawns. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, all of them. And Josephine Heinemann won her game. So if there is some kind of accidental checkmate and the Matisse Blue on wins, then the Bears tie the match. But come on now. Let's be real. It was that crazy mouse slip in the Spanish Maniac Shrimps game. So, But, of course, that's this is not happening here. Black wins. Wow. They have won every game, I think. Did he, is he 4-0 today? No, he hasn't uh, drawn. He had one draw, did Bogdan Daniel Deoch, but he goes three and a half out of four. And I quickly want to show that uh, Josephine Heinemann, I mean, look at the final position. She brought her queen down to C1. You take this queen, a new one appears on C1. Too much extra material. So that tactical shot that she found over here would bring her, her knight into the F2 square with the mate. That was uh, only way to get out of it was a sacrifice. So great job by her in the fourth round. Unfortunately, the Bears, they got a... The too slow of a start. So as we see, a 2-2 tie in that final round, James. Uh, great wins by Kolars and Heinemann. But for the Bulldogs, nice wins for Deach and Dineshvar. Absolutely. The Bulldogs were able to pull it out here. I mean, they just had to keep the composure there because it was definitely getting close. It was getting scary. We didn't know what was going to happen. And the momentum was swinging into the Bears' favor for sure. And right here, I mean, this could have been very close. 2-2. I mean, one extra point the other way. We look, this is a different game, right? So this is a you know great job from the Bulldogs. Impressive. Just holding the composure and was able to, to clinch the match today. Yes, and we'll look, let's look at the overall match score because it was a close one. But when all was said and done, it was a win for the Croatia Bulldogs. MVP has to be Bardia Dineshvar. Bogdan Daniel okay. Dejac also had three and a half points, but that's more expected from a super GM. The youngster from Iran, three and a half out of four. James, he's got that dog in him. Yeah, I mean, that's like two, you know, it feels right now. I mean, based off the scores, they're like, who, who, who who's 2,700, right? Is it, <laughs> is it uh, Bardia or is it Bogdan or is it both of them, right? So it's scary to have that type of lineup right there, three and a half, three and a half. Yeah, they're going to be doing big numbers there. They're going to keep him in the lineup every week. Bardia and is definitely punched his ticket there.
For sure. Shout out to Dimitri Kolars for getting three out of four. That's a good performance for him. It just the rest of the team could not get high on the scoreboard. So where does that leave us after two weeks? Well, some teams, they've found themselves up at the top. And we see from uh, this match, it was Croatia going to one and one. But it's the Yogis, the, the Wizards, the Tigers with perfect scores. And we have an upcoming match between the Unicorns and the Knights that will determine the fourth and final team to reach 2-0. James, with that up next, man, like, what do you see coming? You know, it's going to be very strong chess here. Very cool. I mean, this is more of the the uh, the chess that everybody knows or you've seen the faces that you've seen, right? We got Hikaru coming up. We got the face, uh, you know, Hikaru. We also have Ray Robson coming up as well. Sam Shanklin, are you familiar with these players? So, a lot of you play. A lot of you are gonna have some fun seeing these. We know what happens when Hikaru gets down and play. Then you got Big Ray and have a nice day, Mr. Puzzle Rush himself, right? So that's gonna be nice to see. I'm excited to, to cast this next uh, this next match as well. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And well, these are the teams that are towards the top of the standings. There are eight who have struggled somewhat, and that includes the Berlin Bears. They lost to the Croatia Bulldogs. The Bulldogs go to one and one. The Bears fall to zero and two. And James, their reward. And I put that in air quotes for losing is to play the St. Louis Archbishops next week. Are we seeing the last of the Berlin Bears? You know what? It, we we can't call it here. It's tough to call it because I mean we I didn't think the St. Louis Archbishops was going to do like it's oh two. That's crazy. That's cr- I mean even you know Charlotte Cobra is strong team. Everybody on the team beat is an absolute beast, right? Led by Daniel Naroditsky, Daniel himself, right? So you know you don't know what's going to happen here. We can't call anything anymore. We thought we could, but. We just got to wait and see. You're right. We can't call uh, the shots, but the players, they let their moves do the talking. And up next is a very popular matchup between the Gotham Knights. That's led by Levy, Gotham Chess, Rosman. And their first board is Hikaru Nakamura. So they're the biggest chess YouTuber, the biggest chess streamer on a squad. And then they're taking on the California Unicorns. And don't count them out don't overlook the unicorn sam shanklin ray robson christopher you uh speaking of another puzzle rush wizard uh this Bro. matchup up ahead james we'll talk more about it you know after this break but i can't tell you how excited i am i'm very excited for of course i forgot a little christopher you what it do the kid oh man he, he was doing puzzle rush chat think about this right you do puzzle rush on your computer he does puzzle rush 50s right e back to back on an ipad okay so this is very, very, very strong chess you're going to see today. Lots of puzzles, lots of fun, and a uh, very an- highly anticipated matchup coming up next. Well, I think we have to leave the fans anticipating it for a few minutes longer. James and I are going to take a break. We'll reset because there is a whole nother match in the Pro Chess League ahead. Do not go anywhere. Congratulations to the Croatia Bulldogs on their 9-7 win over the Berlin Bears. But up next, all of our attention is going to be on the Gotham Knights and the California Unicorns. We will be right back for the start of the second match. Do not leave your seats.
In competitive chess, the weight of a win, draw, or loss is all on one's shoulders. It's easy to feel alone. Those lonely days are over. Oh my goodness! The Pro Chess League is back. Once again in chess, teammates matter. Katarina Luck, no super strong player, but Wei Yi is unstoppable in the Pro Chess League. Welcome back, PCL. A unique collection of teams, each with their own personality of different colors, shapes, and sizes. There are gnomes and knights, chess bras and bishops, and whatever the heck this is. The PCL is the only place where the best players in the world risk their fate alongside content creators and players from different levels, ages, and perspectives. Oh my gosh, oh, that oh, was oh, oh. another sick tactic by Arjun Eric nice. He sees everything. Entering its fifth season, 16 teams will reboot the PCL legacy with a new format and new schedule. Only one team can be crowned the next PCL champion. Wait a second, uh-oh. Grishuk is super unhappy. My friends, it's the 2023 Pro Chess League. Which team can rise above the rest? They won't be able to do it alone. And we see Hikaru Nakamura. He is talking because he is streaming, chatting with his viewers. He is the number one chess streamer on Twitch. And today, he is the board one for the Gotham Knights. We'll see if he can give them the boost that they need. And hello, everybody. Welcome back. It hasn't been very long. I'm Grandmaster Robert Hess. Alongside me is FIDE Master James Canty III. James, we had fun in match one, but... Now it's Hikaru Nakamura and Gotham Knights time to shine against the California Unicorns. What do you make of this matchup? This is a highly anticipated matchup. A lot of energy, a lot of vibes, a lot of streamer energy, right? YouTube, you got uh, uh, the Twitch guys, right? You got the superstars, we got the prodigies, you got the kids, you got the people you heard of. Honestly, this is a very big, fun matchup. And I'm excited to see what chess we get today. And we'll see which of these teams can leave the week undefeated. Uh, both teams, the California Unicorns and the Gotham Knights, they won in week one. So as we look at the standings, uh, we'll see will the Unicorns or will the Knights join the Yogis, the Wizards, and the Tigers? That is the big question as three wins secure the playoff spots. And earlier today, uh, we did see a match between the Berlin Bears and the St. Louis Arch, uh, not the St. Louis Arch, but excuse me, and the Croatia Bulldogs, uh, the Berlin Bears, they dropped to 0 out of 2. The Bulldogs went up to 1 out of 1, uh, one and 1, and the Bears will face the St. Louis Archbishops next week. Never a fun reward, James. Yeah, never a fun reward. Right? Never a fun reward when you take a loss, especially when it's a strong team, too, because you're going to have to face another strong team. These guys are not slouches. It's the pro chess league, so they're going to bring the best lineups, or at least for that day. And again, it's about who is good right then today in this 10 minute two second time control that we have who's the best right now we got to see that well when it comes to fast chess who's the best it often is hikaru nakamura and well the uh, lineup for the gotham knights it's a powerful squad from top to bottom uh, their manager and uh, alex ostrovsky their captain gotham chess levy rosman and james hikaru he leads the way of course but look at how strong everyone on their team is. Bro, look at that. They got the other, uh, I mean, all the way down, of course, you got Ikaru, you got Liam Lay, absolute beast. Two 2700s on the same team? That's cheating. They cheating, bro. And you have Vladimir, you know, Fedese, that's big fish. He really is a big fish there. Uh, Vol uh, Volkidov, I've seen him online a lot, just rampaging through things. Alina's absolutely strong. You got the Bortnik brother. We got the other brother. So I understand they come in pairs. The Bortnik squad is just absolutely crazy. Andy Woodward who's a, a 12 years old international master. I don't even got to say nothing else, right? And then the rest of the squad is, is BP. Look at the ratings there. So this is a very, very strong team. That's why they already, you know, are winning when they won the first match already. Yeah, even with the car losing one. the first game. 
he was not smiling after that first game, uh, but then he won three in a row to lead the team to match victory. And well, for the California Unicorns, they also have an extremely strong team. Uh, they have Gukesh waiting in the wings. He may play a week when he's not in an over-the-board tournament. But Sam Shanklin, the former U.S. champion, and it's Ray Robson right after him. So, James, when you look at this lineup, I mean, this is super strong and well-balanced. No, you know what's funny? I actually thought, uh, you know, Gotham Knights was cheating. I'm like, oh, I got Hikaru. Like, how y'all do this, right? But then, no, they're cheating. California, that's a unicorn for real. Unicorn, you, it's not real, right? Unicorns aren't real. Well, this team isn't real, right? It's three 2700s on the same team. That's a very beefy lineup. They're trying to make statements in the PCL this year. Of course, Ilya's there, very strong, should be close to 20. I mean, I think he was 27 before. If not, he's very close, obviously. Darius Schwartz here, York Meyer, oh my goodness, right? Johan Sebastian Christensen, he would be with uh, with, with Magnus. He used to work with Magnus. Christopher, for you, the kids, Sabina Foyser, that's a women's champion there, and you got Zoe, Zoe Tang there, very strong as well. So, nice lineup here. I mean, it's, it's again, it's going to come down to who is good today and in good form. That's all it is. Yeah, Christopher Yu hiding in that roster. He's the third to last name there as the team is managed and captained by the Chess Dojo, led by David Pruis, Kosta Kavutsky, and Jesse Cry. Uh, but for today's matchup, you, you know, have to pick a roster somehow. Who do you pick when you have this stacked of a lineup? Well, we know with a 2550 average rating cap per team, these are their rosters. Uh, for Fedoseyev, Vokirov, and Nurmanova for the Knights. They're new to this week. Car played last. And for the Unicorns, Sam Shanklin stepping in. Ray Robson played last week. Christopher Yu being that tactical whiz kid. And Zoe Tang. It's a teenager on teenager board for battle between the Knights and the Unicorn. Yeah, it's just funny. It's actually like, you know, they, they brought out two 2700s today. You can do that every week. Imagine that. Every week, I'm just going to place two big 2700s on the team. And that's what California Unicorns is bringing today. They're like, yeah, we're going to bring out Sam 27, Ray 27, right? Chris Okay, he's trying to be 27, basically like, you know, strength 27, okay? No, the kid's really strong, obviously, but uh, then you have uh, the, the, the Gotham Knights here. Of course, Hikaru, the only difference you see here, too, is in the rating is like a few points, roughly like 20 points or so besides Hikaru and Shanklin there. So, you know, it really comes down again to, hey, who is, who is nice right now? Can I get some advantages out of the opening? It is, uh, it's, it's top heavy three GMs on three GMs here. Man, there's about to be a lot of chess here. I'm excited to see what happens because this is a fire lineup by both sides. Yeah, we're seeing some love for the Unicorns and for the Knights in the chat. Let us know who you're rooting for. That's Chess Weep saying, go Unicorns. Not sure why the Corns are capitalized. Maybe that's a Twitch reference. I don't understand. But here we see people <laughs> rooting for the Gotham Knights. But let's remind everybody of what's about to go down in this brawl between two of the best teams in the league. It is all play all. That means that the board for the teenage... They're, Teenagers for both sides, they will get to face off against Hikaru Nakamura and Sam Shanklin in this 10 minute plus two second increment rapid time control. Up to four rounds, we say it every time. Why up to four rounds? Some teams may go on a tear, get to eight and a half points after only three, in which case the match stops and a winner is proclaimed. So with tie breaks, if it's eight to eight, we will see a replay of round four. But that is for a later discussion because, James, we start with round one. And we see the most lopsided pairings. Hikaru Nakamura outrates Zoe Tang by nearly 600 B-Day classical points. And Sam Shanklin down there for the California Unicorns, he outrates his opponent by 550 points. So very lopsided matchups on the top boards. But those middle two, James, those are where the X-Factors will see what kind of form Christopher Yu, Vladimir Fedoseyev, Shamsidin Vohirov, and Ray Robson are in. Yeah, we just got it. It's all about that form, what you're in right now. Now, of course, even the lower boards there is, uh, you know, you can't put anything past anything. Like Hikaru lost that first one. Couldn't even believe it. I was like, what you mean he lost? How did he, what? He lost? Like how? Right? So if that, if that just happens, tends to happen, you know, again, somewhere they can, not, of course not, Hikaru losing, but obviously the lower board is just stepping up. And you see that in every match in PCL so far we've seen that the lower matches or even the lower boards can and are capable of stepping up against their uh, higher rated opposition. So we see a lot of that. This could definitely shake up things in today's match. Yeah, I just have so many questions for the chat, right? Will Hikaru be able to go 4-0 and this week? I think that's a question many of his fans uh, want him to answer. And then will 
the Knights or will the Unicorns win? That is a toss. I feel like this is a pretty uh, balanced roster for both sides. Hikaru Nakamura being the biggest name on either team. But Zoe Tang, she's a teenager playing for the Unicorns. Uh, she is nearly a 2200 feet a player. And hey, she starts with D4. So will she be afraid of Hikaru? She has nothing to lose, James. Of course, Hikaru is the favorite. But just play your best chess. Do not be scared. It's not, it don't be scared at all, especially, you know, he car would just be throwing stuff at you. And literally, that's what he just did now. D4, C5, and E5. Uh, this is a, uh, what's that stuff? Check Benoni type stuff. It's just like, it's just chess. This is what this is. Because, like, what do you even call this right now? G6, right? It's some type of Benoni ish uh, type position. But, you know, he's good with these flexibility uh, moderns against lower rated players. I remember he said on stream too, he was like, why do you play like the modern and stuff like that? And he was just saying that it, it's the imbalances. That it creates and like you have like there's there's going to be a decisive result most times is what he was saying so he goes for another one of these in the faster time controls here where it doesn't really call the setup yet it's making pawn moves a lot of pawn moves so far and we see Zoe recently won the Oregon State Championship. Thank you, Chess Latte, for that information. And Ooh. right now, Zoe's got to face a Bishop H6 maneuver by Hikaru. In the King's Indian, the Bishop on G7 often stares into its own pawn. So he wants Bishop H6 get these bishops off the board, and that frees up the remaining squares for the other black pieces. So uh, I think this is a perfectly reasonable start for Zoe. You can tell she's not familiar. That's what happens when you're a teenager. You play older <laughs> opponents, they're more experienced than you are. When you play a car with Nakamura, well, he's as experienced as it gets. So it's right. still completely normal for her. She should just develop. That way, when the bishop comes to h6, she could take it in one turn rather than first playing bishop e3 and then taking on h6. Just develop the other pieces. And I think that she has a nice looking position at the opening. Absolutely. Nice position here, of course. But it is, a, I think, a, the problem where it really is just being familiar and comfortable with the position that she's in. I was a fan of this. Oh, yeah, we on the same page, young lady. F4 was definitely a move. I was like, just go F4 and like, you know, F4 and try to open some lines up and maybe end up casting. But she definitely went for this. But it does weaken the dark squares drastically as he's trying to highlight Bishop H6, right? E5 now. And the D4 square could be weak too as well. But I mean, F4 did open the file for us. So if we can eventually give maybe Bishop D3, maybe a Knight to F4 or F3, we castle, put the Rook on the F file, actually casting Queenside, doubling on the F file. We have some really good chances actually um, with the F4 move. Yeah, showing no fear is Zoe Tang with uh, F4 move there. And well, we'll see what she plays next because she is spending some time. The other games are beginning. So let's zoom out for a moment. We, of course, will come back to this game, uh, but we do have uh, other games going on as she did swap bishops on H6 in the top left. In the top right, we're getting some kind of sharp Sicilian between Christopher Yu and Vladimir Fedoseev. And the bottom left, I already can feel James sleeping because we have a symmetrical structure between Vokidov and Ray Robson. Not, not an exciting game in the bottom left. So let's instead go to the top right because I feel like that one is just uh, really a fun one. I really like he playing. Is he playing on the iPad again? Yo, we need to get Chris some, some hey, you know what, just come. Send it. Yeah, we need, to, we, need to, we need to send some stuff over to Chris. I think he's playing on the iPad again. Really? He loves to do that. He does. He does. In fact, maybe it's just a fact of, maybe it's personal preference, right? Because I think he's playing on the pad again, which is... Uh, well, do you know why he does that, James? Quickly. No, I do not. You know, he does it because uh, it's smaller, so he can play more quickly. When you drag a mouse across a huge screen, when wow. you're playing bullet chess or in a time scramble, you're moving more slowly. But an iPad, you can make moves much more quickly the smaller the board is. This guy has figured it out. He almost figured out chess here, guys. You know, iPad for the win, you know. Wow, sitting there with the iPad like that. But the kid is very strong. And what is this position? How did we even get here? This was a Sicilian, you said? It uh, was a Sicilian. Let's go back in time. Let's bring up an analysis board to show everybody how we got this weird-looking position uh, because it was a Sicilian where uh, Knight of Six, mm -hmm. A6, I right love it. Okay. A3, though. You don't see that ah. every day. Right? Like, that's, that's one of those moves. You're like, what, what you doing over here? Magnus Carlsen does it. Does that mean that we yeah. should do it? I usually <laughs> say, uh, let Magnus be Magnus. But E5, playing in the center. The knight comes to F5. And there are tricks in this position. You may think, give me that pawn on E4, because I'll take your knight next. The knight says, whoop, knight takes G7. After bishop takes, then you take back on E4. And black's king will not find true shelter 
Yeah, Believe it or not, I had a game on TV. I won like this, and I was actually losing. It was like plus six, but I ended up winning because of tactics. His night orb was like that. But in this position, I played d5, and then but well, uh, if white goes bishop g5, which is what I did, f6, and I'm like, I'm winning a piece, but I'm not. Queen h5, queen h5, and then after king queen h5, king e7, and then bishop e3, my guy. Bishop oh. e3. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, some sick stuff. Very sick. So you keep, you need to be very careful. In fact, the line is, I think, what he went for here, which was d5 instead of knight takes e4. So knight takes e4 is what you is the trick. Yeah, d5 is the move you're supposed to play. That's nuts. And so we saw the d6 pawn go up to d4. And it's a very weird situation where white has moved backwards and black has just occupied the center. But if white can establish a light square blockade, we could see even the bishop or the knight coming into e4. Uh, that would be nice for white. Christopher Yu. Continues to play quickly, allowing a check on e4. And what in the world are we seeing here? You know what? The kid is a tactical wizard, so he definitely is seeing some tactics here. Check. Maybe you go king d1. He's just not worried about it, I guess. King d1, you put the knight on d2 and the rook. Wow. I don't know what. <laughs> this is some strange stuff. Oh, but he's getting tempo. I love it. The kid is saying, I want tempo. King d1, knight d2, and bishop c4 if you go back to d5. Right, so you have to go queen c6, but if you put the knight on c6, then you have to move to f4. Very strange, though. <laughs> this is definitely strange, but the bishop c4 idea, I think, is what he wants here. This is very strong. Yeah, this is some good prep from Christopher Yu, and that's how you have to play to take down someone like the big fish, Vladimir Fedoseev. This would be a huge win for the unicorns. I think the middle two boards are X factors uh, in these lineups because uh, Christopher Yu and Ray Robson, Vladimir Fedoseev, and Shamsid and Vokidov, it's like pretty evenly rated between those two squads. So whichever middle two can score more points because we do expect Sam Shanklin and Hikaru Nakamura to score on the top board. I feel like those middle two boards are going to be... What is D3? What is that? What is this <laughs> move? Whoa. What is what this? We... Man, I'm I guess taking it... that. He wants G2, but James, you've been sacking the G pawn all day. All day. I'm not even thinking twice about it, Robert. Bishop takes and then think next. Yeah, it's a rookie one. Try to get the knight out to C3. And you have a D5 and E4. Great squares for the white pieces. I mean, this is confusing. And by the way, Fedo is out here looking like a tennis player or something. He's got like that wristband on. Yeah, he's holding <laughs> his head here. He's looking ultra athletic. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I had to, you know, I got to play the kid today. So let me get out and make sure I uh, exercise, right? Getting the exercise in. Let's say uh, playing against Christopher Yu here. It's very strong here. But yeah, we got to take this ball on no Bishop D3. Come on. Yeah, I think we do. And well, what I know we have to do is bring in our special guest. We've got Gotham Chess himself, Levy Rosman. Levy, you know, we had you on last week. Your team ultimately found success despite Hikaru's uh, opening game. So tell us, man, how are you feeling about the early stages of week two? Well, we got to bring that up again, Robert. <laughs> I feel like a Knicks fan, you know? I feel like every season is a disappointment and I got to just go back to it. Uh, look, this week he started off with also an offbeat line. Like we see board one playing board four. There's sometimes uh, offbeat opening approaches, but it's looking like smooth sailing. He's got double the amount of time. He's got 700 more rating points. And this is kind of like the fun thing about the Pro Chess League. When you stack the three boards, uh, board four becomes this kind of funny lopsided matchup. Uh, well, he's taking care of business, but listen, this California team is, they're looking quite solid. They are probably solid. What's up, Levy? Levy and a Chevy, baby. We got Levy here. That guy, <laughs> Mr. Levy Raz. What's up, baby? You all right, man? What's up? What's up? Hey, uh, by the way, uh, I was yeah. inspired by the Canty COE calculation over everything merch line. So we actually dropped Gotham Knights merch this morning. So GothamMerch.com, we got the Gotham Knights black and pink fire, a uh, little hoodie. Ooh, so once you're done getting your COE merch, you can get the uh, you can get the Gotham the Knights Gotham merch Knights. too. I didn't oh, just yeah, come on here it. to uh, promote stuff. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk. Uh, you know, well, chess but no, but but Levy, how come you're not doing like James? You gotta be dripped out in your own merch, right? You gotta have a chain. So, you gotta have the cat. So, Where's all that? So I have the samples coming, but there's a snowstorm uh, in the state that the warehouse is in. So mm. rather than sacrifice human lives to get my merch, I think I'll get it, you know, at the same time as the people. I'm one with the people. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. I would love to, you know, have a chain and a notebook and all sorts of other <laughs> stuff, you know, laptop stickers. <laughs> that's next. Yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. It's, a lot, it's a lot of stuff back there for you. They treat us well over there, Levy. So good, glad to have you on board. <laughs> well, while we are, you know, 
chit chatting here and bishop takes d3 finally played we will see fedor say take on g2 uh why don't we zoom out for a second before we dive into specifics on any one board uh levy as you look across the four boards here uh, what's your initial take you know early on for your gotham knights yeah well just in case people are not aware we did something really interesting uh as a team we won last week and then we proceeded to remove three players from our team like not permanently but for this week's matchup we have hikaru but we don't have liam we replaced him with fedasev board three was replaced with shamsidin and board four was replaced by alua and i think we just want to throw out different looks and sort of see like do we go with the big stack you know the big three and the strong board four uh or do we go with the balanced approach like 24 25 both on, on board three and four we saw uh we've seen shanghai do that shanghai's team is terrifying i thought the blitz looked really good too but shanghai just uh, just, you know, just crush them. So um, I'm really interested to see how our board four does today. And particularly this, you know, her current matchup, she seems to be close on time, uh, Alua. And uh, I mean, just visually, her position looks quite okay. Listen, I take a 2280 drawing a, a 2700 in the first round, no problem. I don't know if we can yeah. pop over to that game, but I'm really curious to see what happens there. Wow. Okay. So first of all, tell us, how did you and Alex Ostrowski, the team manager, get Alua for your squad? Because, uh, you know, she's a teenager, an up and coming player. And oh, with the white pieces, Levy, I'm liking her position extremely solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, games against 2700s are never over. Uh, when they're equal, sure. when you're better, when they're better, like you have to beat them five times in the same game. Um, so while Sam is the favorite, and just like Hikaru is the favorite against Zoe, uh, it's still curious to see, like, these players might not get this kind of experience to play 2700s ever. Pro Chess League is a very unique kind of thing. Um, we found Alua, and Alex really found Alua, just by scouting, like, which young players were fitting our average in November of 2022, because that's what the Pro Chess League is based on. And a lot of them actually have gained rating. Like, our board three was 40 points lower rated in November, so he's constantly improving too. And the crazy story about Alua is... I recognized her name because in 2019, I was in Weifang, China for the World Cadet, and I was coaching Ru Yang Yan from the US, and Alua got a medal in the girls under 12. And I recognized her name. I was like, wait, I re and actually, my student beat her, but my student lost in the last round, and, uh, and Alua got, I think, silver medal. So, yeah, I mean, she's just been making improvements in her chess, and here she is, you know, Gotham Knights board four, playing Sam Shanklin. Swinging too, e5. She's act, she's she's trying to take it to him here. F5 open up, you know, like I can smell some tactics here, right? You know, there's definitely some yeah, stuff she's, coming. 94 rook f1, right? She's a really aggressive player, and one of the major criteria to get a player on our team was scanning if they've played myself or if they've played uh Alex, <laughs> our manager. And she actually beat our manager in title Tuesday, so we were like, Oh, oh we gotta did. put her on the team. Yeah, right. yeah. Now that logic does not apply to me because I beat Hikaru once in my life and I beat Liam once in my life, but we still got them on the team. It was a fluke, but I've never beaten for the save. <laughs> so, um, but well, yeah, that was I mean, actually this is a, a funny criteria. And this is impressive by her. Like she is position. not afraid in the slightest. She's yeah. just going for Sam's king. Like I mean. Right. You, you know, you and Alex have spoken to her. Of course, you said you prepared against her in the past. Like, I mean, what kind of like? chess personality is she because it seems what, from what we're seeing here it doesn't matter what her opponent's rating is she's just going to be playing that forward aggressive chess yeah that's exactly right and i think i think it's weird for 2700s to play 500 points down especially when they're getting attacked like you'll notice hikaru's game we, we don't have to pull it up but his game was kind of like just a positional grind and an offbeat opening and his opponent didn't really capitalize so he's just kind of smooth sailing but this is very different. Like she's just going to take Sam's head off. And if she doesn't make a tactical blunder, worse comes to worse. Like these Sicilians are, I, I think this was a, you know, uh, maybe it wasn't, but like these positions just sort of fizzle out and, you know, maybe she'll hold the draw, but right. we'll see. It's looking like, that's what it's definitely looking like. Yeah, Cause if the attack doesn't work here, this could just be okay. Draw. Right. Cause that'd be yeah. bad. She play, I think she played for two results actually, to be honest here. This is like, you, you can't really, it's hard to lose this, right? You know, but it is still pieces on the board here, but you can lose it, obviously. But she definitely has a very good position, and, I, and it's very impressive to see from, from a Louis here. Yeah, yeah now we'll check her nervous system. <laughs> now we'll see how her yeah. nervous system is. Right. <laughs> 
Well, I, I guess actually, I mean, part of being a team manager and a captain is like, you don't just focus on the results. You see what's happening in the game. So, uh, you know, have you noticed that kind of resolve in any player? Okay, Hikaru, we all know about, but any of your other players, like you think sometimes their rating or their result is misleading and you actually feel like they're undervalued by the rest of the chess community. Yeah, for sure. Like Liam is really excellent again. Like you pair Liam against anybody 2,700 and below, like he's, he's going to be the favorite, which is not something you can always say. Some people have up and down playing styles. He's sort of very reliable. Uh, you have, um, I think Hikaru officially won his game, by the way. You also have like Fedoseev, who is up and down in terms of his rating, but I think uh, rapid over the board, he's like 2,750, right? Mm. These guys are just super good in this short format. And um, it's a huge asset. I mean, this entire league is based on rapid chess and, of course, Blitz, too, if you've got to go to the tie break. But um, for sure. But that's why we watch, because uh, I think 2,700 and 2,500 is a lot closer than we think in this league, and we've seen that right. over and over. Yeah, you say that, and I agree with you, but I'm going to have a zoom out for a second because as we look at our four-board scene, for, you say 2,700, 2,500, it's true, they're closer, but Fedoseev in the top right, that's good for your Gotham Knights. Now, he has the upper hand, he being the 2,700 player to Christopher Hughes, nearly 2,600. And the bottom left, Ray Robson, the 2,700 player for the Unicorns, taking on your 2,600 player, it seems advantage 2,700s. Yeah, uh, Fedoseev is looking looking nice. It's a very complex position. I I pulled up. Um, I, I, yeah, I forgot. I'm I'm a little bit behind you guys. Uh, yeah, Shamsidin. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, I was a little bit behind. He ended up taking on C8. He had a moment there. He could have sacrificed his knight on G6. So you're right. The newly minted Super GM 2700. Get you know putting in the work. I said before the match. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, worried about uh, anybody more than I am worried about Ray Robson. Like seeing Ray Robson in a lineup, that guy is like a no lose machine. I mean, he will it go two wins, two it draws. Yeah, he's right. he's. I don't like seeing him in the lineup. So yeah, yeah. Um, someone's gonna have to stop him. By the way, I think Alua did just blunder in her game. Oh. So uh, yeah, the twenty seven hundreds uh, will oh, will, will be it. shining. I Dang, think. Rook C three. Yeah, Jesus. I'm pulling up the Ooh. the Robson yeah. game uh, against. Well, we have Fedor say on camera, but it's against Volkid off oh, there. Uh, but that knight takes g6 check possibility, he overlooked it or just didn't feel comfortable doing it. So that was a missed shot for him. But it uh, looks like Sam Shanklin, let's go actually to that game uh, because Shanklin now against Lua, she kind of missed a one move tactic. And it happens when you feel like you're under pressure. And her position, it did start to feel like Shanklin was the one dictating the action. Um, and sadly for the Gotham Knights, she went rook a4. And there's a queen in line oh, with the rook. Oh, After rook takes c3, oh. the rook fell after. A one move blunder. Yeah, and that's uncharacteristic from her, but it's time. Time definitely got on her. And pressure. You're playing a 2700, and like, you know, you're feeling like, I'm doing well. I didn't lose yet. And then you get in time trouble within a simple way. She was doing well, bro. A, she yep. was doing very good. That's, uh, that's exactly right. And uh, yeah, I mentioned, like, you can play 28 good moves, and then you lose the game on the 29th <laughs> move. You know, it happens. Right, right. Um, on the 29th, yeah. Uh, that's like so I guess almost that exactly leads, uh, what happened in this one. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm looking here, Shamsidin. Yeah, I mean, listen, boards one and two for each team might might hold it down. The Fedoseev game is is the one that's, I think, uh, the most up in the air. But he does have a nice position, but it's still very complicated and two minutes on the clock. Yeah, Christopher, you, we, we were talking about this, uh, James and I. Uh, he is just such a beast in tactical positions. Uh, the problem for Christopher in the top right is he's down one pawn and his king is in the middle of the bull. Uh, Fedoseev, he doesn't mis make mistakes in positions like this very often. Not that I want to commentators curse him here real quick, but there's a king on e2 and black's king is tucked away. I feel like he it's crazy that black is only up a pawn. Feels right, like doesn't it feel like more? Pawns. <laughs> I was feeling the same way. I was like, Does, did you say one pawn? <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, you're right. You no, I mean, pawn. Listen, I, I am more than capable of losing this position with black. Uh, you can, like, uh, tunnel vision on, you know, D3, and you don't ever win right. it, and white promotes the H pawn. But, I, I mean, yeah, E1 looks, how do you even, like, queen A1, queen E1? I mean, it just looks horrible. Yeah, or queen B4, yeah. Yeesh. It's actually a critical point, because the last move played by Fedoseev is actually super slick. He went bishop A5, allowing this move knight C5, 
This forks the king and the rook. And if white goes ahead and grabs it, this queen e1 check will be of all importance. In fact, he just saw this all the way through to the finish line, it would feel like, because that's a sick variation. That's disgusting. That's some 27. That's, man, get, check this, man, bro. That's 2,700 for real. Like, I, bro, I, I'm what? still looking at it, and I, I, I don't fully understand what the point is. King f3, what, queen d1, rook e2, queen f Let's analyze. Oh, there's like yeah. bishop b6. No, there is no. <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm so confused, man. Look at that line, bro. Right, the king has to go to f3, queen check. e1, check. Rook comes to yeah. e2. This take. You know, this, like, I guess it's queen f1, and the king is uh, somehow queen f4, in trouble. Queen f4. How is queen this? F4, queen f4. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, queen f4. Wait. What's wait. happening? Like, white's up a rook. <laughs> 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 oh my god bro, this is nonsense uh, oh man I, I don't know. if i'm christopher you i'm just doing it like i, I might lose the game right? yeah, but i'm just going said, for it he said no, i'm right. telling you guys like like you you can very easily lose this game you hang mate on b7 you hang knight d7 it, it's uh i don't want to jinx it can i can i let you guys analyze so i could i go back and uh <laughs> and talk with my co-host back on my channel i'm yeah. terrified please yeah <laughs> we, we we can I'm let so you do scared. that levy <laughs> All right, man. We'll let you do it. We don't want to curse it, so we'll let you go, Levy. We'll have you back later, and it's good to see your knights back at everyone. Loves the knights; they're a fan favorite. So we'll see you soon, Levy. Thanks for joining us, buddy. See you later, bro. Cool guys. Take care. And that is their captain of the Gotham Knights. He doesn't want any part of this stream, uh, James. He's like, uh oh. Uh, Christopher Yu is coming for Fedor saves king. The B seven pawn. The D seven square. It's messy. I agree. Christopher, you is coming for you. Okay, he's definitely coming, guys. All right, so be very, very careful because yeah, this is some tactics here. Like, there's some stuff brewing up. You also obviously have to watch out for B7 every time, like you said before. But to say I'm getting very close to under a minute here, but also Christopher, you already under a minute and 30 second territory, two second increment. This is a wild game, guys. Rook to D8. Yeah. And the thing about this from White's perspective, this knight on c5 actually protects this d3 pawn. That can be really important. So um, queen e1 check, king e f3. There's not rook takes pawn because the knight covers. So I feel like for Christopher, he just needs to somehow make distracting moves, tactical opportunities. Uh, there aren't too many of them, but maybe move like h4, some kind of random move. Oh. Yeah, on oh, 97, he wanted to go for some. Whoa, and we have a trade, a check. And here we go. And here we go. Wait, oh, oh, look at that. I'm, I'm out, boy. I'm out. Oy. If you take oh. with the pawn, you lose your queen. If you take with the king, you lose your rook. You that can't take with the rook because it's pin. He doing tactics. Oh, that was doing sick. Tactics every day. Oh, my oh, man. gosh. I want now you got to play. Puzzle rest right now. Everybody Give me that. Puzzle puzzle rest now. Oh, it's man. free rook. That was sick. Dude, that was nasty. Let's just show that again. I mean, we we love the instant replay. Oh my gosh, he gives up his rook for the knight. The queen takes. He gives this check. Now the rook has to go to e2 because of a double uh, attack here. And then e4. You Ooh. can take it with the pawn, but you lose your queen. Right? Bam. Give me your queen. You can take it with your king, but you lose your rook with check. And you wow. can't take it with the rook because that's against the rules of chess. Your king is enough to. That was sick. And then with this check, d4 doesn't help because queen d3 uh, would pick up everything, including the d4 pawn and then some. So what a finish to this game for Vladimir Fedoseyev. Uh, we still do have one game in progress as the Gotham Knights take a 2-1 lead. It will be down to Ray Robson in the bottom left. Uh, there was a tactical opportunity early on in this game that was overlooked by Shamsidin Vokidov, or just not chosen. But right down to 10 seconds, James, we know he's a glutton for time travel, but this is serious time travel. Whoa. Oh, yeah, this is serious here. Bishop F1 here, okay. Black completely winning here. Yeah, he's definitely just winning. But, I mean, you got to watch out for the king. Yeah, A5 was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, that's nice. That's like, go take this pawn over here. There'll be queen E3 and knight E4. We'll see a smother checkmate. Very likely against <laughs> this king. That's so, a nice little okay. smother and, there. You know, Ray, he lost a game last week. I believe it was against Bardia Dineshvar. And now in this week, he wants to get off on the right foot. And he's two seconds. Man, you got to move. Wow. Oh, he, he made that one second on the clock. 1.9. He's, he's scaring me. Yeah, yeah. He lives around this time trouble here. Now he sees some tactics. Knight H2 is in the air. I mean, Knight H2 is going to be a queen in game, which that could be difficult here. 
King has not made it. Okay. Knight h2 is not playable anymore. Knight e3. Got to make a move. Yeah, now he wins. Queen f1 is pre movable, and that's why resignation happens, just to show you that if you bring the queen somewhere to defend the bishop, there are actually no good squares, but I just swap everything off. And when this happens, black is up two pawns and easily winning. You can't actually stop this from becoming a queen. So good win for Ray Robson. He evens up the match score. And as Levy was telling us, James, it's wins on the top two boards for both sides. Oh, yes. It's top two, two boards there. I mean, two and two. Look at that. Wow. It's really about those other boards there to see what we can have. But, uh, man, two and two, even so far. This is what we kind of expected, though. You can see it's kind of even match up 27. It's three twenty seven hundreds on one team, and it's two twenty seven hundreds on the other team. It was in, like, the lineups. Um, so, I mean, we expected this, but lots of fun, lots of tactics, and it's still more chess left. I don't have a favorite. I don't know who's going to win. But, of course, we got to, uh, you know, watch more to see what's going to happen. So, excited for it. Well, these two teams are fan favorites. We know that Gotham Chess, Levy Rosen, leads the Gotham Knights, and the Chess Dojo leads the California Unicorns. But there is no lead right now. It is 2-2. Two to two. So, when we come back from this break, we'll see if either side can break away from the other. This is the Pro Chess League. This is the Gotham Knights and the California Unicorns. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Just played an exciting game and want to see if you've got a brilliancy? Or maybe where you could have improved? Chess.com's Game Review is just a click away. Game Review is a fast, fun, and instructive guided review of your games. See your accuracy and your opponent's accuracy. Check out the eval graph for an instant overview and scroll down to see how many great moves, best moves, blunders, and yes, brilliancies you have played. Learn from Chess.com's coach who gives move explanations, opening statistics, and shows you the best lines of play. With retry mistakes, you can get another shot at finding missed opportunities. Try Game Review today on web, iOS, or Android.
man you see leaving your screen is <laughs> Sam Shanklin, the former U.S. champion. And, well, maybe he'll just play his games from the other room. I hope he has a wireless mouse because Sam was on camera, but then he decided to pop off screen. Yeah, of course, Mr. Shankland himself. Uh, yeah, as you see his chair there, probably just as strong as he is to hold up all that 2700 on him. And uh, as you see this roster here, it's even stronger. Gukas up there looking like an absolute boss with a big rating. Of course, India, whatever's in the water over there, we need some of that because, you know, India is going crazy. Right, so 2700 up there. Uh, squad is crazy. You just saw ropes in too, as well. Ilya, Darius, um, Jorg Meyer, and everybody else. I mean, so a nasty team. You see Christopher, you playing today, too, as well, Robert. What is what a team name that uh, unicorns are, right? Yeah, the unicorns are fantastic, and they're currently tied two to two with one of the favorites in the entire league because the Gotham Knights they're led at the top by. Haru Nakamura, and the big fish, Vladimir Fedosev. I think both those two are happy that they don't have to face off against each other, but they will have to face very strong opponents in the next round because uh, now that board four board, versus board one is out of the way, we see Hikaru get the white piece against Christopher Yu. Christopher Yu beat Wesley So at the last U.S. Championship. He's proven that he could take down the top dogs. So, uh, James, as you look, board one and board two gets white for both sides. Is it advantage Nakamura and Fedoseyev? Is it advantage Shanklin Robson? Who do you like in this round? That's a good question. This one, honestly, mm, that's tough. That's tough. Ray, it looks like Ray's going to have some problems there. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to say Ray's a favorite there for sure. Sam's a favorite against him and Fedoseyev. I don't know, man. That's tough. I think it's whoever wins faster. Like, that's what it's about <laughs> here. Because, like, the top two boards, it, I mean, this might be another 2-2. Two -two. Four, four. Like, this could go all the way to the wire right now. I mean, this might be. I can't give an advantage to either one. To answer the question, I can't. I don't know. It's just about who's going to win faster. Yeah, I didn't mean to give you a trick question. I do think that these matches are that even. Uh, the lineups, they are quite similar in terms of Hikaru Nakamura leading the way for the Gotham Knights and Sam Shanklin, Ray Robson, Nakamura, and Fedoseyev. That's a toss-up. The bottom two boards also pretty evenly matched. So Hikaru he gets the white pieces now against Christopher Yu. And Christopher, he may have lost game one with white against Vladimir Fedoseyev, but he's a tough customer, James. We know yeah. he's capable of taking down Hikaru if Hikaru plays some of these offbeat lines. Oh, yeah. In fact, Hikaru about to play something that he always plays. He's going to be knight of 3 b 3 or it's going to be some easy Queen's Gambit. You know, like, hey, Christopher Yu, definitely huge respect. Okay, maybe E4, right? Something, something for real. Something you said real here. huge respect, and Hikar is showing that respect by playing E4, but then <laughs> he goes back to B3 with Bishop B2. Oh, my goodness. Somebody stop this man. <laughs> oh, he couldn't help himself, bro. He couldn't help himself. I mean, we like E4, yes. Hikaru, respect. Uh, yeah, he's going to play something and then B3 right after. Like, that was, I was not expecting that one. I mean, B3 usually goes with Knight F3 is what he usually does. So, it's kind of funny to see that, though. And Christopher's thinking here because the knight trade is offered. It, it may seem to hurt White's pawn structure, but it opens up this bishop and this queen back here. So I feel like taking on c3 is not really what Christopher wants to do. He could play e6 to try to reinforce the knight, but that gets you into some trouble with your own double pawns. So he doesn't mm -hmm. know what to do. James, I don't know what to do either. I've never yeah, seen this line. off the head. And you know, Hikaru is very good at that. He likes just playing chess. He going I want a position. And, tra and challenge you when they take you out you what take you out of what you're used to and et cetera here and this is a great example of that i mean it also still is some type of knight of three b3 that he is very very good at 60 percent win rate you know um with this system um of the knight of three e3 b3 stuff that he likes to play nimzo larson or whatever so he plays very good with this and this is some type of it it's just he played the e4 pawn now so i think he can make moves quickly here you can also see this type of uh i think even levy recommends this in his um in his in his first e4 course um for about the gotham stuff or e4 new york style for all the you know levy fans out there that actually have his stuff of course shout out to big levy so right um i think it, a lot of this looks like that french has that too as well he has a french e4 e6 b3 e4 like you just play this b3 system and you actually play queen e2 and castle queen side it's a very aggressive thing i don't know what i'm looking at because black <laughs> has now you know was able to capture the pawn d6 um i feel like White's pieces are weirdly placed. The knight on e4, you like to centralize your pieces, but it's easy to kick this knight back with the move d5 next. Maybe d4 to shut down this bishop on b2. And 
Oh, I think that white, uh, excuse me, black has these healthy knights on C7 yeah, and C6. Nights. And yeah, I'm not uh, the biggest fan of the opening, but I think we said that so many times where what is Hikar playing? What is this opening? And then he just makes it look easy. So yeah. Uh, what do you think, James? Are you believing in Hikaru's opening? Are you believing in Christopher Yu? He doesn't seem to be phased at all. I'm actually a fan of uh, of what White's doing here. I have myself. I actually have a, I had a crushing win in like 18 moves against the 2400 uh, recently, actually, with Knight of 3, B3. So having these type of positions is very, very strong. And it's, it's like flexibility. I'm a big fan of options and flexibility and, and taking you out of you know what you're used to. That's exactly what we have here. I mean, I can go mini routes. I can still go C4, D4. I can still go queen e2, council queen side. I can go g3, bishop g2. You know, it depends on what I want based off of what you play. And I, I mean, I, I really like this for white. Of course, engine likes black here, but that comes with, you know, obviously precision. Uh, every move has to be super precise to, to take advantage of whatever black the engine is saying here. But practical chances, I definitely do like uh, the bishop on b2. It's just a preference of mine. I like to do this. I like this a lot. But, you know, what do you think, Robert? Um, That's a great question. I feel like... Uh... I like Black's position. I just think that the pawn pushes in the center are easy here for Black. So, uh, you know, Hikaru, he has the white pieces. His knight hops around to G3. I feel like he's just moving the same piece one, two, three <laughs> times. And I know Black's knight. I mean, right, these knights. Oh, that knight went from F6 to D5 to C7. So Black's doing some of the same. But the bishop on B2, the pride and joy of your position, not looking the happiest. Yeah, not looking at happiest now, of course. Uh, it, it, you can see a lot of this from the ready too as well, where the bishop gets closed off. So you have to play a3, b4 in those positions, but that's not allowed here. So this is like a very symbiotic, you know, game of like four different openings that is kind of blended here into one, but the ideas are still, you know, the same. You have to develop your pieces. We need to figure out plans. Where do I put my king? Where's black putting his? I did like bishop d3 here. Was annoyed by knight before slightly, but we'll see what happens. Okay, we will indeed see what happens here. It's just one of four games that are underway. Uh, every single game matters in this team format. So Hikaru, uh, you see the eval bar against him in the top left, but early on in the battle, well, it's going back towards the center. So um, yeah, of course, plenty, Practical. yeah, plenty of action left in this. And look at the bottom left, by the way, uh, Sam Shanklin with the white pieces. It appears the engine. Not approving of his position, but I trust Sam Shanklin over any engine any day because That's he is true. one of the best prepared players on the planet. And the bottom right, that position looks closed in the King's Indian. The top right, that looks like a Sicilian. So let's just uh, dive in to Sam Shanklin against Shamsidin Vokidov because um, do I believe Sam? Uh, you, you know, trust Sam I am, but the engine, at least at first glance, seems to be liking Black's position by a little bit. Yeah, this is probably, this looks like a Vienna or something. Some type of Vienna, maybe a Grunfeld, but, uh, yeah, maybe Grunfeld, oh, sorry, not Grunfeld, uh, Catalan. Yeah, some type of Bishop G2 Catalan where he took on C4 and and, and held the pawn, right? Which which makes sense here. I think I have all of Sam's courses that went through, like, basically just skimming through to see what he, what he recommends. And he's actually playing stuff straight out of his, he just dropped a Neo-Catalan course. So he's actually playing stuff right from it right now. So 97 was not that good, apparently. So I wonder why. What's wrong with 97? Oh, but look at this. The you know the engine as it gains its depth here. Uh, Stockfish trying to figure out what's going on. Nobody knows. Uh, the only person yeah. who knows seems to be Sam Shanklin. I mean, he's moving quickly. <laughs> but this decision caused him to think. So either it was a move that's down the line, we'll find out it's bad, or Sam's preparation has ended. And I actually can completely get behind this move. This 95 has been annoying. But I also think that white can try to push this pawn to f5. We bring up an analysis board and just to quickly show that f5, you can't just go ahead and take this knight on e5. I know you want to do that, but after knight takes, pawn takes, your queen is under attack back on d8. And wherever you move your queen, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to push this pawn to f6 and just go after your king. It's just going to be a quick check play. Yeah, that's made in 11. It's made in 11. Easy. And then 11 because you got to throw the engine moves in there. <laughs> yeah, sacrifice all your pieces sacrifice just to delay. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I'm guessing the best move is like G6. You know, like give up this bishop <laughs> on the square. So uh, not going to get the job done. And that's why uh, Sam can push forward with F5. Black may just take it, though. That's the downside of F5. Ah, is Black has yeah, less space. You want to trade some pieces. Yeah, I didn't consider that. I was like, just F5. But 
they could just take it <laughs> and then you'd be like oh wait why did you take it because you put it there right so f5 so maybe we go d5 hmm. <sighs> Yeah, that's another interesting choice because knight takes pawn takes. Maybe we'll get d6 in there. Uh, this pawn on d4 may lead the charge and go to d6. So, uh, James, this is a complicated battle between Sam Shanklin and Shamsidin and Vokidov. And Vokidov is from Uzbekistan. Uh, that country, you know, if you don't know about it, you should because they are yeah. the Olympiad gold medalist. Their team mm -hmm. took gold, led by Nodirbek Abdusatarov. He is at the upper echelons of chess these days. But Vokidov, you see his rating at 2568. That was back in November. Now he's 2600 plus. So Levy was highlighting him as one of the players in the world that you look at and you're like, okay, he's an up-and-comer. Be very careful. Very strong player. Very, very strong. Wow, they hated that move. What is the move for this? Dang, I don't know. It makes sense, right? I don't know. What is it? <laughs> <Like the move laughs> You know, James, while we are trying to figure this out, we can bring somebody in to help us because we do have David Pruis, the captain of the Unicorns, joining us. David, always great to see you, buddy. Welcome from the Chess Dojo. And how are you feeling about the Pro Chess League and in particular this week against the Knights? Yeah, likewise, Robert. It's always great to uh, to see you and, and hear you. Um, I think that uh, this matchup this week is going to be extremely close. Um, a toss-up um a match that's going to give me a few heart attacks most likely towards the end <laughs> uh in round five or maybe even in round in round four or maybe even in round five so that that's my general uh, take when you say round fives is that is that me hearing you predicting an eight eight match tie breaks i uh, i think it's possible right i'm not i i wouldn't yeah. predict it like it's not more likely than all other results but it's very possible yeah, I believe the same, dear David. How you feeling today, David? Good to have you today. Yeah, uh, last week I was I was offline, so I only caught a few snatches of my match. It was much better for my health um, <laughs> to to miss a couple rounds <laughs> right, right. of the match. Um, you know, but that match could have finished eight eight. I don't know if you guys saw it, but we we won nine seven. But there was one game where a twenty seven hundred could queen a pawn, and instead. Mm -hmm he recaptured a piece and it was like he'd played a deflection sack i don't know if anyone has heard or understood why that happened i wasn't watching it live but it makes no sense he could have queened and the match would have been eight eight and wow. yeah. high breaks right i was on the call for that david and we were just in disbelief um but i mean i'm also trying to figure out this position it's a catalan but it's also a very david pruis like position a couple pawns have been sacrificed by sam shanklin and now a piece has been sacrificed by Vokidov here, but you'll have three pawns for it. So what do you make of this, David? Nice. Uh, for Vokidov, unfortunately. <laughs> but I'm still, you know, <laughs> happily impressed when he plays some good moves. Um, my first allegiance is to chess, even over my team, you know. So when I see somebody playing well, you know, I, I got to be happy for them. Um, I think Sam's knight g4 move, which I saw your, your engine bar didn't like, I think his intention was to push f5 himself next um but vokitov probably very clever response to play f5 himself and ensure that he had space to defend his uh his king side activate the bishop on b7 and you don't want white to have d4 e4 f4 like all flexible denying your pieces any squares not only on the fifth rank but basically anywhere you go on the sixth rank white can always push and kick you out so he tries to get some purchase in the center there create some squares and it looks like he quickly got the upper hand that way. Yeah. And we, as we return to the live position, Queen C2 was Sam's last move. And unfortunately for him, the Eva bar continues to sink and I mean, this pawn yeah. can go to D4 and why not? Mm -hmm. This knight on B3 may be the unsung hero of this game. It just, yeah, that there. boy is just stuck there. I mean, right. This was not the Catalan or Neo Catalan. He just dropped a course on the Neo Catalan Sam. That is, this is not the position we were looking for out of here. Of course, we were able to consolidate the pawn. We sacked the piece. We're getting it back now. I mean, maybe, maybe not. We, we do have to move our queen still, but it is, uh, you can also, I mean, there's queen sacrifices actually even available taking off C3 and B2 in some cases. So this is really nice for black, but I mean, it is possible. Yeah, I mean, still there, like queen F5 maybe. 
the the knight on b3 white ideally wants to just play on the king side and play around the knight and leave it behind right and now with vokadov sacking a piece getting this deep on so strong sam can't play around that knight and uh so it, it does become a hero but but vokadov had to set that up yeah he did well i mean this is looking tough for sam shanklin but i want to give you some better news david so we're going to go to our a bird's eye view because some of the games are looking quite promising for your California unicorns. <laughs> I see in the uh, bottom right, Ray Robson against Alua Nermanova. He has an advantage, but I think maybe more importantly in the top left, Christopher Yu, his position seems to be advantageous against Hikaru Nakamura. So uh, with all respect to the other players, I think we should go back to our uh, board one for the Knights against board three for the unicorns. And David, first of all, you know, you've, been a mainstay of the U.S. Chess League, the Pro Chess League seasons past. It's very important to you, I know, to have a team from California. So what does it mean to you yeah. to see Christopher Yu, who grew up through the ranks playing in California, and now he's a chance to maybe take down Hikaru? Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really important to me. I, I don't know how everyone... I think every manager in every organization sees its role differently, but I see the role of the Unicorns as not just being like an assortment of players trying to win a competition. It's also the goal is to, you know, showcase California and West Coast talents and to promote and give them opportunities, right? Um, so Chris Yu, I mean, he's somebody who we had on the team when he was younger, right? When he wasn't as good and when it wasn't necessarily the best not necessarily the best strategy for the team to win to to put him in now he's so good it's just he's an asset to the team it's just great that we get to play a player under 2600 with his skills right so he's just like a fantastic asset for us now but it is important for us to to invest in in uh players from around here and give them opportunities so that they can get better and better and for that you can generally turn to our fourth board um and, and you'll see what we're what we're trying to do with giving people opportunities if chris you know knocks off either one of their top dogs here nakamura or fedoseev today it'll be fantastic but it won't even be a shock to me um you know i don't know how other people would take it but you know it's not that i predict he would win against their top two boards but i think it's totally plausible at this point yeah, he did beat Wesley So in the U.S. Championship. His rating is near yeah. 2,600. So, of course, he has a chance no matter who he's playing, including Hikaru and Magnus. But, David, if we talk specifics about this game, Christopher Yu, yeah. uh, he's down under two minutes. Hikaru has that four-and-a-half-minute mark approximately, and it's a messy position. So uh, and what are your thoughts about the dynamic we're seeing on the board? Yeah, I think um, I think the position on the board is super complicated. You would rather have spent two minutes and have eight minutes left at this point in the game. So I think one of the worst things about this position is just Chris Yu's clock. I think it's it's too early in the game to be down under two minutes. Um, you know, to me, it looks like there's still everything to play for. Pawn on H4 hanging um, at the moment. I don't know if Hikaru intends to take back with the pawn in order to have time to save his pawn, but it seems like that's the outpost for his knight, so he gives the pawn. Yeah, he just give it up. He just gave that boy up. Yeah. So follow up? Queen H5 or what? Like he just I I'm sure a computer pawn. wants to take the pawn. As as a human, there's all kinds of things to be afraid of with knight f5 and knight c5. Well he, he took away trained. that knight c5 jump and I mean, there's a 9 of 5 that looks great, but can't this bishop just yeah. slide back here and defend everything? Mm. I feel like Christopher Yu just has yeah, I think, like a clean extra pawn. You're right. Yeah, I think Chris feels really actually solid here with this bishop trade on e4, simplifying the situation, giving up the bishop pair, but it just becomes so clear that he can solidly defend the d4 pawn. If that d4 pawn stays well defended, then white's position is pretty, pretty bad. Whoa, what a move. G6. G6 so. I understand. I think after bishop f6, it might have been f4. And then g6, knight h6, e5. And, I mean, there's complications. It's like strange things here, obviously. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I understand. He just wants to, like, kick some stuff. But f4, yeah, he wants that knight. That makes sense. That makes wow. a lot of sense. That was strong. That was strong, bro. Wow. That was really strong because f4, e5 was coming. But he just stopped that whole idea. But yeah, knight d4, I mean, knight d4, queen d4... Pawn on e4 can't be taken at the end because of back rank mate. So it just seems to, simp to sort of peter out. 
Yeah. Although maybe he'll go for tech. He's like queen b6 because the f2 pawn is hanging behind that knight. I'm getting confused looking at this board. And I saw it before Hikar was looking mm -hmm. off to the side, uh, trying to figure out what to do. You know, he's thinking and calculating, but I don't know what to make of it. Yeah. Is he talking too? Is he streaming? I hope he's streaming. Yeah, he's streaming. Because yeah. <laughs> right. ah. otherwise, he's just talking to himself. Yeah, I believe he is streaming. And by the way, uh, Vladimir well, not because of that, but because I think it's a distraction. So, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Actually, I mean, he himself has said that. Like, you know, you play worse when you're streaming just because you're talking and not fully focused. But all right, we see Bishop F6 played instead of any Queen B6 stuff. And Chris, we're down under a minute, and I was wait. Oh no, there's 97. Oh, and look at him laughing. Oh man. Oh, come on. Brutal. Man. Yeah. Oh. David, sorry to, you know, ha have to watch that, but it seems he just overlooked 97 right. check and then in a clean yeah. extra exchange for white. Yep. That's going to be probably the round for New York, which which can happen. <laughs> Um, definitely happen. He played so well this game, bro. He really did. I don't even do about that. Yeah, no, yeah. I just feel like this turned uh, into a something sad because Sam Shanklin also just lost his game against Shemseed and Vokidov. So, uh, David, I, I feel awful. Yeah. Like, we brought you on. We were, you know, having a good conversation. It's all but, right. You know, I, I hate yeah, I to mean, be the bearer of bad news. Yeah, there's nothing where you can guarantee me that my team is going to do well. Um, if you could, I would I would come on every round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, David, you know, it is always a pleasure to have you. Uh, we want to give another shout out to the Chess Dojo Live community. Oh. And for those of you who are watching right now and don't already follow the channel, do so immediately. Great educational and fun content. So, David, we'll let you go. Uh, we'll see if your team can bounce back. But thanks, as always, for joining us. And everybody here loves you. All right. Thanks, Robert and James. You, David. Have a good one. James, Shit, nothing worse, man, than bringing on the team captain or manager and then seeing their squad just lose all the just games. Lose right there. I mean, uh, man, that's tough, bro. And they have a great squad. I mean, like, he is very, I mean, obviously, very proud of the squad. I mean, you got three 2700s on the team. Like, bro, there's only a few 2700s in the league. Like, what do you mean? All three of them on one team, right? So, and two on another team. So that's like five right there, 2700s. So, very strong team here, but right now, just not going their way. Oh, what a nice move. Rook B6. If pawn takes, trade rooks, get an outside pass pawn. This should be a win for Hikaru Nakamura right now. Simple stuff. So while he considers the next option, does Christopher Yu with 10 seconds remaining on his clock, we might just see him resign. Mm, yeah, it's a pretty tough game. I mean, he played very well up until that point. One blunder, that's what it takes. That's what it takes is, uh, you know, Sometimes one move, that's how chess is. Can you, okay? No, nothing. Nah, he's yeah, just pretty, losing yeah. this pawn over here. The rooks come to the seventh rank. Down goes f7, and there's the game. So it's a win for Hikaru. The pineapple behind him, serving him well. And we see him talking to his community. So he's a happy camper. He gets that win. It was a shaky position. He was down a pawn for what looked like minimal compensation, but he was able to uh, get a knight fork tactic. To win so let's go right. to our bird's eye view sam shanklin in the bottom left he got checkmated his king on h3 over there oof that was Bro. a rough ending in the nice. top right fedo he beats zoe tang uh that's a huge rating differential so we get it but alua nermanova she's still fighting for the gotham knights the california unicorns absolutely require ray robson to win this game because they have lost all three games thus far in the round ray needs to win yeah, Ray needs to win here. And, of course, it is Big Ray. Have a nice day. One of the strongest players on the planet, especially when it comes to puzzles. When you play him, you already just feel like you're going to blunder something because he sees more puzzles than you. So it's very scary uh, playing this guy here. But you have to give ultimate credit for Alua here, who's like, yeah, interest says White's crushing, obviously. But at the same time, I mean, you know, practically speaking, Black definitely still has chances, especially having the Bishop pair here. But, I mean, White does have the outside passer there, so. She's playing good, though. Against Ray? Against Ray? This is the position you got? You're not getting crushed? Yeah, this is a good game for my lord. And in the first game, she had really good chances against Sam Shanklin. So I feel like the play, it does not match the score. Like She has been playing quite decently, as you're saying. Uh, right now, it's a tough 
position for her because this outside pass pawn uh, will let Ray run to victory. And yeah, you can just kick this queen out of there saying, what are you doing? Let me just make him look like knight of three because you do not want to blunder a piece. Bishop takes, drags the queen away from this bishop on f1. So as long as Ray does not make a horrendous blunder, he should take this one. It is difficult. I mean, it's kind of strange. Like, he doesn't miss many tactics, right? Unless, obviously, if time is low, then anyone can miss tactics. But here, he has enough time to not make any tactical blunders. He does have the outside A. King can run to A2 for shelter, too, as well. White is just trying um, to convert, you know, the pawn advantage I have right now. And I feel like there's nowhere for black to attack, right? Yeah. This pawn is well defended by the knight. This pawn on H3, for now defended by the bishop over here. And even if you win this pawn, I mean, that's just way too slow. The A pawn is sprinting to the other side. It's just a, our mind is having tunnel vision because that pawn is just going to the other side. Yeah, this is a, this is a clean clean one. Very clean plan, too, as well. Bishop C, I thought, I thought it had to be played. So then now we have to figure out how do we actually queen. Like, we still want a queen, but Bishop C was a very nice way to stop it practically. Maybe bishop, no, that doesn't work. Hmm. I was going to play bishop e2. Yeah, just push it anyway. Why not? Bishop e2 and bishop g4 is the idea. Just kind of play the game there, risk-free. e3, okay. h3, it's under attack, but you don't want to capture it because that does allow the pawn to get all the way up to a6, which black cannot afford. Problem is this knight is not in the game. Maybe it's going to come around this way. That could give some hope. But Ray, look at him. Too yeah, strong. Yeah, you just swap you, the queens. The in game is completely winning for white. I'm up to pawn here. I mean, you know, your pieces aren't the greatest here. I totally understand. Queen e2 is a beautiful move. We have four not trading, 100% correct. Knight b5, just attack things, right? Makes sense. Going for this c7 pawn, and it, this knight g5 can go after e4, but c7 does feel a little bit more important. Uh, and he doesn't even give up e4, it's bishop g2. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to give you any type of counterplay here. Queen f7, probably. Queen f7, and then what is next? Yeah, it's getting defensive. Uh, queen f7 does protect that pawn over there. Maybe there's knight a7 at some moment, but queen... Oh, watch out! I didn't even see this knight was hanging. I was like, what is queen g3? That knight is loose over here. Easy to blunder. Always ask, what are they doing? Right, that's the problem. If you don't ask, what are they doing? You won't see it. And he saw it. King a2... Take on h3, but then wait, she fighting. She man, come on. A little out here fighting. Yes, yeah, okay. The engine's like, yeah, this is over. But like the way that this is oh. over, it's not that much, right? It's not like oh, oh crushed. Uh oh. Man, She's really speed. fighting here. Dude, watch out. Move. Wait, but James, watch out because the h pawn for black could play a big role in this game. If this bishop gets out the way and some of the h pawn gets going. This could be a problem in the future for Ray, who's down to about 30 seconds. That girl playing chess. She's playing chess right now, okay? She's playing some real chess. It's wow. Great play by her at the moment. And what does Ray even do here? He doesn't see an easy move. You can bring your knight back, but he's going the wrong direction. And how do you kick this bishop out of here? You don't. I was thinking the same thing. I was trying to try to get some type of knight c5 in, but my queen needs to get to f6 or like on the third rank, on the sixth rank. Which is difficult to do that. Knight A1? <laughs> That's some super GM stuff. Knight A1. Where's that going? Knight C2? It's going to A3. It's going to A3, I think. What? Or even F5. Knight A1. What a move. This was under attack, so the queen slid back. I think that for black, you got to push this pawn. She went bishop G7 to shield her king. But I think you need to push this pawn up the board at some moment. This might be... Oh, wow. The engine hated that move. How is yeah, it? I wonder why. Right, queen d8. Oh, I don't understand. Okay, yeah, like she can back repeat. And exactly, and now knight a3 probably. But you can repeat. Oh, he goes up here. He wants checkmate. Yeah, you're going for e3. Whoa, he don't care about none of that. Oh man, big Ray and have a nice day. Is it gonna work? Queen is he getting pos Oh, do you hang a pawn? Is that pawn important? Queen takes e4. Ooh. This a6. The knight on e3 defends d5. That's really important here because you can't get the second pawn and then the white pawn promotes. Sheesh, yeah. The problem with Ray is like he got too many tactics. Like <laughs> after like you hit me, and that's what that was so good. That was so good to be able to convert or at least get to this position now from where it is for white now. Now the queen is the worst blockader when it comes to the pass pawns here. Worst blockader. It's gonna have to sit there. It's just over now. Yeah, very simple plan to get the queen to be seven for white, and now a sevens. The queen went out the way. It's going to be a win for Ray Robson. Uh, that was shaky at some moments, but I guess for Robson, he never felt 
like this was a problem. Is that? I feel like he's got peanut butter in the background over there. Uh, maybe some crackers. He be that snacking. Is. They over there eating. Okay, look at he got two. You see a peanut butter behind the peanut butter. You got the red, the red cap and the blue one. You know what I mean? Right behind you. So uh, I want the red. No, I want the crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <I'm not> <laughs> yeah, he got both of them back there and the premium crackers i see him hey james he wants it all and he wants it now he has both creamy and crunchy peanut butter he also <laughs> just scored for the california unicorns ray robson the super grandmaster from the united states is the only person to win for the unicorns because look at the left side i see one in the column for nakamura Fedoseev, and Fokitov. that was a monster score the night nice. yeah that's scary if they keep that up you know what i mean like this is about to be another mix up here if, if they keep that up this is gonna be over in the next round now of course we you know ray has to strike back chris has to strike back shankle had a bad game there but you know they can heat up too as well but if they stay in the right form as gotham is right now gotham nice this is uh this could be a blowout in the next round which we don't want to see and we actually see the difference, right? Shamsin and Vokitov took down Shanklin. If that result had gone it's the other way, game. it would still be a tie. So uh, Vokitov, maybe one of the heroes for the Knights, taking down the top board for the Unicorns. Uh, but it's going to be an epic match. And speaking of heroes, speaking of epic, uh, Luka Doncic, four-time NBA All-Star. He has officially launched his metahuman, Luke AI, onto the chess scene for a limited time. You can challenge Luca's AI sidekick and watch it grow stronger with experience. Will it be enough for Luke AI to secure victory in the computer chess championship? That much is up to you. Use the command Luca in chat to play now. James, before we go to break, should we kind of hit that command, type in Luca and go play that bot real quick? Yeah, we could probably play, probably play that bot real quick and then you know, hit him on Twitter. Hey, I beat your bot, bro. I beat your bot. Come to the stream for lessons, right? That's exactly what we're going to do. Get him on stream chat, of course. So make sure you play that bot. You said man Luca, I think it's in the chat so yeah we're ready for it all right well we'll see if the chat is ready first to take on the Luca bot then to come back and watch the Gotham Knights and the California Unicorns go play go have a little bit of fun but in a few minutes we will be back for the third round of action here in the Pro Chess League Hey everybody, it's Danny here, and as you may know, Chess.com and Chessable are now one, and I'm here to show you how you can make your Chess.com and Chessable one in just a few clicks. To start, let's log in and connect our Chess.com account. I just scroll right here above the browser and click log in. Scroll down and click continue with chess.com. Now, if you're already logged into chess.com, it's just gonna ask you if you want to approve that connection. I'm gonna say yes, sir. But after approving, it'll bring you right back to the Chessable homepage. Now, the Puzzle Connect feature can be found under Tools and you click Puzzle Connect. Now, what that does after you type in your username is it's gonna pull positions from the games you played on chess.com, create your very own personalized chessable course, and then quiz you with the positions where you may have missed the best move. And the more you play on chess.com, the more games it will have to quiz you as long as your account stays connected. It's pretty sweet, and it's gonna help you get better learning from the mistakes in your games. Yes, this is a pro feature at chessable, but if you go to chessable.com slash link, you can get 30 days of pro for free.
competitive chess. The weight of a win, draw, or loss is all on one's shoulders. It's easy to feel alone. Those lonely days are over. Oh my goodness! The Pro Chess League is back. Once again in chess, teammates matter. Katarina Luck, no super strong player, but Wei Yi is unstoppable in the Pro Chess League. Welcome back, PCL. A unique collection of teams, each with their own personality of different colors, shapes, and sizes. There are gnomes and knights, chess bras and bishops, and whatever the heck this is. The PCL is the only place where the best players in the world risk their fate alongside content creators and players from different levels, ages, and perspectives. Oh my gosh, that was another sick tactic by Arjun Eric nice. He sees everything. Entering its fifth season, 16 teams will reboot the PCL legacy with a new format and new schedule. Only one team can be crowned the next PCL champion. Wait a second, uh-oh. Grishuk is super unhappy. My friends, it's the 2023 Pro Chess League. Which team can rise above the rest? They won't be able to do it alone. It's a chair stream for Hikaru Nakamura. You recognize the pineapple, and that looks like Snoopy on the shelf. James, he has been leading the charge for the Gotham Knights. Levy Rosman picked up the FIDE rated world number seven, the five time US chess champion, the reigning five time speed chess champion, the reigning world Fisher random chess champion. Oh my gosh, how many times do I gotta say reigning, James? I mean, uh, little rainy, you know, I remember when we was in CGC, uh, Chess Global Championship, I was like, hey, so when you you fresh off this world championship that you won at Fisher Random, do I have to refer to you as Mr. World Champion when I talk to you? He was like, no, you're good. I was like, all right, cool, because I was going to do it, but, like, I didn't want to, though. So, like, but, of course, he's raining, right? Rainy is the uh, accolades, right, speak for themselves. The man is a monster, right? You know, he's uh, two out of two today, right? And he's also uh, one of the strongest on the planet. We all know him, right? And what he does, I mean, the man speaks for himself. Chess speaks for itself, as it does, right? So it's, it's Hikaru, man. We're all, we, we love him. Yeah, Hikaru is a beast, and he's leading the way right now for the Gotham Knights. He has two out of two, but so does Vladimir Fedoseyev and Shamsidin Vokidov chipping in with that crucial victory over Sam Shanklin. So as we go into the third round of action, Hikaru and Fedoseyev, they get the black pieces. This is Super GM on Super GM. Ray Robson White against Hikaru Nakamura. What is this? The U.S. Chess Championship. And then Sh Sam Shanklin White against Vladimir Fedoseyev. So, James, let's break it down. Would you rather have White with the Super GMs or White as the Gotham Knights do on the bottom two boards in these lopsided matchups? You know what? I would actually take uh, Gotham here again with the bottom at the uh, the White with the bottom two boards. But Christopher you is like, you know, y'all wait, hold on down there. Wait a second. Christopher's <laughs> down there, so... You know what? We're going to have to change that. In fact, I'm going to change that because I didn't see Christopher Yu at the bottom there. That's scary when Christopher Yu's at the bottom. So we have Ray Robson, Ray Robson and uh, Sam Shanklin. So I think I'm actually going to go with uh, the California Unicorns in this one because they both have white. They both have white here and against the strong players. So I think I'm going to go with that. Okay. Christopher Yu was playing a game of Blitz uh, during the break. He didn't get our memo that he was supposed to play the Luka bot, but instead he was just playing Blitz against a Grandmaster. So he has no rest. He just wants to uh, keep up the chess. And speaking of chess players, we have Ray Robson, classical rating above 2,700. That was a recent, recent accomplishment for him. Taking on Hikaru Nakamura, the five-time U.S. champion, the world Fisher Random champion, and the streaming sensation. So James, we have liftoff. We have C4 by Ray, Knight of Six by Hikaru. I don't think his Hikaru is going to be playing sketchy openings this time around. Not especially not against Ray. Ray is a tactician. I mean, even like he beat, he outscores Hikaru right in puzzles. Like literally, he beats everyone when it comes to tactics and positions. So if you have a position that is tactically inclined and you have problems there, or you notice your worst, you can also count on Ray on finding the right things. And here Hikaru, he's just on this strange kick, like. Look at this opening. Look at this, Robert. What is this? I'm not sure because if you want to play B5, can't White just play Knight C3, develop naturally, and stop this move because two of your pieces will attack it? I, I don't know, man. This feels a little bit too much against someone like Ray Robson. 
Yeah, he literally doesn't care. That's what uh, he just, he literally doesn't care. We're just starting to see that now. Like, knight f6 and an a6? I mean, I love the flexibility aspect, but then again, like, bro, what on earth is this? It's just, it just moves. He's just playing he, chat once again. Can he turn this into King's Indian somehow? And he's going to do that. Bishop he's g7, that, yeah. castle, and sometimes a6 is a useful move. Other times you want to put your knight on a6 and play c5. So Ray, I mean, the guy has played at the top level for a long time now. He's not afraid of Hikaru's offbeat opening. Just play normal moves. Don't be afraid. Right. As we have a King's Indian by transposition, but with A6 help us or hurt us? It depends on what we want and what we're looking for out of this position because usually we would like to keep, obviously, Knight A6 idea alive to play Knight C5 if we get C5 in, or E5, that is. He plays Bishop G4 here still. Um, not showing all the cards yet. Usually you have knight d7, e5, which is going to happen after a trade on f3 eventually. So interesting. Very interesting play. Just like, you can play some strays. But he avoided a lot of different things that could have happened in the King's Indian if he would have went straight King's Indian. Yeah, so bishop g4. I think the tempting move is h3. But black is already showing that they might want to take on f3. So why uh, force their hand? Uh, bishop e3 is standard. Maybe queen d2 to follow, especially at black castles. We may get this bishop all the way out to the h6 square, trade off this important Fionnichetto piece, which does defend the king side. So uh, while Ray continues to sit and think, he finally has made his move. Hikaru will respond shortly. Let's look at some of our other boards because every single game, every single round, equal of importance. Whether Hikaru wins or not, that's worth one point. And whether, say, Zoe Tang, the board four for the California Unicorns, if she could upset Grandmasters, Shamsin, and Vokidov, that would be huge for their chances. Uh, but that's early stages in that game. So, James, I love myself a close Sicilian. I think we might have to uh, pick that fan. game because uh, Zoe, she just plops her knight in the center, and she is just saying that I'm going to develop normally. Shamsin's trying to um, create. Chaos on the board from an early stage, but she is not going to be deterred. Yeah. Oh, this is a queen of three. This looks like Goldman variation, Carol Khan, but the, it's not at all. I mean, like, that's just the move that you have from literally the same, like the knights on C3, bishop C4, queen of three, E4, and the Goldman's Carol Khan. It's so crazy. But this is, uh, this is pretty sweet. This is pretty sweet. I like what white and white has going on here. I mean, you, do, you are hitting F7. You play 92, D3. And you can also play h3, g4, move the queen to g2, play f4. Like you castle queen side, you find a way to do it, right? And you'll see this in all Sicilians here. So it's pretty fun. I like it. Come on. Yeah, it's, you see in the bottom left that black can take a knight on c3, but they get checkmated in one turn because the queen on f3, the bishop on c4, uh, they're lined up against this pawn on f7. So this is a known opening. Uh, it's one that Zoe has to be careful in because after knight h6, you defend this checkmate threat. But oftentimes, white makes move d3. Please just go ahead, take my knight. You have bishop mm -hmm. takes h6 to follow. So just be really, really careful in these variations from the black side. And after queen of three, she is still thinking e6 is also not the best move because the knight hops to b5 and around to the d6 square. You're just creating too many holes in the position. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Roman Gigi has really has a very good saying that you should not be playing e6 and g6, depending on you know the Sicilian you're playing. But the problem with that is because the bishop has to choose a diagonal. So as Robert pointed out, with knight b5 to d6, the bishop should be on f8 there. But then it should be on g7 because you play g6. So it's a problem having this. You have to choose what to do with the bishop here. In certain cases, you can't play e6, but you need to immediately play d5 um, afterwards to take care of the d6 square, which the queen does a good job of that. So it's very important to understand. And e6 on the board, though. e6 and g6 has been played. Generally, that's bad. And knight b5 played immediately. Wow. Yeah, then knight on b5 may hop in the d6 square. And if black plays the move d6 herself, the queen on f3 often slides all the way across the board uh, to a3. Uh, so it's scary ter territory for the young Zoe Tang. That's what happens when you're a growing chess player. All right, d6, queen a3. Oh, gosh, we might see this. Here it comes, queen a3. Right. And queen three, you got to go bishop f8, which is ridiculous, right? And this is what you know a, a perfect example of not of why you shouldn't be playing e6 and g6, or what could go what could go wrong when you play e6 g6, right? Not that you can't do it, it's just what goes wrong, and this is exactly what's going on right now. Bishop to f8 is like your only move in this position. Maybe you try king e7, maybe that's playable, maybe, 
I mean, that's a crazy move. You you can't castle, obviously. You have to hand castle. But King E7 is, is a huge concession. Yeah, King E7, just to show that C3 is the move for White. Just open up the center of the board. There's a king that is stuck in the center. That's not good. And Bishop E5 would appear to be the way to keep both D4 and D6 protected. But Bishop E5 does not work out because when White plays the move D3, the next move is F4. And your bishop is just caught here. It's going to be kicked back no matter what. And unfortunately, a6 doesn't actually threaten the knight because the rook Wait. is loose back here on a8. So it's uh, f4 would be just over. So let's uh maybe step away from this one just because Zoe, she's in some trouble here. She might have to play bishop f8 and give up the d4 pawn. Uh, but let's look at the other games because all four are in session. Uh, Hikaru? Well, he, what is that knight doing on b7, the top left? Let me see. Whoa, he fin kettled his knight. You're supposed to do that with the bishops. What did he put the knight? Uh, he fin kettled with knights? He fin, um, he don't care about none of that. Yeah, what's going on over there? Like, what, why is there a knight back here on b7? It looks like Ray's last one was b4, and the knight had to drop back to b7. But this looks like a clear advantage to my eyes for what? You have so much more space. You have the pair of bishops. Yeah. James, I like it for Robson. Yeah, in, in 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 the later years, I mean, or at least 2022, 2023, Kings Indian, I mean, and even checking the database, it's not been scoring well. It has not been scoring well. I've spent a lot of time. I mean, I'm a Kings Indian player. I'd be my first GM over the board with KID. Love it. Absolutely love Kings Indian. Everybody does, right? But, of course, it, it's just not scoring well these days. It, it is just not – you're not getting the positions you want. Like, nobody plays Mardell Plata and stuff like that anymore. So it's very difficult – to get the King's Indian stuff that we're looking for here. White just has a stable advantage with the Fin Kettle Knight on B7. Now, you are playing Hikaru Nakamura at the same time. You have an advantage, but you have to convert this here. And, and if anyone can do it, it is Ray. Yeah, Ray is not afraid of Hikaru. They played so many times. I keep saying that, but it's true. Uh, when you get that experience playing against Hikaru in the U.S. Championships year after year, uh, when Hikaru was playing them every single year, now he, of course, mainly is streaming and then choosing his tournaments as they fit his schedule. Uh, but, you know, Ray is just pushing his pawns forward. There, Look at these pawns here. Maybe yeah. there's going to be a rook to D1. Maybe there's going to be an E5. Maybe there's going to be an F5. A uh, White can choose his path forward. And this knight on B7 is a donkey. I mean, it just can't <laughs> get out of there. Like, it's just a donkey, what's it doing. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That piece is really bad. And we have a very easy plan. I mean, easy plans. Uh, we have uh, all type of uh, options. We can double the rooks on the D file. Put one rook on the D file, play bishop F3, and then play E5. Highlighting the fact that the queen's on the D file and, you know, we also have the bishop um, on the strong diagonal. That's why he played queen C7. I mean, he prophylactic for real all the way. Get the queen off of there and defend the B7 knight at the same time. And he might try something like knight D8, knight C6, get the knight to D4. And uh, Ray says, well, what was nah. that? Where was right, your well, knight going? You say, Robert? Yeah, that's what I uh, thought. That's what I thought, yeah, no. No c6 square for you, and if you take the knight, will likely take back here and then hit the queen, put more pressure on this pawn, and protect a3. So he closes down the queen side, does Hikaru. The side that controls the pawn breaks is the side with the advantage. Guess who? It's Ray, who at some point can push these pawns forward. Maybe rook a d1. There's no risk in this position. I like it for the California Unicorns board, too. Absolutely. Ray Robson is just doing his thing. He has to go in here. He has to strike. You know, he's one of the high rated players here along with Sam and he just got to score my points. I got to do what I got to do. I don't care who it is. And I'm going to play great chess and play the pieces in front of me right now. And that's what he's doing. Great spatial advantage. I mean, engine agrees too as well. Black's just kind of miserable, especially with, again with the knight on B7. There's a quote that says one bad piece, you know, you you can have a very bad position. Now, of course, that is a long shot. You, know, you can have a great position with a bad piece, but that beast is very bad. As you see, he's trying to reroute it to F7. You see this a lot. Like Knight or Sicilians, the positional ones with Bishop on E2, you end up, end up rerouting from A5 all the way around to F7, and you play something like E5, or even put the Knight on H6 and go to G4. So there are things that you can do here, but he he's trying to make the best of this position, him being Hikaru here and Ray trying to close in. If I'm Ray, I'm playing Connect Four, you know, G4, H4, and just throwing the pawns at the board. Four. Yeah, everything. You know the king is safe back on G1, but Ray he is spending a lot of time, but. For the California Unicorns, it's not just about this game. Let's hop on over to our bird's eye view because uh, the other games are equally interesting. We see in the bottom left for Zoe Tang, she's down a pawn and she's just going to be uh, in big trouble. The D6 pawn is targeted by all of White's pieces. So I think uh, she's going to suffer a third straight defeat. Uh, but on the right side, 
Christopher Yu with the black pieces. Bottom right, he's doing great against Alua Nurmanova. And the top right, it looks like advantage Sam Shanklin on the clock and on the board. So uh, we see the top left, by the way, G4 played by Robson. He continues to press forward. But let's go to Shanklin. Let's go to Shanklin and Fedoseyev uh, because, James, we know those players extremely well. And I think that Sam Shanklin, his pieces are enjoying great squares against his super gym opponent. There's the F5 square. There's his bishop on B2. Look at the bishops. Whoa, in the night F5? I mean, if I'm first glance, this is a win already. Now, of course, engine is like, oh, yeah, it's equal. Of course, you find all the defensive moves. But as a human, I mean, I'm already looking at knight H6. But, of course, it doesn't work because king F8. But, I mean, I'm already looking at it. It's the fact that the options are there is the problem with the black. The options yeah. that I have. Now, look at a bishop just you know getting safe it's not, it almost works just to show a quick line the knight takes h6 check pawn takes queen g4 check only doesn't work because both of black's pieces cover the g7 square there's also queen to g5 which i'm only now just noticing but my point was right. going to be that black has enough defenders to safeguard the king on the side of the board so knight h6 sadly for shanklin not there just yet what's an alternative james because d5 is threatened I was thinking about d6, d6. Oh, but then it's still that doesn't work because he has queen g5. Yeah, that whole queen g5 thing is so annoying. I was going to play d6, but in knight d6, knight h6, take queen g4, queen g5, and gg. And you just lost yeah. a piece there. Hmm. That's tough. That's tough. That pawn is hanging. I was about to say queen g4 is the only other move. Like queen g4 and then put the rook on d1, but he has queen d5 there. So you got to be careful. First off, what, let's see what he does against queen g4. Maybe king h8. No, that's but stupid. Knight h6, right. So what do you do? Like, knight h6 on tap right now. Maybe he takes on d5 anyway. Queen, d5, queen, g, queen g5? That's also possible um, over here? Again, stupidly, queen g5. That's just an annoying move. Queen g5 yeah, is so annoying, bro. I, I feel like, you know, the queen trade doesn't solve all the problems, first of all. And second of all, the queen could have gone to e4. Oh, oh. Whoa! You got him. You have lost your absolute on national television like this? <laughs> Wow, um, he Wow, he you, can you get away with that? I guess you yeah, can I, because. I, I, I guess how do can. I do it? Ah. Oh, ah, ah. It, doesn't <laughs> work. Uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. G six is insane. For the say yeah. I was showing off here, Sam went into the think tank. I would too. Wow, G six. So can I not go H four here? H four maybe Queen D five. Yeah, this one is now so officially. Wow. Wow. Red. Oh my goodness. He is so strong. Better say if you have to, I mean, look, I'm not even gonna lie, you underestimate how strong this guy is. Like that is a move. D six I see I see like five different moves that look good for white. I don't know, rook D one, rook E one, even knight E three, a simple retreat to defend the pawn comes to mind. Uh mm, but knight E three, yeah. I actually like D six and a sack on H six and G six. Or you're just going for it all. <laughs> I'm just like, don't care about life, right? Don't care about nothing. <laughs> D6, knight D6, knight H6, bishop H6, bishop G6, F G6, queen G6. I'm like, it's a nasty line. It's literally nasty. Attack everything, you know what I mean? But I, obviously he doesn't have to take, but I me, mean, this is very wicked. But he has queen G5 once again. Like, <sighs> queen G5 is the move of the day. Every time. Every, Every time. time. So he drops back with knight E3. The knight came up to F6. Uh, that... Forks the queen and this pawn. So is that the end of the world? Like if Black wins this pawn, uh, extra material for Fedoseyev. But Sam is actually being tricky. He said, please take and then walk into this pin down here. Yeah, he just walked into the pin here. Takes, takes, queen at, wait a second. Oh yeah, bishop e4, you're right. Just bishop e4 immediately. So he plays bishop g7. Man, Fedoseyev is so strong, bro. To be able to play g6, and now both the bishops are being kettled here. Now we're able to deal with the pawn on d5. That was impressive. That was very impressive because g6 looked like a move that you cannot play. And I guess, you know, the lesson in it here, in it, to learn here, Chad, is like you can play, you know, look at the moves that you think you can't play, right? You know, recheck them. Recheck them. g6 was a beautiful move. g6 was awesome. I mean, such a scary move to make, but... Uh, that was a good one. And now the question is, can this pawn d5 be picked up? I think I know the answer because I see the evaluation bar at minus one. Fedoseyev does not have that luxury. Knight takes d5. It looks terrible uh, because if you take on g7 and just automatically play king takes, then bishop e4 wins the game. There are pins left and right. But that's the thing about chess. 
They don't just have to take back. There's knight takes e3 intermezzo. If you take the bishop, you'll lose the rook. If you take the knight, which is king takes g7, black steals a pawn. And with queen g5, the move of the day coming next, it should be a good opportunity for Fedoseev. So it's now down to two minutes for him. Man, he's really struggling on the clock, considering how complicated the position is. And I just want to point out that uh, Shamsidin Vokidov did beat Zoe Tang. So board three for the Knights did defeat board four for the Unicorns. And we'll see how the other games go. And whoa, Nakamura, we, I think we have to go away from here, even though we have a kind of wild game in this one. Nakamura and Robson, things have changed in that one. And Ray down to a minute on his clock. Right down to a minute. Let's see what we have on the board. And Hikaru with this. the facial expressions. D5. Okay. Whoa. Captures. Rook takes F4. Whoa, bro. Chill. chill. Chill out. <laughs> chill out. Relax. Okay. What happened? No move yet. Ray's thinking, but he's down oh, to a minute. Whoa. Relax. This is crazy. Rook F4 is nuts here. Uh, what is White's move? King G2 is definitely possible here. Can I not get out of this? Knight D5? Take on E6. Oh, shoot. It's just Knight D5. It's very but there easy. might be like a, a take and like a sack. Ah, I'm too confused. There's, is there like a Rook? Oh, my goodness. There was Rook G4, Bishop G4, Queen G3, I think. That's probably why he wasn't going for it. And you can take on E3 too. Like, there's so many things hanging after that whole thing, which is why I think Knight D2 makes sense because it, it covers the G3 square. Yes. So you can't stack on G4 anymore. That's sick. Yeah, sorry, just the queen to g3 was a big threat in many different variations. So knight e2 back, Hikaru up three minutes on the clock, right down to 33 seconds. And the eval bar now is in Hikaru's favor. So uh, this could get out of hand for the unicorns. I mean, Ray needs to survive this game. If he can win it, that would be huge. But he at least needs to try to make a draw here. Because otherwise, the Gotham Knights are leaping out to such a huge lead. Man, this is crazy, bro. If you have a lot of time, you can figure this out. But, I mean, okay, so since we down this rabbit hole here, maybe it's Rook F395 and just keep going and just keep attacking everything. But, I mean, I could, yeah, F395 is definitely possible. You can also sack it back, sack the exchange back. There, this is chaos, and it's not enough time. Three minutes is not enough time to figure out what is going on right now and what Hikaru should do based off of, obviously, the engine saying Black's better here. Now, you know, both players are like, what is going on? Who We don't know who's winning. White thinks he's winning. Black probably thinks he's winning. Oh, and a mistake by Akar. Let's bring up an analysis board very quickly because I understand the mistake that Akar made. It wasn't the initial sacrifice in F3. But I think after knight e5, the rook and the pawn are under attack. So the rook has to be protected. And after knight takes, rook takes, you think, okay, I have to move my bishop here. Bishop takes there. Queen takes. There's a pin here. This does not look good for black from a distance with the rook barreling towards the black king. But instead, mm -hmm. maybe there's e5, and this position's still hard to assess, but black, wow. according to the engines, is better. Wow. So the engines, you know, they make it seem easy. It is not. But I think that in this position, the king on g8, the light square is being vulnerable. I'm worried for Ray Robson. So was the, engine, the engine move was rook f3, though? It was rook f3, yeah. yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. One for the Jedi. Come on, chat. One for the Jedi. That's right, all the Jedi in the chat. Rook F3, that was nice. Rook F3 was the move in the 95 for the for the follow up. This one is uh, very difficult to. Oh, look at that bishop on A1, bro. Queen B2, and what do you do, right? Like, whoa. I'm just going to be there for a long time. Constant pressure and all kind of tactics. King H1 to the corner. He goes. Queen takes A3, takes away the B2 and C3 oh. squares from the queen. D4 already off limits, and it threatened the oh. bishop on F3. Ooh. Dirty dog, you. Yeah, he didn't take on A3. That was so annoying. Queen takes A3, gets rid of every... Whoa, what is this? Okay, three seconds. Ray's got to go. Two seconds. He takes the knight. And move. He takes the knight. Uh, yeah. He is really unhappy about his decision there. You can tell. I mean, he knew he had a win somewhere in that position. Instead, mm. we see liquidation. And James, this should be a draw now with all the pieces coming off the board. This is the problem. Oh! 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 Chill. Everybody, H hold on. Hikaru oh, does oh, it again? Oh my gosh. James, how does he do here. it every single time? It's a magician. It's scary. And look at Ray's face. He understands. He understands. And he loses a piece. And Hikaru just cheesing. You know, laughing. <laughs> he just cheesing. Like, you know, I did it again. I did it again, chat. Uh -huh. 
Oh, it's me. Oh, I'm so bad. Right. Oh man, that's great. It is me. I'm nodding the head. And Ray that's... can't believe it, but Hikaru Wait, Nakamura is like, that's how it's done. I'm going to lead the night. We go jousting. I'm the only knight here. And we see Hikaru Nakamura explaining to his community what just happened. Ray cannot believe it. I mean, he just had the upper hand, but he had no time. So as we look at the remaining boards, it looks like Sam Shanklin and Vladimir Fedo save. And so going to opposite colored bishop position. And then the bottom right, Christopher Yu is in charge. He's up, I think, two pawns against Alua. Nermanova. So let's go to the game that still is combative here. Better save down to just 20 seconds on this clock. But James, the unicorns, they need this game desperately. Yeah, I mean, when you put desperate and like need this game, like in the same sentence for the unicorns in this position, it's going to be hard, especially looking at Feta Seyab, right? Opposite color bishops here. Okay, we take, take. I mean, you're going to need a real fatal blunder. For this one to be done, like for you to win this one, it's not happening. It doesn't look like it's gonna happen. And if anything, Black could even, you know, uh, King is a little bit active, and we can also go to the sec uh, the second rank if possible. Mm -hmm. So this looks like a pretty standard split of the point because opposite colored yeah. bishops. You would need somehow to get your bishop and your rook very active, but as soon as the mm -hmm. bishop slides back, the rook will take care of the square here. Yeah, this is a great chess. I mean, obviously, like, you know, if this wasn't for, you know, a, a team, like, you have, if this wasn't a must win, then uh, Shankly is fine with a draw. I mean, hey, Fedosev is an absolute beat. Look at his rating, bro, and a draw by agreement, right? So it is what yeah. it is. He can't, he can't get anything out. No, oh, and I mean, after the night capture on D5, it seemed like uh, Fedosev was never in trouble from there. So one game is remaining. It is the board three for the Unicorns against board four of the Gotham Knights, but that game just ended. Uh, it was a win for Christopher Yu on time on the board, so he gets it done here. Rook D2, final move, kicking the knight out of there. Down goes B2. So Christopher Yu, I mean, he is the only player for the Unicorns to score in this round, and while well, he could be happy about his game, James, the team score is out of control in favor mm. of the Gotham Knights. Yeah, I figured it would have if, if I was like, if they don't bounce back, if they can't swing and like really just strike back in the next round, like we saw in the previous match, then, you know, this this could be out. This could get out of hand. And of course, it is starting to look like that now as they are like a half point or a point away from actually closing this thing out here. Now, things are still possible, but they need to win all four games in the next round. Is that right? Uh, yeah, they uh, well, they need to get three and a half out of four just to tie this match. But Jeez. if California sweeps somehow, then they actually take the match. But look at this Hikaru, three out of three, Fedoseyev, two and a half out of three, and Vokitov right. with two himself. I mean, they're just a top heavy lineup right now. Yeah, definitely top heavy lineup. And of course, as you see, it's starting to, to level out here. Hikaru has some positions where he was definitely worth seeing, but he was just able to not buckle and then keep the composure under the pressure and the time pressure that he was putting onto his opponents there. It's very difficult, but, you know, we still got one uh, round left here, and it looks like the Gotham Knights might be closing this one out. Yeah, they're well on their way to match victory. We'll see if they can secure it. Uh, we'll have to find out in a few minutes. It is the Gotham Knights leading 7.5, 4.5 over the California Unicorns. But we have a former U.S. champion, Sam Shanklin, trying to defeat the former five-time U.S. champion, Nikara Nakamura see what happens in just a few stay tuned everybody we'll be right back i don't think about during the games but i certainly like do think about how like few african americans there are at like the top level so i try to do my best to to motivate more people like us to give it a try and hopefully succeed.
as the Gotham Knights make their way towards overall match victory against the California Unicorns. We want to remind everybody that this is an elimination Swiss. Three victories for your team, you make the playoffs. Three losses, you're out of there. And teams with the same record will face each other a week after week. So, James, your captain, your Garden State Pastors won this past week. How important is it for the Gotham Knights to put this match away and get that much closer to the playoffs? I mean, hey, this win is very close. It's here. As soon as we win, we work on the next one and then try to make it to the playoffs here, which is huge. I mean, three wins, that's it. And Gotham Knights are very close to closing it right now. So they just need to stay focused, but also California Unicorns still have chances and shots to do it. It's a long shot, and the percentage is there, but it's very difficult to come back here. But if I am the Gotham Knights, I'm not celebrating yet. I just need to continue, get the job done. I got a job to do. Let's get it done right now. They've been getting it done on the top boards thus far. The Gotham Knights lead 7 at 4.5. Hikaru with a perfect score. And better save in Vokita. They're also bolstering that squad. And you look on the other side of things, the Unicorns. Ray Robson started 2 out of 2, but just lost that heartbreaker to Nakamura. Shanklin and Christopher Yu. You can just see how they compare to the board one and board three for the other squad. So as we get board versus board, uh, final round action, it's the board one versus one, two versus two, three versus three, and four versus four. James, I've been asking you this every round. Do you like the matchup for the Unicorns or for the Knights, ignoring the fact that the Knights only need one point to win it? Uh, ignoring the fact, I'm still actually going to go with uh, the Gotham Knights there. Um, I think that a Carl first board there, of course, Shanklin's going to be in some trouble there. Fed to say, Ray, I could go either way. Um, I'm going to take Vokidov as a slight favorite in the Chris U match. And, you know, I think uh, Numa Nova here will, uh, you know, it, it's going to be, I think that's even two as well. I think it's more, more of an even match. But at the end of the day, all they need is, what, a point here. So that's that's enough there. Like, it, no, there's no lopsidedness in the Unicorns. There's got to be something special. Like we saw in the last match where it was like, oh, they got that right now in this round. And it was not that at all, not even close, in fact. And then we had to go into round four. So, yeah, definitely some difficult chess here today. But one more, one more round, yeah, right? If I'm Hikaru and I get the white pieces right here against Shanklin, I might even try to force a draw. Uh, <laughs> not that Hikaru is, you know, the least bit scared of anybody, right. uh, but you know your team needs just one point. And mm -hmm. he can get the job done himself. Uh, but if the opportunity arises where he can play a forcing variation that ends the game with a split point, I think he could uh, go for it. It just makes it, the rest of his teammates uh, feel better. But, you know, Hikaru, he always wants the perfect score. And let's see what we have here. In fact, uh, I have all of Sam's courses on Chessable here. So let's see which one he goes with. He, he was probably going to see a classical Sicilian there um, is what he has. He, he knows other stuff too as well here. But well, I like this. And this is a, an annoying part of the Sicilian, right? Like you, you nothing mainline. Bishop D3, Copex system type. We go D4. And these are nice positions for white, but also black has good play too as well. You're just hoping to get a Sicilian that you wanted to play against. And not one of these anti Sicilians. Look at this position. <laughs> Wait, D3? What is this? Just slow play from Mikaru. He doesn't want to allow a Sam to show off his preparation. And he's just playing this like it's any other game. Just quiet chess from Nakamura. If the bishop ever takes an F3, you get the pair of bishops. The bishop slides back. And watch out because at some point, G4 will force the bishop back to G6. And then you can either storm your pawn off the board or. After G4, Bishop G6, bring your knight to H4 and get the pair of bishops. He's doing it in a different way, bringing his knight to G3. That's right. Looking good. Yeah, knight to G3. Maybe G4 first and knight G3 first. And then every castling, probably queen side. What do you make of this, James? Because black castles queen side, white is castle king side in must win territory for Shanklin. This probably is the kind of position you want, even though you're playing the beast that is a Karu. You do want some aggressive positions and you want to be able to push the pawns and pieces forward here. And he does, he's actually like he's doing that's why he chose Sicilian too as well for some um, combative nature. But, you know, uh, Hikaru chose to take it slow here. But he can, not for so long. You know, D5 is a move. It's forcing some things. You, you're you going to have to make some decisions, even uh, maybe even pawn C4 in there to loosen up some stuff too as well. It's possible. It is possible for Black, but... You know, uh, Black needs to just advance his pieces. I think the king is a clear target. You know, whoever gets to the king first is going to win. And these opposite side castles here, the bishop is on g6. It really is misplaced because you do want to be able to play h and g. 
the Knights cover that. So it's kind of crazy how we're opposite side castles, but I don't have the attack I'm looking for yet. No, not yet. And uh, while Sam thinks about how to respond to Knights 4, I want to take our attention uh, to the bird's eye view because I feel like in the matchup between the second boards, uh, Fedoseyev has not moved in a little while. And you know, he finally does bring his bishop out to c4, Bobby Fischer style, you know, Sozin uh, variations. But I thought for a moment that Fedosev could try to make a little cheeky three-time repetition. That is not what happened this game. So in the bottom left, Christopher Yu with white against Shemsin and Vokiev. That one is spicy. It opens Spanish. So I like the way the unicorns are playing in, on all, well, I was say all four boards, but the fourth board only just started. But I think the unicorns, they just need to keep their chances alive. And at some point, you have to go all in. Yeah, you have to go all in. All right. And this is a, it's really opening choice. And of course, uh, how you feel here, are you sharp tactics everywhere? You, you got to take any advantage. And if you think it's risky, hey, it, it is, probably is, maybe, but obviously calculation will help. So. I mean, you just have to take chances and then take a few risks here, especially because this is for the team. Hey, it is what it is, right? I'd rather, you know, die trying, right? <laughs> That's what it's about here. So you have to uh, try to make it work because we need four wins. That's really tough. And I like what's happening on the fourth board matchup between Zoe Tang and Alua Nermanova. So you see that G pawn go up to G4. We got a King's Indian going on over there. Uh, James, you should be pretty happy with this because early G4, uh, Ooh, white is going to try to go this way and go for an attack at some point. I love it. I love it. Now, of course, in the lines, this is uh, with the early G. Wait, it's black smooth, right? Because G4 is hanging. Oh, it's white well, smooth. Black is, white smooth. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I see five. So here, I used to play, you know, and I, I play a lot of Kings Indian myself. I do love the Kings Indian. So this, I forgot. What is the move is F3. Bishop F3 was a problem. Bishop F3 is the move you don't want to play. So F3 was good. H5, though. Right now, I think that's premature. You're supposed to play that at a certain point, but it's not now. So H5 may be a slight error here, but okay. You know, I'm a fan of opening up to the side, so I'll take it. Maybe take it and play H4. Maybe just H4 right now. Give you the pawn. Takes Bishop G4, no good. Hmm. I just love your style of chess, James. You're always looking for that checkmating attack. <laughs> now, let's open that thing up. And she's playing this well, right? She, she decides to banish this knight. And if you play Queen D2... I mean, that knight is not getting out of here. We'll just swap pawns over here. Uh, but the problem is that... I could play F5. We'll put, oh, wow. Yeah, F5 was getting going to get spicy over there, but this bishop maybe at the right moment could take. But it's interesting. She hasn't moved yet, so she's not thinking about taking with the bishop, I don't imagine, that frees the knight up to capture. So she does play HG. But I feel like those moments there, you could preserve those 10 seconds. There wasn't really a need for her to calculate there. That is true. Yeah, you could have... Uh, oh! Oh, 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 that's... That's theory. That's theory. That's theory, bro. That's real. Rook at four. I'm not even surprised. I'm not even surprised. That is the actual King's Indian theory, right? And then you take, and usually the bishop can go to e7. You reroute it to e7, and you take on g5 that way. But the g5 pawn is hanging, and this is what you, you just open up the bishop line. That's a very cool sacrifice. This play, even Gowan Jones in his King's Indian course recommends this as well. Um, also, uh, who else? Uh, Camille Plitschka recommends his rook f4, right? You know, he this is a nice, nice positional sacrifice play quick <laughs> by a lure. Chess, she's swinging right now. Chess lover says they play this against the Canty bot, so oh, <laughs> <laughs> <it's fine. laughs> uh, that's chess lover. Chess lover's in my chat every day, so that's who that is. What up, Dark Rose? What's good, chess lover? That See in that's chat. hilarious because yeah. i mean bishop, let's just show everybody we'll bring them in board. you put a rook on f4 a bishop can take it why not take some material but the bishop takes pawn takes the bishop on g7 sees the length of the diagonal and if you keep taking stuff sure you get uh, a rook and a pawn for now but let's say i just take back on g5 with the knight uh, if you castle queen side this bishop comes out to e5 the queen is now in trouble it slides back the queen comes out to f6 with dual threats of trying to pin and win the queen here. I mean, this is just kind of beautiful stuff in a King's Indian, where now it's white's knight that can't move, and black's pieces are free-flowing. So no move as a response to rook to f4. I think that's a bad sign for Zoe Tang. She has not seen this before. It caught her off guard. Yeah, she's not seen this, and this is the type of uh, King's Indian that you want. Like, the King's Indians that you hate are the ones that are like Glysor, Glygoric, or like you know, the exchange variation and et cetera, things like that that are very annoying to face. This one, 
oh yeah, we'll take this all day with the black pieces because I'm able to sacrifice things. I'm able to play dynamically. G5 is straight up hanging. I'm getting this G pawn whether you like it or not. So that's a huge threat right now. There's things going on, right? Do I take this exchange and go into what you want me to do with this dark square bishop? It's a lot for her to think about here. And I think uh, Lua is very comfortable. She is, and she's barely spent any time. So while Zoe continues to think about picking up that rook on f4, let's see how the teammates are doing because the California unicorns, uh, the, the candy bot didn't play out. Hey, rook rook f4. F4. So and you know what's the, funny, bro? The candy bot, like, it's not even, you know, it's funny. I was like, why doesn't the bot play? I asked them. I'm like, chess.com. I played my bot. Why don't they play exactly what I play? And it's like, well, we can't set it like that. And I was like, well, you need to set it like that. <laughs> but they can't, they can't because it's like they have to use a certain engine thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right. So I would, I would never play. So it's not a real Jedi, but it's like half a Jedi. So we'll play a game. Well, half a Jedi still seems like an absolute beast, something that I would be afraid of playing. <laughs> and look at this position. Come on, Jedi. Use your mind tricks here. What's going on in this game where Sam Shanklin has a rook on the H file? Uh, it's even material. I thought black was up a pawn, but there's... That seventh pawn for white. What's going on here? Oh, you know, I actually like white in this situation. I mean, weird bishop on D1, but I'm definitely, I feel like I can get B4 in because I have this pawn break that you mentioned before, right? With pawn breaks, how important those are. I do feel very nice with B4. And then after takes, A3. If takes on A3, bishop E5, bishop takes, and rook takes, you know, A3 trying to open up the file. Obviously, G3 is hanging, but this is just an idea, right? To show you what we're looking for. And look at this. This is winning for white. That's crazy. Maybe it's C5 here. Oh, oh my Andy goodness. It's a... C5. <laughs> and then 94. <laughs> and then 96. What is this gross? Oh, man. Do yeah. you this every day, chat? Oh, my goodness. This is disgusting. So I think. Well, look at... Oh, wow. Wow. Woo! Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He tripping. Yeah, he went 94 you know, first. That was wrong, huh? Dang. Yeah, he, he took on C4. Because now if you take the knight on C4, you lose your bishop. And then we see a swap here, and Akara says, all right, let me just get my bishops out there. Uh, but James Black currently is up a pawn at least, but the eval bar creeping up and up in Akara's favor. Yeah, definitely here. The bishops look very nice, of course, as Hikaru loves these dynamic type of positions where you can just do things with tactics, obviously. But it is his move, and the question is, what do we do? And Excuse me, engine's like, this is over. Like, where is the kill shot? What are you talking about? Maybe this it's over. What? Maybe it's just something simple like this, where you go after all of Black's pawns. Yeah, that's a very simple way, too. I mean, you just take and play. Yeah, I and mean, you just, uh, it, it just doesn't seem like that's so crushing as how the engine puts it. But wow, I guess it really is. It's a simple route, too, as well. It's very simple. I feel like that's not easy because you have the pair of bishops. You want to keep them. Right. Uh, so you know, move, moving this away, but Hikaru, I mean, he finds yeah, he difficult things it. all day. Yeah. Here it comes. He definitely goes for it. Scooping up a pawn if he wants it. I could see him making other moves as well, like just bringing a rook to the e-file, taking control of this one because the knight on d6 is pinned. Uh, but Hikaru is playing really well right now uh, for the Gotham Knights. Uh, it's looking nice for him. And if he plays queen e5, we saw that the advantage is quite large. All he need is uh, is a point here. That's it. It's just one point, and that's it. Gotham Knights are winning this one. And it look it's looking like that. If I'm Sam, I'm trying to hold off as long as I can. But then again, well, yeah, yeah. Like, it, you would need, like, all three of them to win. And you would still lose. Like, yeah, you can't lose. Like, it's just it's tough. Yep, and Hikaru has not moved yet. So that's interesting to note that he is thinking about how to continue after taking the knight on d5. So maybe his intuition told him he had a part with the pair of bishops and have one versus this knight on d6. Right. But the second move will be very important because if black gets a couple turns, we have to remember that Sam is up a pawn and maybe these pawns can start rolling up the queen side. Yeah, and there it is, queen e5. I mean, he just played that boy. He found it, g7's hanging, d5 is hanging. Right, and this can be, you could just take this to the house. Very easy. And also the knight is still pinned there, which is problem problematic. You may have to play something like queen to c6 and just allow him to take on g7 and try to play a rook to g8. But that doesn't even do anything. Can't even take on g5. That's tough, man. Tough. And 
Yeah, Shanklin needs to get these pawns going, but they're so far away. You can't even push the C pawn without dropping the D pawn over here. So for Sam, uh, it looks like he's in a tough spot. It's, you see Hikaru calculating with his hand. Oh, he's giving you the finger, James. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Right, okay. He's like, oh, yeah, now, now and then I do this and this and yes. And uh, yes, and uh, yes, a classic right triangle. <laughs> classic right triangle. Well, <laughs> I mean, Sam does not look very happy. And, well, you know, he needs to win. His teammates need to win. Hikaru just won this pawn on G7. So he does have the upper hand with the F7 pawn, the next target in the position. So uh, let's just see how the teammates are doing because every game will need to be won by the unicorns to give them a chance here. I see in the top right, Ray Robson. He's battling in a Sicilian against Vladimir Fedoseyev where Black is an active queen, but not too much material remaining. I think that's pretty level. In the bottom left, still pretty early going uh, for Christopher Yu and Shamsidin Vokirov. And the bottom right, that exchange sacrifice is paying off for Alua Nermanova. So she might say, I'll take the smash into my own hands. I know it's been a struggle thus far, but with the black pieces on board four, I feel like, James, she's just dominating. She may have given up a rook, but her minor pieces are alive and well, and white can hardly move. What I like about the King's Indian is when it works, oh, it works. It's the best opening you ever played. But when it doesn't work, it's the worst opening ever. It's like, this is, why am I playing this opening? It's so bad. Oh, my goodness. I hate this, right? But right now, everything's thriving for the King's Indian player here. So very cool stuff. I think this is uh, pretty awesome for Black. She has a very stable advantage, I think, practically. Engine doesn't think as much, but I think it's very practical. We gotta get our we gotta get our rook off of the you know off, off of a a eight as well. Get our pieces in the game and try to use these two pawns that we have on the king side as well. Maybe even something as crazy as moving the bishop. Eventually, you see seven's hanging, so you have to maybe play a six, bishop d seven, and then uh move uh king g seven, move the rook to g eight, and run the king all the way over. Re literally castling queen side. It's a long long shot, but you can you can do this. This is definitely something you can do in this type of position. Yeah, the, the Trojan King march. If that king could get all the way to B8 and the rook, this is the king and the rook swap places. Right. That often is good for black. But what's also good for black is a f nearly five minute lead on the clock. Pressure against the white king. Uh, white kind of tied up. And that's why bishop D3 is played to free the E2 square for this knight. But if this bishop slides back to E5, knight E2 can be met by a capture of the F3 pawn. So I feel like it's still difficult for uh, white to make any moves here. And yes, the time difference is also massive in Alua Nermanova's favor. So let's go away from this because we have to. Hikaru Nakamura may clinch the match right now against Sam Shanklin. We see in the top left, Bro. it is a sky-high evaluation for Naka. Oh my goodness. What is going on, bro? Bishop D6? That boy could be taken twice. Two times. Oh my gosh. When you put a let's piece dive in. on a square oh. that can be captured... Oh, man, look at the tactics there. You move the rook, I take the rook. You move the rook and go c8, I take on f5. You move the f8 rook, I take the knight. You move the knight, I take the rook. You do rook take d6, I can take on d6. Or maybe maybe f5. Rook takes f5. But you, you actually yeah, could take on d6, too. <laughs> you can take on, you can do whatever you want, right? And then double the rook again, and I got to pass g pawn. Like, what do you want from me, right? What do you want? This is over. Everything is is wrong here. That was a sick move, man. That's scary, bro. I mean, he he definitely <laughs> definitely eating everything, all the weedies. I mean, half engine, half everything else. Like, what the heck is this? This is these yeah. Things. He's playing a really nice game here. I think he saves his best for last because uh, earlier games there were some shaky moments against Christopher Yu, for example. He was just down upon, but still managed to win and make it look easy. And uh, now he can play trade. Queen takes d6. This g pawn is scary. This rook can join the party. Go for a back rank checkmate. Uh, I like g6. Who cares about this d3 pawn? Keep it going. That's true. g6, g7 looks great. Check king h1, and I'm just kind of chilling. You have to deal with it. Everything comes rook f1, queen f8, queen d7. Everything is game over here. Beautiful game. Let me cover here. Wow. And rook f1, right? He could have did anything here. You know what kind of checkmate he wants? This is pretty sick. He wants if queen d3, uh -huh. rook f8, queen e4. Like, ah, protect it. That's cute. Queen d8. Queen d8. Ugh. Is mate. Back rank. Back rank, Chad. Do your tactics. 
Is that happening? Or no, he happened? played a six. I was like, what happened? Yeah, he. Oh man! But he can't stop this pawn now. Yeah, he can't. And so many things. And this pawn c five is hanging with check as well. He played d three, g seven, d two, g eight. White queens first, and then there's a problem on the back rank. So yes, this is a win in the making for Hikaru Nakamura. Shanklin may just resign, uh, but that means Nakamura goes to four out of four and leads the Knights to match victory. Yeah, I don't want to be the guy to lose and, like, make my match lose, so I'm just going to just keep playing on and, like, let my time run out. <laughs> so you're saying that let, you're, let another teammate lose? Wait, I'm out. I'm not resigning. Check. Back to F8 over here. And then play G7. This, this is promotion. Yeah. I don't think you can stop it. There is some stupid checks though. Queen e five check, king g one check. Mm. There's like some stupidness there. Weirdly enough, what the heck is that about? Maybe I just go g three check there check there king g two check there queen e four and then yeah queen king h two queen g six queen f eight. I'm gonna translate what James was just calculating for everybody. So bring up the analysis <laughs> board. That at first it looks like just a simple promotion. But after, oh, he goes queen d6 instead, which is so nice. No right. more checks for the black queen. But check here, James said queen e5 check. And all of a sudden, this king may have some difficulty getting away. Like if you play g3, we got a check. We got another check. If you block with your queen, maybe I take this pawn. Mm. If you go up here, I got all these checks. And then you made your queen comes back over here. And the black mm. queen's going this way. You're like all of a sudden, it's hard to get this pawn to promote. Because the queen's giving all these checks. Yeah, so many. It's so many checks. This is the problem. So he just he just said queen d six. Like, uh, deal with the checks now. But now we still yeah, like still not over. Like it, it was too many checks. It's still not over. But okay, you have to win this game many times. That's crazy. And resignation. He won it on the spot, and that means the match is over. The point was after queen takes pawn. Queen takes this pawn. Two extra it's pawns over. for Car Nakamura. He takes a sip of whatever smoothie he's drinking, and it was a pretty smooth conversion for Hikaru. I hope it was a pineapple smoothie. Otherwise, it feels like a fraud in the background on the wall. For but real. No matter what, this player is not fraudulent. He is a champion, a world Fisher Random champion. The board won for the Gotham Knights, and they have officially won this match against the California Unicorns. Yeah, and Hikaru being the star player there, four out of four, right? After losing and in the last game or in the last match, the first game. Uh, but he just 4 0 this time, and definitely a dominant performance here, eight and a half. To four and a half still some games left but at the same time the knights are making it they are making it to the next match yeah and the four two matchup is like the weirdest position ever I, I don't really see what's happening there where there's a bishop in front of the black king that wasn't captured ray robson down to 20 seconds and whoa queen sacrifice from fedoseev uh, but his king is the safer of the two watch out for a checkmate but this rook gets the h8 that's game yeah, maybe just uh okay rook g1 maybe forest i like it we can bring the bishop back to c3 also have rook c1 too rook c1 uh, check 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 h4 oh my goodness rook c1 queen d2 yeah. check king h7 rook h8 king g6 h4 he has a rook f2 luckily but if rook g2 is h5 is mate oh James is going for this h5 checkmate, but as he's pointed out, it looks really strong, but rook f2 saves the day, cutting off the circulation between the rook and his bishop, because h5 no longer is mate as the king can take his bishop. So yeah, let's go back cool. to the game. That was a sick variation. Rook f3, speaking of sick variations, what's going on? Can you just Ooh. take this pawn? Or is there a rook h3, rook h8 checkmate? Whoa, wait, that's what we was trying to get it out. Wait, what happens? You got a perpetual? What's going on here? You got a perpetual. Rook h3. He must have a perpetual. Uh, Oh, he has rook. Oh, my gosh. I don't understand. You go king here. King here. And the rook slides back. Oh. Who got who? Oh. <laughs> he like, you got tactics? Nah, 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 nah. I got tactics. Did you forget I'm Big Ray and have a nice day? You forgot? <laughs> you forgot. Something tells me the tactics are not done here. And Fedosev, he's looking. He's rookie one. He wants a checkmate. <gasps> oh. Black's completely oh. winning. Oh, my goodness. You see how fast he played that? You saw how fast he yep. played that? You, he, that Ray. was instant. It's like he knew he's he was going to do that. He's picking up this rook, 
and I don't know where it's going to go. Wow. If anywhere in this file leads to checkmate or rookie two will pick up this rook if somehow you can stop the mate. But you can't. C3 only move. Here. And then queen A8, and then he going to stare at the camera real hard. I would just like <laughs> stare into the camera real hard just to let y'all know. <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do about this one. Ain't nothing you can do. Now, you can try rook C8. True. Distract the queen. The only you take move. the rook over here, but queen G4 check happens, and you're going to lose your bishop oh, man. on F6. It's loose pieces drop off, and this is going to be a win for Ray Robson. You know, not enough for the unicorns, but that will be a confidence builder for Ray. He had a good chance against Nakamura. That slipped away, but he's going to take down Fedeseev in the last round. Yeah, that was uh, that was sick. Finally, we got some nice Ray tactics here. You know, some nice Ray tactics. Yeah, he's feeling good about this one. Nothing else to do. This rook slides back. It's going to be checkmate. If this rook slides here, you can sandwich uh, your rook in between. Uh, anywhere. Let's go back there. Game. And over. And Well, Christopher Yu apparently winning in his game in the bottom left. So, like, suddenly all of the unicorns are winning, but Hikaru already got the job done. That's so. <laughs> That's funny. They all woke up in this round. Unicorn's like, all right, let's fight. And then it's a little too late. Yeah, and it's good for the Knights that Hikaru is such a monster because look at this position. Ooh, this pawn man. is hanging. If this pawn pushes C4, is hanging. White's already up. One pawn. In 30 seconds for Christopher Yu. Yeah, that calm. Is right. that Rook trap? No, I can go back to it. Rook F6. Hmm. Pretty good. Maybe F4 or something. Yeah, Queen D4. I oh. mean, it's not over. Rook D5 is beautiful. Just look at those quiet moves, James. Right. I was looking for tactics. He's just like, no, nah, let yeah. me go win the D5 pawn. Yeah, I mean, it's D5. Easy. Easy work. Want to trade him off, bro? Easy. So, Christopher Yu can bring his rook up to D7 with check. Where is this king going? Ooh. Whoa. Wait. You got H4. <laughs> Queen D5, too. That's beautiful. Yeah, you had to stop the check. Not at least neutralize when each five is mate. So he trades, but two extra pawns for Christopher. You, this is a clear win for him. And Rokita makes a couple moves, but just go after this pawn. And you just want to swap two extra pawns on the king side. H4, F4. Yeah, all the moves are, are going to be good. And yeah, you're going to see a trade, and we might even see a resignation. At this point, because white is up, yeah, there it is. White there is up is. three pawns, and so Christopher Yu takes it down. Uh, Shem Steen and Bokita that leaves us with one game remaining between Zoe Tang and Alua Nermanova. And I can't believe what I'm seeing there because Black's position was dominant on board four. So let's bring that game up. It's the only one remaining, and yeah, this is suddenly Zoe Tang. And this, this speed of confidence builders, if she can take down. Her opponent here, maybe as she plays more mm. pro chess league matches, she'll start to be feeling really good. Definitely, yeah. We have ourselves a swindle here. Something happened. This was that King's Indian game with the Rook sacrifice on that four. It just seems very nice and they're very cool and et cetera. But after the dust settle and you do need a level of precision and accuracy after you able to sacrifice this exchange to be able to keep up with uh, what White can do. So um, she wasn't able to do that here. And White looks like she's just going to... Come away with it. Man, unicorns crushed this round. <laughs> Dang, yeah. bro. They went crazy. Like, they literally snapped this round. It is just Hikaru, because if Hikaru did not win that game, uh, this would not be a match victory for the Knights. But now with the king on e6, this king is soon going to be checkmated. It would appear. Just bring your rook to the last rank somehow. I mean, it's like a one-point game now. I mean, literally, uh, yeah, because Hikaru won... You know, having a heavyweight like that on there just to get the job done. He got it done, but wow. I mean, eight and a half. This might be, and this was like eight and a half, seven and a half. That's what the yeah. final might be. This is crazy. See, One point. This rook is not going to be able to parry off two, and we're going to have to see a check back here. The only move will be rook f8. You just take it, and then you win this pawn over here. So it doesn't matter which rook does it, but Zoe Tang will pick up a6. Her b pawn will run, and she's going to win this game. Just don't trade them. Right, exactly. There we go. Clean up shop here. Well done. I mean, this is a teenager from California. David Pruis was on earlier talking about how 
You know, she's been in the California chess scene and she's getting an opportunity, a unique opportunity to play against super grandmasters uh, in the pro chess league. And she's winning her final round game. Good for her. Very good. Very good. So she's trying to work take C5. Oh, don't do it now. Yep. Has to be the right moment. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, this is a king cut off. The king would like to be somewhere on B7. And, well, <laughs> no pieces can move, James. <laughs> we do rig B6. Yeah, beautiful move. And queening next. Resignation. Game technique. over. Game set match. Thanks. She just left the building. <laughs> she said, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. I lost all four games, but Zoe Tank scores for the Unicorns. That's a nice win for her as, you know, this, it's just not enough for this week's match, uh, but it is a 3-1 kind of consolation prize for the Unicorns. Yeah, you probably can frame that and be like, you know, how'd your match go? And you show them that, like, oh, yeah, look at this. You know, like, we crushed it, right? We lost the whole match, in fact. But at the end of the day, but man, this one right here, if we, we would have had another match, like we don't know what's going to happen. It's seven and a half, eight and a half. Wow. Great job from Unicorns here because they were able to really strike back, you know, in this round. But all we needed was one and Hikaru got the job. Hikaru did. And as we see the overall scores, Hikaru Nakamura won a perfect four out of four. So Ray Robson led the Unicorns with three points. He beat Fedosev in that final round, but it just wasn't enough as Hikaru was too much for the Unicorns. And that means, James, that with Naka going perfect and Fedoseyev and Vokidov chipping in with two and a half and two uh, for them, that means the Gotham Knights go to a perfect 2-0 and thus far in the season. And when you look at these top four teams, James, are those the names you'd more or less expect to see there? Gotham Knights and Indian Yogis, and I was looking for the St. Uh, Louis, the Archbishops. I mean, this is so crazy. You do not see the Archbishops. They were just, just been a, a legendary team. They still are. But uh, right now, they're 0-2. So it's very, very tough I mean, to see. But, I mean, Gotham Knights, definitely. Um, Tigers was not really expecting. I did. I, I knew they were strong, but I was like, wow, 92 and 0. The Chess Wizards, I think, is a, is a surprise too as well. But definitely the Indian Yogi. So, like, any Indian theme is going to be <laughs> very close to 2-0 because it's in the water over there, right? They got, like, three teams in the PCL. So something like that. So it's pretty nasty. And James, you're a team captain. So let me ask you about a team like the Capybaras. Uh, they were knocked out in the first round. I mean, it was not close at all. It only lasted three rounds. But then in the second week, uh, they destroyed their opponent. And I mean, it wasn't close. So when you make a free agent signing like Vladislav Artemiev, uh, so what do you make of the new look Capybaras? Because I feel like what we saw in week one is not yeah. representative of what's to come. That's true, especially with Artemiev. I mean, it was he was like a, a, a like just kind of like how we picked up Bortnik. And we was like, how is Bortnik, Alexander Bortnik, wasn't even picked up? Are you kidding me? So we picked him up, and then he enhanced our team instantly. Same thing you see with the Brazil Capybara. So, you know, these are shakeups. These are people that you don't even know what's going to really happen. And it really is about the lineups, too. How is that lineup going to look going in there, uh, going in that day against who did they have? So it's really about who has that best lineup that day because – these teams are like, I mean, if you really put it together, they're virtually even, but slightly better than another team. You've got a lot of heavy hitters on your team. I do too as well. But in this match today, who actually is going to be the better lineup that we have? And I think those lineups are very important. So copy bearers, you can count them out, especially with our Timmy. Yeah, I'm not counting them out for sure. But uh, as we look to the second half of the standings, some teams, well, they may be out after next week's action. I see your Garden State Passers. You're chilling there. One out of two. That's, pretty, yeah, that's good. You won week two. But down right. towards the bottom, we saw the Berlin Bears lose today. The St. Louis Archbishops uh, will play the Bears and the Maniac Shrimps and the Cobra. So two of those teams, James, are about to be eliminated. Which two do you think? are going to survive and which two are going to be sent home after next you week. You know what? I am a big fan of the Archbishops. I just believe in them. Of course, I do like those guys. I mean, I've been a fan of them a long time. And I'm going to say Charlotte, the second one, because that's a newer team. And, you know, I have a special uh, spot in my heart for Charlotte. I love Charlotte. In fact, I hit FM there. And, like, I just have all so many memories in Charlotte, even having one of my best tournaments ever. Two of them, actually, I mean, back in Charlotte. So, Charlotte, I want to see Charlotte succeed, absolutely. But they're going to have to fight very hard to not face elimination. This league is brutal. There is no easy opposition. And we will resume the Pro Chess League 
not tomorrow. You get the weekend off, all the collegiate chess league. But on Tuesday, we will have another doubleheader. I love this format where two matches happen every single day from Tuesday to Friday. And the Brazil Capybaras, we were just talking about them. They take on the Norway Gnomes. And then later in the day, in an elimination match, Charlotte Cobras against the Spanish Maniac Shrimps. So, James, let's start with the Capybaras, the Gnomes. These are two fun teams, two teams with kind of a diverse lineup of players from all around the globe. Who do you think has the edge in that one? And then who has the edge between the Cobras and the Maniac Shrimps? I think sometimes when you pick up a, a player that's like, you know, like, uh, you know, in basketball, like the trades that happen where like a team is pretty good, they okay. And the trade happens and they become elite. And I think the Capybaras did that with Artemiev. So when he came in there, oh boy, it's a problem now. Because now, you know, we can move some people around. So now we can play a little bit differently and the stats will be a little bit different. Lineups will be different. So I think uh, that's a strong one there. I'm going to take Capybaras there. And the Charlotte versus the Maniac Shrimps. We just played the Maniac Shrimps as the Garden State Passers. We got a dub there. So what we want is we're going to, uh, we don't go with Charlotte. Okay, you're going with Charlotte there. And I got to ask you, James, you know, you're you know, being unbiased as a commentator right now, but you're also kind of, you're captain, you're scouting out the opposition. Are there any teams you would like to see knocked out? Like when you look at Brazil, you look at Norway, you know, as you try to make the playoffs, is there a team between the two of them that you would rather not see if you make the playoffs? Charlotte, for sure. Charlotte, 100% <laughs> love Charlotte, but if it comes to us and the Garden of State passes, Peace is going to be the passers. You can pass <laughs> up the ball and you can pass up your opportunity into the this match. Okay. <laughs> Get up out of here. Right. So, but uh, Charlotte definitely. And also I'm going to have to go with the yeah, copy bearers. I mean, Artemiev is a, is a, a, a force. He's played in many events, very, very strong events, even with Hikaru. I remember he beat Hikaru in a match I was doing commentary on. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Artemiev in the match? Yeah, we need to get him up out of here. So if, if they can get eliminated, cool. You know, do your thing. We, don't, uh, we won't be mad at you, okay? Yeah, I feel you, James. Vladislav Artemiev is a beast. He could take down even the best players in the world, like Icaro and Magnus. The Capybaras and many other teams in the league have a new look. But the, te- the season will continue next week. We have two weeks of action behind us. We know who is thriving at the moment with 2-0 records. We know teams that are on the brink of elimination, and we will see who survives come week three, which happens on Tuesday, the 28th. So for now, we say goodbye. We thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy more chess. The Collegiate Chess League is tomorrow. You can play the Luca bot at any moment. You can play my bot and James's bot. So go ahead, have some fun. Keep enjoying chess on chess.com. But for now, we say goodbye and see you on Tuesday.